Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Jablock for Gamers for Giving. Just we are here with me, Turtle Strike, and my co-commentator, Count Pelican. What's up, everybody? We're back at it again from Thursday. For any of you who are watching, we're ready to get this pre-show going and starting the matches in a little bit of time. How are you doing today on this fine Saturday? I am doing great, objectively speaking. But it just started snowing a little bit outside, and I gotta be honest, uh, spring was supposed to have begun, and I'm not ready for it to get cold again. Yeah, it was literally 70 degrees like two days ago, and I woke up this morning. I'm like, okay, let's see what the weather is. Are we dealing with like a 60 or a 70 type of day? I look at my 40. phone, and I'm like, 40. Oh, that's just 40. And I'm like, great, that's fantastic. Throw on my jacket, I walk out, and just like, please don't snow. <laughs> and then it starts snowing like 20 minutes. And then it later. starts snowing, of course. It's just like, we go and get lunch. Uh, but no, yeah, otherwise we're doing quite well. I am quite excited to see the event today. Uh, I looked in the other room, actually, because we've got, obviously, the one main room that we've got the primary game going. We've got the other room set for all the other competitors joining together. They're eating, they're having a good time, and I really like the turnout that we have today. I am excited to see a tournament of this scale. Obviously, we were just casting uh, the SSU Overwatch, or Overwatch, the <laughs> SSU Smash Brothers <laughs> official games. Uh and watching that was a complete blowout, but I know we've got a couple of those members here, and we're going to get to see them play against the more general Shawnee public, too. Yeah, the thing is, it's different. When the other one, it's a crew battle, mm -hmm. but this, so you're casual, one-on-one. -on -one. I think it's, um, we're doing round-robin initially, best of three, Okay. so Ooh. everyone's going to come in. You're not going to get the old two and done. You're going to get to play all the levels of skill players, so you don't have to worry about yeah. facing Atlas round one, getting knocked into losers, and then all of a sudden, yeah. you're in a bad spot for the rest of the tournament. Round robin for seeding and all that. But yeah, no, I'm excited, because this is like, besides senior night, this is literally our one of our first in-person tournaments we've had since COVID, so it's yeah. very exciting that we're finally back inside a room we have back. live competition to cast we don't have to cast from our rooms or anything <laughs> like that we're in person it feels great yeah i from the purely selfish standpoint casting in my room i was like man now i gotta make my bed i gotta put up a curtain i gotta <laughs> set all this jazz up but now here we are we got the much nicer uh, you guys can't see the shawnee logo behind us we have this really nice shawnee logo behind us it looks a little bit cleaner and you know what it just has that more professional gaming feel it just feels better because this is see, like I'm just talking to myself in my room and then occasionally seeing my other caster. I'm right next to you. Yeah. I, I can see the players. Like they're just over there. We have a couple people playing some friendlies to make sure everything's working on the setup. Mm -hmm. But enough with a little bit of color casting. Let's get into a little bit about what Gamers for Giving is because that is why some of us are here today is to watch the tournament, but also using the tournament to raise money for an organization. Gamers for Giving is sponsoring this, and basically what it is, is it is an organization that likes to collect console carts for kids that are in hospitals for an extended period of time. That way, those kids are able to then play video games, they're able to have fun, and just take their mind off of everything, because yeah. it has it's rough for kids when they're in that environment, it's just, it can get so depressing just having a gaming cart or having something to take their mind off of it just for a little bit. It's just an amazing cause, and we're super excited to be joined with them for this yeah. wonderful tournament. It's the kind of thing where, I don't know if any of you, oh, back in this time, lightly tangential, uh, the McDonald's, when they would have their little, like, game areas. That felt so nice as a kid, because you know what, if you're being stuck there and not having a great time, it's a nice little thing. In a hospital, too, with the lobbies, if you were waiting for someone, it was a way to keep kids entertained. But now we have it where kids who are recovering or who are suffering are getting this opportunity to still be a part of the gaming world at large, even if they don't usually have that access, and it's really helping them alleviate that suffering and really just try to get back into the normalcy of their lives. Yeah, and just for if you are looking in chat, you to find the donation link, you can do exclamation point donate. That way we'll, we'll also see who the top donator are. We will maybe announce it. We will announce it on stream too. And we also, if you want to know more for Gamers for Giving, also exclamation point GFG in the chat to also so you can see a little bit more about them. Go to their homepage, find out a little bit more. But this entire week, Make sure to check out our team. We have several streamers that are esports players who will be doing their own streams that help raise money as well. Tomorrow, I, I will be doing say, one. You're doing that, because, right? Yeah, I'm super excited because it's my first charity event. It's, it just feels nice. It gives you a good feeling because it's yeah. like you stream all of yourself by yourself. Like it's just you're just doing it for yourself. But now it's like I'm doing something for the community and for gaming yeah. as a whole. It just feels wonderful. Trying to give back a little bit. 
Uh, it is a wonderful thing to see, as you guys can see up in the... Oh, there we go, up in the corner over there. We've got the goals that we're looking for. Goal is $500. If you guys have any amount to give, truly anything helps. I know they say that all the time. 50 cents. It's the cup of... Like a price of coffee. No, but really, truly anything you can give, every little bit counts, and we would appreciate anything you have for us. Yeah, um, I was going to say, if you think about it... Mm -hmm. you I have... think we're getting ready to start going, right? We have a video. We have a video. real okay. short video to show you real quick, so we will hand it off to that video, and we will see you guys in a second. This is a Gamer's Outreach Cart, or Go-Kart for short. It's a portable video game kiosk built specifically for hospitals. Created and assembled by Gamer's Outreach, each unit helps provide recreation to kids and young adults unable to leave their bedsides. The carts can be disinfected easily and have 360 degrees of movement, making them ideal for transport in hospitals. Go-karts can accommodate a variety of gaming consoles. They also come with wired controllers, a gaming monitor, and are equipped with a lift mechanism that allows the height to be adjusted. Go-karts provide a safe, flexible, and efficient way to ensure patients have access to entertainment during long-term hospitalization. To learn more about Project Go-Kart, visit GamersOutreach.org. All right, welcome back in. As you can see, you can see a little bit more. Those Go-Karts look so slick. Oh, they're so clean, which obviously great for a hospital. Um, but what a, it's a wonderful design, and what a wonderful object, getting to actually see those in usage and practicality. That's a little heartwarming, i got to be honest. Yeah, it's just so nice just to see it. It's just like You just see the smiles on their face. They're just so happy to, like, it just is so good. Well, we will take a second. We will pull up the bracket for today's, and then after that, we'll get into a little bit of friendlies. So, as you can see here, we see the wonderful tournament going on. You see, we have a bunch of all these pools. I think we have around eight pools. Eight we have pools? eight pools. So, we have a lot of games to watch and a lot of games to go through. So, yeah. everybody's ready for a great day of Smash today. Right, and each one is going to be obviously best of three. And I believe what we are doing first is, like, winner... Winner keeps character, loser gets the opportunity to counter pick if they're looking for going to that second round. Yeah. And the the winner can pick, but they have to show just so they still yeah. have that counter pick ability. Yeah. It's just just casual your standard rules for a tournament say yeah. just keep it as standard as possible, but we're all here just to have fun today and just raise money for this great cause. Heck yeah. Alrighty, so I think we're actually gonna start so we're doing the uh it was a bit of a test first, but we're going to start moving over to some friendlies. Just so we have that little bit of first, uh, that smash palette cleanser, get that open. Yeah. And you oh, see, slick. And we already see a Gandorf end game jab oh, no. almost <laughs> to death very early on. Jigglypuff, unafraid in the face of danger. Uh, back in my youth, I assumed playing Jigglypuff was a foolish move exclusively. Uh, heaven forbid you were going up against someone heavy like Ganondorf, why would you try? And then you see someone like Dane come on in, uh, and he's going to carry you off the entire side of the board. You have no chance of recovering, and Jigglypuff is now the highest possible menace to you ever. Just remember, Ganon does have those smash attacks. If Jigglypuff isn't careful, they're closing up the ledge. Like, an F smash like this could just kill. Oh yeah, <laughs> at any percent is indeed kill percent. Oh no. Oh, he's got the sleep combo. Oh, he gets that jab out. Is even basic jab giving him whatever that was, 13%? Like, Jigglypuff isn't in a great spot if you get touched, but that's the beauty of Jigglypuff is you are floating around enough, you're not expecting to take damage. Yeah, it's just one of those super fun matchups because you just know Gan is like, okay, I just need to get you. <laughs> oh, sleep. Let's see, he's going to combo. Oh, nope, he's going to get the oh, grab. Oh, no. But it's just one of those really fun matchups because you see that one character is like, I'm just going to keep pecking you with 10 damage moves until you get just high enough that I can kill you. Yeah. Oh, oh no. Failure to have the jump after utilizing that side B. Yeah. Oh, oh yep. And obviously, it's all it takes. S smash a little bit of friendly taunt coming out there. And just like we're talking about, Ganon at any point in time can just put Jigglypuff in that kill range and just send them flying. Oh yeah, because if you're not careful with Jigglypuff, as we just saw with Ganon, <laughs> literally, come off Halo, slowly down smash, cool, you got the stock. If you can manage to get that Warlock grab and then you get that uh, down tilt, whoop, because it's a confirmed combo every time. Oh man, sorry. I always hope to see the up tilt actually land. That's, it, that's the best part. Oh, oh and then okay. Ganon, oh, okay. Oh, dirty. <laughs> He's oh, but he gets here. <laughs> he just going to live. You see Hayden over there popping off for that, appreciating the ability to recover. We see our coach Dane <laughs> over there having a great time, just just carry him off the stage a little bit. 
That's that's when you know you're in a good spot is you're allowed to get so greedy with the rest. I'm like, yeah, you know what? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's really like so seeing what? those. So I'm plays. over the edge. We're gonna do this anyways. It's such, it, even though it's such a high percent, it's still such a coin flip because it is Ganon. Ganon just barely lives, and then you just see yourself <laughs> slowly falling to your demise. <laughs> <laughs> the one second delay. For those that um, don't see, we do have a projector set up right in front of them. So they're just like kind of looking up at themselves, seeing everything going on. And we have a great atmosphere going today. Every yeah. You mentioned earlier, everyone's in the other room playing friendly, snacking on some pizza, and just ready to have a great time here. Oh, yeah. And then once we actually start to get into the official tournament after we've left that friendlies mode, uh, in the room we're in currently, obviously, we have the, the actual gamers sitting there up front. We, the casters, are here just off to the side. We have a large projector going to the entire room as a, a spectator room so anyone can take part in this and really hype up that arena feeling. Yeah, it's, it's just like your standard, actually, tournament setup. It's just big, neat RA things. Like, you know what? I'm going to take a different combo character, but one that you can't kill at 20%. Yeah, one who, who will still attempt to carry you off the entirety of the map, but... Uh, it's a little more survivable. I gotta be honest, we were talking earlier about people's favorite characters, uh, and one of mine is also Falcon. Uh, not because of any level of competitive viability. I dig the flashy characters. And if you can do something funny or some special animation appears when you can do like the correct thing, and Falcon getting that the knee of justice, getting to see that sweet spot hit, that's all I need. And so it's that's the satisfying noise, just seeing the little blue flash up and then they just go flying across the let me guess. How many times do you uh, you go for the Falcon Punch reads? Because like I feel like yeah. it feel like it just comes with the character. You have to look for those Falcon punches. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh we we have the up tilt from up -tilt. Dan and that, and you'd love to see those. Speaking of flashy moves, that's one of the flashier ones too, with that giant wind up animation. Oh my heavens, yeah. We'll see. So for Falcon, I don't Falcon punch prediction as often. That is what I use Ganondorf for. I absolutely want to do the falling reverse warlock punch for the maximum damage output. Oh, you just feel good. An up tilt that accidentally catches the shield at 20% into a reverse Ganon punch and just watch <laughs> him fly away. It's like I just killed you at 20%. No big deal. Yeah. At, at a certain point, I don't... Wow. Ooh, you know and our coach, I was gonna say, coach that's still that's has that. it over there. Couple up airs into the knee. Uh, HR Prime just looking for that one solid hit, and he'll take, uh, take Falcon all the way to the ledge, because truly, Ganondorf hits like a truck. Uh. Ooh, oh, he just barely gets dodge. behind it. It's really dangerous for Ganon right here on the side, though, because Falcon has really nice aerials just to try to take away that jump. Ooh, and the meaty back air taking that Falcon way off stage. Oh, attempting for the Falcon punch off Halo. That is what we appreciate to see. Yeah, just like, you know, I'm just going to send it. And I have my vulnerability frame, see if you can do anything yeah. against it. Uh, not to uh, try to influence the play or anything, but that Ganondorf sure should try to do Ooh. a Warlock punch that'll connect. You see a little bit of... It's, <laughs> Some guts right there, spot dodging a Falco punch. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> he went for the kick. <laughs> Super fastball. Hey, like you'd like to see that though. You're in a friendly match. It's like, listen, I'm gonna just go and I'm gonna try to hit something that's just gonna be some satisfying hit that we're both just gonna have a fun and laugh about. And Falcon kicks one of those moves. Right. I'm saying someone that audio might be desynced just a little. One bit. one. <laughs> Choking my water. <laughs> yeah, the counter picks, that was 1-1. One, one. Choking my water a bit there. Went down the wrong pipe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. There we are. Where are they look? Getting everything set up. Uh, it looks yeah. like time's starting to get close to actually opening up the true portion of the tournament. So we're going to get the friendly guys. Uh, they're going to finish their stuff up. We're gonna start rotating out and get the full tournament going. Yeah, I did. We did plan on starting at 2:30, so we're perfectly on time. Had technical difficulties, we're able to work through them, and hey, we're about. Listen, is it really a live in-person tournament if you don't have technical difficulties the day of? See, I no, it wouldn't be every time. I think my. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay, you know what? A good point to come back in on. Uh, no, but I think one of my favorite technical difficulties is we were doing a, oh, let me see if I remember, I think it was a Shawnee game conference in the, uh, gymnasium, and we were having difficulty setting up one of the friendly Overwatch games, 
And while we were doing that, my co-caster at the time and I just started, for no reason, singing a uh, runner oh, blues traveler run around. Okay. Uh, it was super funny, <laughs> but funnier than that was one of the guys who was there helping as a guest like for the event just started singing with us. <laughs> and, you know what? It, it's in those little moments of technical difficulties that I think uh, the true beauty of the events shine. Yeah, it just shows that. So like at the end of the day. Competition. <laughs> Saw the surprise on HR Prime's face right there. It's such a Ganon moment though when you just get hit by that move at 170. You just barely, <laughs> barely get in the blast zone. But yeah, go <laughs> <laughs> uh, See, I'm loving having the player camera for both uh, players because when we're having those actual official games, obviously we can only see the player cams for our Shawnee students. But getting to see the back and forth between these guys is just almost as exciting as everything else. Oh, Ganon with the taunt. Ooh. Oh, no! Oh, no! I was gonna be like, Dane, how are you gonna let that happen? That's two oh. Ganon F tilts have killed so far this match. Yeah. Can we make it three? Go we had the, the suction in to take the first stock. Yep. Shield break. It's oh. <laughs> <laughs> by another one. I guess this, hey, it does have a really big suction. It is just pulling Dane in right now. Oh, we attempted the reverse Warlock Punch. Uh, I think he saw a few too many minutes into the future, though, for that one. Oh, oh it does look like Dane that wolf side beat. I see here, trying to see if he can find anything, get a little bit back into this one. I don't know, you don't need to get that far. If you can, yeah, just camp Ganon over the ledge like this. It's not like he's going to be coming back. Yeah, it's just the unfortunate part of Ganon. You don't have a jump, you're deep in that blast zone. You're probably not making it back. No. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, and the fast oh, fall. Oh, and Wolf falling to HR Prime. He went for he went for the spike in. You know, spikes doesn't do that much at zero percent. It's just <laughs> not so much. He kind of just kept on going. I think more for the disrespect. You it was, know what? If you could, if you can manage the disrespect, it's worth so much more. Exactly, that's what I was thinking too. Because if you think about, it, it's like, you know, what? I'm gonna go for this spike. I'm gonna end up spiking myself. But it's just the thought of. I was going to spike you, oh, yeah. just this so you is, know. This is the friendlies, so you want to demoralize your opponent as much as possible to psych them out for the rest of the tournament, uh, and that's what that was. I firmly believe was exclusively mind games for the long con. Yeah, and it's like m reminding them of the fact of, I'm going to look for this spike for you in bracket, and I'm going <laughs> to hit it on Watch you. Watch out. And I mean, HR Prime was also showing, like, hey, these up tilts, I'm going to be looking for them in bracket, too. I'm going to hit them. I already know they should just suction you right in. And yes, Bowser. I love Bowser so much. It's my favorite character. Yeah. Might have a little bias because I spam Mario games in every Mario game that had Bowser in. I do. But. <laughs> <laughs> Dave just sewed him off the side. Listen, the definition of insanity is doing something until it, it constantly expecting different results. But HR Prime's like, I'm going to do this until I finally get through that fire. Yeah, at a point in time, there's only so many options. If I do this enough, the world will eventually change around me. Yeah, it has to go at one point in time. And oh, listen, at that boy. moment, we had the spear fire. Oh, oh the with the up tilt kick. fight. And we love to see those too. I will say, I, I love all these characters, but I'm really excited to see that tournament get going. I want to see some of those more fringe picks. Like, okay, I don't know if this would be said to be fringe or not. I love Ken. <laughs> I'm terrible at Ken. Everyone I know is terrible at Ken. But I want to see a good Ken in here today. Those they're, they're, those are characters that are <laughs> like that and just, oh, oh no. no, he went too far. But it is those characters that I was just like, like it's good Zero Suit Samus's, great Jokers, all of those are just so fun to watch because you're like, Dane, when I try to do that, my control, like we were doing some friendlies beforehand and we try to play Joker and Zero Suit with, <laughs> out with Joy Cons. Yeah, to be fair, we were both using half a Joy Con, so it's an interesting, interesting play style. But yeah, just trying to hit combos like that is like almost impossible. Oh! Ooh, and with the Bowser drop kick at 60%, just sending Falcon right off the stage. Oh yeah, right out of the last zone. But it does look like in this friendly match, they are two to two, and I'm assuming they're gonna do a best of five, yeah. or they're just gonna go until the tournament starts, who knows. But if it is, it does look like it's a competitive best of five series so far. Yeah. For the friendly. Uh, HR Prime, who are you picking? HR Prime, counter pick with the uh, Yoshi. Hit that Yoshi counter pick. What, what are you doing then? Fair, fair. 
Yeah, no, I'm hoping you're quiet enough. The mic isn't grabbing they it. Probably, they probably can't hear from when my mic was muted. I can barely get picked up on yours, so it's oh, fine. Oh, thank heavens. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm just kind of waiting to see the match start up. Oh. Oh, okay. Sorry, man. Minor uh, screen blackout. Oh, just restarting the projector. Okay, cool. I thought we have to give him for a second. I was like, no, there's no <laughs> way. Like, did we lose power? No <laughs> shot. No shot. <laughs> we were so close. And ooh, we have that DK versus the Doctor himself. Yeah, great Donkey Kong. That's pretty much Yoshi. Uh, same difference, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, Donkey Kong took Mario's plumbing job, and so he had to go become a doctor instead. And so he's trying to get some revenge now. Yeah. And taking him to the place ooh. to settle all ba debates. Final destination. Oh, I thought Coach Dane was out of a uh, out of a recovery there for a moment. I was really worried for this effect. I, I just like how we just get to these points that both players are like, I'm just going to stand off against you, and I'm going to make you do the first move in the game. Oh, yeah, I'll let you come at me, because this entire game is that whole, like, friendly back and forth. Uh, you're trying to gauge yourself versus your opponent. Uh, so the times where they just completely stop moving and stand there, uh, those are the most tense of all, because you're trying to think. Have they stopped moving because they have a great plan that they are trying to bait me into, or have they stopped moving because they are terrified? And you have to make that same bet every time. You're not going to be right. It's just who has the better poker face at that point. Just oh, like, yeah. It's like, I'm going to sit here, I'm going to sit here, I'm like, I got the better move. Best as we can, see them both out at 2 2 and fairly even percentage. Well, I spoke a little too soon. Side B taking <laughs> Donkey Kong all the way down, and so where Donkey Kong only decided to do two little helicopter spins. He's like, you know what, I'm just gonna fall from here. Well, Donkey Kong's kind of lacking that vertical recovery, he's just doing the best he can with what he has. Those Wait. biceps are built to stay on the stage, not go floating off of it. I mean, it's impressive enough that he's able to fly at all, but just do a little bit of a spin. So, I mean, we, we'll, we'll take it and give it when we can. Yeah, shout out Kaylee, though, here in chat, dropping the $5. Thank you so much. Oh, and I hope you were rooting for Coach Dane, because that's who ended up getting the victory out of it. Yeah, $5 <laughs> donation, and Dane's just like, you know what, got a $5 donation, watch, I'm about to hit the sick yeah, down air. I'll hit the sick down air to support boom. that right there. But thank you very much. We very much appreciate those donations. All righty. Uh, Coach Dane and HR Prime packing up. Looks like we are getting ready to pull in the start of the tournament. Are we able to bring up that bracket once more uh, and go ahead and see who we've got in this first uh, first grouping? All righty. So let's see what we got. We got Waywardness, Bird, Buckets, and Koopa. Now, Waywardness, uh, we are very familiar with. Exactly. He is the terror to be watching for in this grouping. Uh... Who else are you feeling, though? I don't know. Do you know any of these other players off the top of your head? I feel like I, I've seen Bird underscore before. I don't know okay. why. It's such, it's such a name that's so unique that I feel so, like I, I've, so I've seen it somewhere. Okay. So I can't recall what they play at all, but I just know, like, I've seen them, so I can expect good stuff from them. Okay, bless. Okay, bless. Otherwise, uh, I don't know. I'm rooting for... Uh... I gotta wait for the names to come back. I wanted to say Chili, but I think Connor. If you're rocking in and your name's Connor as your, uh, like, name tag. I really hope your name is not Connor. Is, is, because is I think it's way more awesome to show up with a name that is not your own. It's just like, uh, yeah, my battle tag is, uh, Daniel. Oh, what's your name? Mark? <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like there's such an energy in that that you can't expect what they're gonna play next. I'm pretty sure for League of Legends, there's literally a guy named Danny, and his name's, like, Kyle. Let's it's like, go. You're, Let's okay, go. so you're gonna go with the in-game name Danny, of all things, but IRL, you're Kyle. Like, it's just, it's such a different... It's just two names that carry such a different energy. Yeah. It's just like, how did you get that? Yeah, and I guess, like, there is something to be said about, like, maybe you're going by your middle name. Uh, but I've got a buddy uh, who we call Arthur. Um, not anywhere in his name. Uh, it actually came from just a really a really fun bit that we had with the groups. So and every so often, we're like, yo, Arthur, what's up? Uh, and it's great, because we have that lasting bit. So he knows exactly what we're talking about him. Uh, but anyone else in the building is like, yo, who did this? Uh, let's blame Arthur. But there's not an Arthur in sight. So everyone gets off scot-free. <laughs> I mean, it's just those little things. It's like, a lot of times, that's just ends what happening. With You get a nickname from your friends, and it ends up sticking to you. And some, oh, yeah. and some people are like, they embrace it wholeheartedly. They're like, go up to a teacher in class and be like, nickname's Arthur. I only will be good referred to that all. <laughs> That'll be Don't it. ask why, it's Arthur. I got it. Yep. Cool. I, uh... Back in my, my youth, before I was old enough to, like, know the cool kids and have a, a sweet nickname, uh, my brother, who's uh, quite a bit older than me, had a nickname. He was in high school, uh, and they just referred to him by his last name. And, like, that was him. 
Uh, so whenever I showed up, they just put mini in front of it. Oh, so I was just no. the mini version. I'm like, you know what? This sounds demeaning, but I have a nickname. That's, Let's go. Oh, that's what we like to hear. Um, see, my my first name's Aaron, so you can assume what my nickname was constantly. Hey, 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 Ron, hey, what's hey, Ron. up? And the I'm like, feel really changed a whole generation with that one. Yeah, it really did because, and then you could tell like which teachers saw it because every teacher's first interaction is like they see my name and they go, "What's up, hey, hey, Ron?" It's just like it's like so you knew who saw it and who did it. It's oh yeah. Like, it's an immediate, like, litmus test for the room. You're like, okay, who gets the joke? Who doesn't? Who am I hanging out with and who am I not? It's also one of those things. It gets old pretty quickly once you hit, like, junior year and you got another teacher calling you A.A. Ron. You're like, okay, okay, I got the joke now. I I'm glad you finally had the chance to use the joke. But, guy, it's uh, six years too late on that. I have lived it every day of my life. <laughs> That's not innovative, man. You get a little bit creative here. Like, I don't know. It, um, so we will, don't forget, for anyone that did join late and is ready to see Bracket, this is for Gamers for Giving, the first jab lock. Gamers for Giving is an organization that pulls there. There up consoles to, for, stu or for students, kids <laughs> in the hospital or young adults that are trying to take their mind off stuff. It brings out gaming cards known as go cards. Very clean. We do have a quick video to show that, and so we will show that right now. Every child deserves a chance to be themselves. But right now, in hospitals around the world, many kids are isolated, fighting some of the most difficult battles of their lives. What if we told you gamers have the power to help? We're Gamers Outreach, and we believe the world is better when kids can play. Our team is on a quest to help make play a part of care. With your support, we can restore a sense of joy and normalcy in the lives of families through video games, Learn more and get involved at GamersOutreach.org. This is a Gamers Outreach Cart, or Go Cart for short. It's a portable video game kiosk built specifically for hospitals. Created and assembled by Gamers Outreach, each unit helps provide recreation to kids and young adults unable to leave their bedsides. The carts can be disinfected easily and have 360 degrees of movement, making them ideal for transport in hospitals. Go-karts can accommodate a variety of gaming consoles. They also come with wired controllers, a gaming monitor, and are equipped with a lift mechanism that allows the height to be adjusted. Go-karts provide a safe, flexible, and efficient way to ensure patients have access to entertainment during long-term hospitalization. To learn more about Project Go-Kart, visit GamersOutreach.org. Uh, I, I don't know. Every time I see those Go-Karts, just, they just look so nice. They're just, yeah. so, they're just so pleasing to look at. And you did mention before, it just gives you that McDonald's vibes. It was when McDonald's used to have the GameCube things. They had that random game in there that yep. would shut off every five minutes. Oh, and yeah. You just have to restart. And you would just play it through the first five minutes constantly. But, I don't know, it's really nice to see. And I, like, it, it keeps, I'll keep reiterating the entire time I'm talking. I'm just so excited to be helping commentate and, like, help with this tournament. Because it's such a great cause. And it's just so, it's just, it makes you feel better. Like, we're going to yeah. leave today. Our voices might be fried, but in the back of our heads, we're going to be like, man, we really made a difference today, and that's the best part about it all. Attempted to, at least. Remember, guys, uh, we are, if you can see up in the corner there, the goal is $500. Whatever you have that you can give truly does help. I know a lot of us here are college students, not exactly swimming with the dough, um, but truly anything you have that you can give would mean the world to not only obviously us, because that's fun, it helps uh, feed the stream, everything's fun, but it's really helping out the gamers for giving. Um, and you are donating to a good cause. And you can know that. Is that you are helping children in a hospital. And that's kind of the best thing ever. Um, but with that, we want to make certain that we have a show for you. So we're going to be preparing here for just a moment. We're going to get the players here to the stage. And we'll be getting going with that. Uh, bring up once again for me everything are we able to see the other uh groups today that we have as well or are we only gonna be able to see group one okay, oh, okay cool. so it's not okay that makes sense so we'll leave the other ones up for anticipation i do know i do know that we have atlas here he walked into the building uh, a couple minutes ago see, and I'm he was the one who had the uh 
twelve and two sweep the other night, just absolutely wilding on the game. All right, so we're looking through. We're looking through. Where's oh, Atlas at? Yeah, Atlas, Atlas group. Group Okay, two. Atlas group two. Oh, Echo Force, group four. Pre-show saw Dane right over there. He's in group three. We see him Dane, right group there. Three, would you like that? Right to see that. Um, I'm trying to see. Is there any other names? I recognize. Oh, Flake there over in group seven. Okay, I recognize that one. Uh -huh. I just need him to play Terry. I just need him to play Terry in the tournament. That's all I want. It's going to be so much better, too, because when you're on that, like, land setting, it's so much easier to just get out those Terry combos. And it's just, it's just so satisfying to watch. Just hear oh, the noises yeah. and just see them fly off stage. I just need to see the Buster Wolf. Once he gets that Ghost Sauce, if I can watch the Buster Wolf, that's that's all I require from Terry. Because he already looks great. That hat, perfect piece. So now if you can just land the Buster Wolf, we're dandy. Exactly. It's just... It's basically a uh, given. If you play Terry, you have, you have to throw out one Buster Wolf, and you have to hit it. It's like it's a requirement yeah. to play the character. Almost. Yeah, you got to drop him otherwise. Because I know Flake is in between on whether he's going to play Terry or if he's going to keep with that Pyramithra that he's been a lot in the uh, kind of that training room with the uh, rest of the team. So curious what we see there. I definitely have a bias towards Terry, but if we have to see Pyramithra, you know what? I'm not complaining. I think I love Xenoblade Chronicles too. I've got to actually continue playing it. That would uh, help, but it's fine. If I would to assume, I think he will be playing the Terry though, because Tuesday had a super pop off performance yeah, on the did. Terry. Yeah, so I think he might have some recency bias right there. He's like, you know what? Took six stocks in a match on with Terry. So he's like, you know what? Let's just let's just keep on going. Yeah. I think even after I talked to him in the interview, I'm like, well, you mentioned your character crisis. Like, what made you select Terry? He's like. I don't know. Characters is super satisfying, yeah. and I just like the character. It just feels good to hit with. Um, jab, jab, power dunk, as much of a meme as it is in the Smash community, I mean, it works. It works. It's wonderful. It does its job. It's a meme for a reason. Yeah. It just works. I personally like landing, like, up the up air. I can't remember what it's called, but the spin kick. Oh, it's just so oh, nice yeah. to see him spin around. Yeah, rising and just, tackle. Rising tackle. It's so satisfying to just watch him rise up and then just send them flying. I love it. Yeah, so I'm super curious. I just kind of want to see the entirety of the player pool because obviously when you start reaching those like more, like the larger, the more professional play tournaments, you're going to see a lot of those like meta characters. But this is kind of a local scene a little bit. So I'm thinking we could start to see a lot of those maybe off meta or even just wild choices that people are just like nichely good with. I mean, come on, show me Incineroar. Show me Epic Eddie. I need to see it play. I mean, there is a potential for Incineroar. We do have Dane. I do is remember Dane Incineroar what, player? I mean, when I, tr I, I, like, I had a small brief moment when I came in last year that I tried out for Smash, and yeah. Dane just trashed me on Incineroar the whole time. <laughs> so, like, maybe he didn't play Incineroar, but he still trashed me on for, like, like 10, 50 minutes. Yeah. But, so maybe if there's a potential we might see that. Um, I am excited because, like you said, it is a more local scene. It, I think, relatively, if you're not literally playing in the professional top eights of the massive tournaments, meta doesn't really matter. Yeah. It's just it's just how good you are at the game. <laughs> For, the only thing that really matters is, like, matchups technically do. Oh, Yo! speaking of Arthur, dropping in a $20 donation. That's huge. Thank you so much. Yeah, let's, let's see if we can get people in there. Uh, Arthur, I, I'm hoping you're in chat. We can't read it, but we'll find a way to see it. What are you looking for today? Like, if you had to pick a character other than Ridley, because we all obviously want to see Ridley. That's not my own personal bias. Uh, are you rooting for anyone in particular? You're looking for any uh, characters that you really like to see? And Turtle, you as well. Which you? Oh, if you could have one character enter the tournament right now, who are you looking for to have the most exciting match? Okay, I'm gonna take out my Bowser bias. Okay. Obviously, don't want to take that. I play enough. I see enough because I play it. Honestly, I know Sora came out. I've literally, maybe, I haven't seen any professional games. I saw, like, one person play Sora. I'm hoping to at least commentate a Sora just so I can see what the character is all go. about. Because, or Sephiroth, too. I, those are, like, the two characters that I barely have seen anything of. And yeah. so, it'd just be nice to see those two characters. I like Pyramithra. I, I've seen because uh, uh, I've seen Flake play it. Yeah. So like I've seen that one, but those are the two characters I haven't seen much of. So I, I actually really want to see one of those two characters. I don't know yeah. if that's like a hot take within the Smash community nah. or anything right now. Cause... I also want to see a Sora. If we see a Sora, you can expect because I diehard Kingdom Hearts fan. Nice. Uh, now does that mean I understand it? No, not at all. Have I played every game twice? Yes. Do I understand it? No. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna feed you a couple different lines from Kingdom Hearts, whether well, actual voice lines or just like bits of lore, and I just want you to really soak them in on yeah, 
this is a thing. I'll make sure I totally remember. Every time I see Sora, I will just hear those voice lines because yeah. I know what Kingdom Hearts is. I haven't personally played any of the games because a lot of those types of games I've started getting in more recently. So okay. probably at some point in the next year or two, I'll probably play at least one of the games. Who uh, knows? Okay. But, to give you a little bit of a teaser. Now, this comes a little later in the series. But Donald Duck, okay, we all know Donald Donald Disney Duck uh, is one of the three single most powerful entities in all of the Square Enix like IP. Ooh, and we have another oh, we have a $10 donation from Maddie. I know Maddie. I love Maddie. Oh, thank you very much. Thank we very Maddie. we we pre anything. Hey, we're super close to be able to purchase one game. <laughs> like think about that. Yeah. Every sixty dollar yeah. sixty dollars. That's a game. That's Assuming another you're game. Doing a brand new too, because obviously there's ways I love going to local game stores. Um, because you can find a lot of really niche things. Uh, for a nice amount of money. Um, so truly, every bit of money helps because you don't need the most recent AAA games. In a lot of those videos we were watching, it was Minecraft. It's the simple things also that a lot of people find joy in. Uh, and that's not going to cost you sixty dollars every time. Exactly. So that's the definition of hey, money will help. That's just kind of what it is. So thank good. you guys who have donated. And for everybody else, whatever you have, truly, we'll do our best to put on a good show. And if you have anything you can give us, we'd love to see it. Yeah, it's just, it's just, it just, it just makes us feel better too. Because every time we see, we, because we have it, you can see it like, wait, right here. We can also <laughs> see that. So every single, we see it, we see that pop up and we're just like, yes, let's go. Yeah. It's, it's, it's super good to see and we very much appreciate it. Yeah. So let's see, I think we've got our first two players coming into the room. Oh, gotcha. Okay, we will go to a quick break, and when we come back, we will have pool started. So, see you guys in a second. Hey, thank you to Anonymous. Just saw that donation. Thank you much. Uh, and I do know Arthur. I have been scolded for not knowing Arthur, <laughs> especially after the story. Uh, and Arthur, I apologize. This one's for you. <laughs> Anonymous, this one's for you too. And Kaylee, shout out everybody. Thank you guys so much. Just, just Hey, can we just get a heart? Oh, Underdog Lucifer. Thank you very much for the $10. That's my support. Heart? Shout out. Yeah, sharp. Very much appreciate <laughs> We very much appreciate it. Every little bit helps. And look, we're already talking about that $60, and we're right, already and over we're it. already there. That's, uh, I can do basic math. That's over a tenth of the way to our goal. That's perfect. We love to see those numbers. Heck yeah. And we do have the first two players here. We Let's have an, a go. bowl of ham and Echo Force. The two players that are here today. I will say I am, I am what we in the business call a ham fiend. 
Uh, I believe every holiday deserves ham to be the main meal. Uh, not really, not really a part of Turkey Gang, unfortunately. Okay, I, I actually agree with you. I, 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 I honey roasted ham. Is Dude, yes. So, uh, it's so much better than turkey. Let's, let's ham. Yeah, okay. It's good. Turkey. I know you can do it right, but it always comes out just a little bit dry. And I'm exactly. Not, like, it's just, so, it's just so hard, and ham is just like, it's just so tender it's and just. It's, it's perfect. perfect. Alrighty, and I think we're gonna start moving here into Group One. I'm excited to see which two characters that let's are gonna go. be pulled out because right, we're getting to see our first. On stream characters for the tournament. Ooh, oh, I love Violet. Demon Violet. This character came out, and I'm telling you, I dropped Bowser for like a good four or five months and exclusively played Violet. So really? I'm super excited. See, now I will say though, uh, full of ham, Violet. Yeah, it's fun, but Echo Force with the Joker. Uh, when Joker came out, I will say, because obviously he was uh, announced the night of the Game Awards. What did that have been? Like three years ago. Um, that oh, is, that's the closest I, I ever think I've had to have a stroke because I love Persona 5 and a lot of my friends here on campus didn't know Persona 5 and so they start showcasing Joker and as soon as I put together who it was I like I started hyperventilating I got really hot and I'm like oh my heavens it's happening it's happening they put Joker in Smash and all my buddies were around me watching me writhe on the floor like can we call someone I'm like no no just give me this character sooner just let me stay. Just let me live in my bliss right now. I'm, I'm completely fine. Trust me. Oh yeah, and I mean you're seeing how he's playing too. Echo Force out here, absolutely rocking around with the Joker. He's wonderful with those aerial combos, and then he has neutral special. It's a gun. <laughs> how do you deal with that? I hope maybe we can see Joker versus Kirby. So Joker versus Kirby. Kirby the gun. Oh, we got Clifford the Big Red Dog. Arsene coming out here, powering up all of Joker's attacks, adding a little bit of that extra curse damage to everything, and just turning him into an absolute monster. Joker's Rebel Guard, which just helps him absorb a little bit of damage and avoid all knockback, becomes, oh, Tetraracon, I think is the name? Uh, and it would be both a reflector for both physical and ranged attack. So Violet, the distance demon, now in a lot of trouble. Yeah, and Violet is one of those characters you have to keep that space because Joker is so good at closing that gap and getting in. But once Violet does get characters at this range, Ooh. a lot of their moves do oh. kill in a beautiful <laughs> read off the side, having a bullet cam bring it back to 2-2, but they are at 120, so they have a lot of room to try to come back into this first game. Yeah, I mean, and that's the good news with Violet. Uh, similar to those Ganons, you're hitting really hard if you can manage it. And Joker, he's a small little boy. He takes a lot of damage. He flies very far. So long as you're avoiding getting hit, you can dole out the damage well enough. Okay, a nice little back air, but Arsene coming back into the fray. And Arsene, most of the art moves will, that connect at this point will just kill now with that Arsene. Oh yeah. But Violet does have the space with that spear, with Ooh, that... Back throw with those abilities to try to just keep Arsene out. Oh, we're gonna run through as best we can with the down air. Violet's now trying to set up potentially for just that bow and arrow to get the hit, but does not manage to find it and instead loses out to Echo Force. Yeah, but Violet, with having that sweet spot on those um, forward smashes, do have a potential just to kill the Joker at this percent. If they can't find that sweet spot, it could just be enough to take out this Joker. Mm -hmm. Having another ledge guard scenario, Ham has been very good on the ledge though, keeping oh, yeah. everything nice and consistent. You saw the great edge guard to get the first stock out, and if he's able to get Joker back in that scenario, I think that could be his end back into this game. He's got to be so careful though, Joker is so easy to juggle off the top of his up air. Oh, and as he keeps setting him up and over, it's just putting Ham into a dangerous position. Uh, they both had such incredible recoveries as well. One uh, Joker with the hook shot and Violet with the extending sword, both of them grappling to ledge in a dangerous way. Yeah, and you do see that Ham is bringing this back in this layer part. It started off a little bit rough, but you see the comfortability starting to reach, gain more of those attacks. In. And I think at this point in the site, he's just, he's just got to put, he's looking for game two. Ooh. Ooh, okay, get back on stage, but we, Violet can look for with rage and everything. There is a possibility of bringing this back. Oh, yeah. But. He's got to finish this stock out early and try to keep his percent as low as possible. Yep. Gotta get those tilts into that spear there. Oh, both of them challenging as far as they can go with that upward recovery, but both managed to find it back. Echo Force now, it's brought down to that 1 1. Rebel Guard active, getting him off guard with the grab, though. Uh, oh, dash attack. Good. Yeah, the dash attack just not getting it. Joker trying to get him off the edge with that descending gun. Yeah, you just see Violet just trying to play that rage in that oh, back air. Oh, the back air knife, sealing it out for Echo Force, taking the first round. 
I think that was very good, though, if you look, because it just still looked like maybe Echo Force, maybe just, it was a little bit more comfortable at the start, was able to get a lot of that um, damage up in the beginning, gain yeah. quick 130 while they were only maybe at, like, 1230, but you can see that Ham was bringing it back in that latter part of the match, so I think oh, Game yeah. 2 is going to be so much more even in the standpoint, and I think Ham does have the possibility to maybe pull off a reverse sweep in a best of three. Who knows? We'll have to see I, at this I'd point. I'd like to see it, but I will always be rooting for Joker. I think the real difference in that game was they both deal approximately the same damage. It's where and how they deal it that's the difference. Joker has so many small and easily exited attacks that he can add little chip damage here and there by following up the attacks with the gun. Byleth, however, a lot more dedication is required to each input and attack that you are giving, but if you land them, it is going to be hitting way more. And we're actually going to see them run it back. No pain, uh, no changing on characters. We're going to keep it going with that Byleth Joker run. Yeah, I would like to see uh, maybe more like an, an F tilt, or those F tilts coming out from Byleth, because it's a very strong zoning move, and I think it could help relieve some of the pressure that Joker is putting on. Yeah. It does use, he's already trying to use the tilt a little bit more, try to keep that Joker space out, see if they can stack any of the damage out on them as possible. Ooh, and a lovely up air from that Byleth, trying to grapple them with the command of the sky. Arsene, though, not liking that his master was hit just a little bit, decided to come out and play bodyguard. Yeah, I do like the Violet just seizing with Arsen. Arsen just keeping him zoned out. Ooh, gets a reflector on that. Oh, but, <laughs> finding the cheeky little bow and arrow in the sky. Yeah, it's just he's just keeping him at that range, just waiting out the Arsen. Did a very good job keeping his percent basically even as Arsen was out. Now he's looking to be able to close out the stocks and see now has the kill pressure because it's very hard for Joker to kill at this percent with without finding a ledge trap. Yeah, especially with such low... Uh, Low progress on the Arsene engage. Oh, I'm trying to just fish out for that Rebels Guard that stays out forever and a half. As soon as you think it's done, false. It has ooh, about three times the amount of time you thought it did. Yeah, that's, that's the thing I always have to use with Joker. It's just how long that just stays out. It just, that one hit basically charged the bar out to full and move that back there. Just snagging, finding a nice clean kill there to close it out without letting the Byleth get too high. Yeah, that's the biggest issue with that Rebel's Guard. You really want to, you think about other people with their shields and shield poking. You want to try to time it out as best as you can. Ooh, a wonderful little up air take, or up tilt taking care of that. Yeah. Um, and it was really good to see, like, hit the frame that like, they collided with the moves, just coming out, getting up the up smash, and just taking it out very quickly. But it does look like Violet is using there their range is. advantage a lot grab. better now. Yeah. That's the, how do you weigh your options? When you see that Rebel's Guard out, you have to think about how long it's going to stay, and obviously it's always longer than you think it is. But do you try to punish his exiting of it and give it a lot of damage, or do you try to run up and get this smaller but combo per, like, combo chance with the guard? And are you in a spot where you can make that split-second decision? It's a real nice mix-up on Joker's part, because you can start to fluster your enemy very easily. I think my favorite part about it is you can use it out of a combo to try to see. <laughs> if, they, if it's not true, you can try to get out of it a little bit early. It's like, Whoop. ooh, the gun almost skipping there. Uh, but Yeah, trying to get with that downward gun. Oh, the lovely up smash. Yeah, nice good read. And Ham's in a good spot. You're going to probably see them space out this Arsene a little bit more like they did on that first stock. Do a good job. If they can just get that little bit of poke damage every so often, every time Arsene takes damage, his bar goes down just a little bit more. So if you can just dink him a little bit over time, you'll be spacing him out very well. Yeah, I think they've done a really good job in the second game using um, waiting out that Arsene bar a lot better off, so they're getting themselves in a good spot to contest Joker at these higher percents without that Arsene meter to worry about, because those are the attacks that are going to kill you at 90. Oh yeah, when you're sitting in this Joker, I mean, you're either getting gimped by downward gun, you can't get carried off top, otherwise if you're just looking for that back air, that back air can also give that kill percentage. But everything else is kind of just a means to an R set. Yeah, and right there you see him going for the trade there. The, his move's going to be able to kill that close to the edge. Ooh! Ooh. Okay. Nice read on the air dodge, taking out and putting it to 0-0. Yeah, zero, zero. Zero, zero on final stock for both players, getting that run back with that last life. Yeah, and I, you see that Ham adapted a lot better to this matchup in the second game, being able to make it a lot closer and not gain so far disadvantage that happened in that beginning. Yeah, and I will say, uh, a little detached from this match, I just remembered that the Belmonts exist. I want to see a Belmont play, and I want to see them use their neutral B and just fling the flail as much as they can. It's the funniest thing to me. Get someone off the ledge and just, just <laughs> hang off the edge and be like, hey, if you walk into this, you might... Could get in. Yeah, I, I'm a simple man. I play Elden Ring. Uh, my buddy started going with the, uh, the Morning Star and watching him do that off of his horse. I'm like, this is hilarious. Oh wait, this is just Belmont Smash. 
foot with a horse now. Right? Oh man, Echo Force just trying to keep his distance, hoping he can get that Arsene meter, because at 111%, most things from Byleth will take you out. Uh, Byleth at 35, though, easy still combo potential. You're not too high that the knockback removes you from combos, because that's that's an issue Joker faces. If you get to too high of a percent when fighting him, you fly too far when he attempts those combos, and he has to rethink his next matchup. Yeah, and Joker needs to be really careful on the edge here, because just one F tilt, or just oh, yeah. one, just even a back air Whoop. like that. Back air is like that. Be Letting, oh, a bowl of ham just go ahead and take it on that 2 0. -oh. No, I think uh, oh, was it's 1-1 one, one because I can't read. Echo Fox took the first one. I can't read. But we can see the level of people that are in the survey. It's going to be a very fun one to commentate and oh, yeah. watch because just seeing the adaptability so quickly because a bull hand did go down really early in that first game. But in that second game, you can see how fast they adapted, got a little bit more warmed up, download. and closed it in. And so now the pressure is on Echo Fox. Can they get their download back or... Even then, because it's not even like that second game was bad. They both were at 0%, one stock apiece. So yeah. it's just, he just has to find the finishers and look for it. And it's just going to run right back on PS2. Everyone likes a good PS2 <laughs> stage, so they're just going to keep on running it back on that one there. Yeah. Uh, now, I think what's interesting is if you're joking right now, so obviously you won the first game, you felt very confident. You saw them not change the counter pick, so you were still feeling confident. And the buy lift just kind of means they came out of that starting gate completely knowing your moveset and they've altered how they play. So if you're going again, now you're Joker, you've not counterpicked, you're realizing you need to find some way to now learn that Byleth even further, otherwise what they learned in the last and the game prior, they're going to keep carrying and they're just going to find you off the very end. Yeah, you see the game's a lot more, a little bit slow pace in the beginning there as Arsene's coming out, so he's picking up the pace, try to put on the pressure, because... Wow, just finding the recovery off the very corner of the stage. Yeah, because I feel like that was the thing that happened in that game too, is that he didn't really get much value out of this Arsene, but you can already see in this third match that he's already putting on the pressure, trying to put as much damage down with that Arsene, trying to get that kill there option. There it is, nice with the back air knife off the left side. That's the biggest thing for Joker right now, is he needs to pick the game up in pace. The more he takes damage, he is perpetually in danger. He needs to get that by zero time to breathe, combo them off the side, and not give him a chance to play. Because the moment Byleth gets a chance to hit, they will, and they'll take the stock for it. Yeah, Bullet Ham is using those arrows very efficiently this game. Just using them to space, using them to find those kills when Joker's just on the edge there. And they're just using the Byleth's range a lot better. It, yeah. as they keep going on. But you see Echo Force is getting a little bit more of the download and is trying to find those spaces to get in there and rack up the percent as he's doing right now. Joker way more appreciating that gun now though, especially with that jump into descending gun, just to try to take on that damage and using that Ega to get that lasting curse uh, damage over time. Just trying to raise that percentage enough that once Arsene comes out, it is a guaranteed quick kill so we can get to that next stock as fast as possible. The longer the game goes on, the more Joker will suffer. Yeah, and he's doing a very good job getting that high percent because Arsene is about to come out and with Byleth being this high percent, there's a potential that Arsene could be out for maybe two stocks and get a lot high percent yeah. going into that third one. If you're lucky enough to Joker right now, if you don't manage to get Arsene during this stock, you keep yourself at 31, you get the kill with that back air knife again. You are in a great spot where as soon as they drop off Halo, you are rushing them down with the big red man. Oh, and if you can manage it, that just gives so much damage and threat potential that you are not looking to see if you are Violet. I think I think Violet right now at this point is just trying to sp waste as much of this meter as possible in order just when they come in on that third side. Ooh. Really good edge guard there, getting way out there in that blast going to finish off that Violet. Got, got to 170, so did live to the higher percent. Mm -hmm. And did waste out that Arsene meter, so Joker is Helped not going to have just to a little bit, but that is the big issue with Arsene, is, especially now that Joker has two stocks. He has the time to go ahead and get Arsene a second time. So anything that he can get out of this Arsene right now, simply bonus value. It's that early, quick damage he hit in there, and the longer Joker has to play the game, he has now turned it that he has the time on his side. Yeah, and he's playing a lot more calm and collective. He was playing really rushed down those first two games, but as you see, Echo Force adapted to be a lot more calm, using those um, side views, using the guns, trying to just get tack on the damage early on this Byleth instead of trying to brawl and look for the combos. Yeah. Ooh, D attempting to get that drag down with the grappling hook. Yeah, and Byleth right now is just trying to get anything, but Arsene. Arsene. Is out at 92%, so this is dangerous for this Byleth. They need to keep this Arsene out of range, and they're doing a good job that so far, but that oh, up air the up putting air. him in disadvantage. Byleth's in danger. Catch him on the bottom of the neutral. Flipping him just a little bit. That Aegon throwing him up with a second. 
So how are we going to punish the ledge? It does look pull back in. Ooh, oh, with the dash attack, dash he's going to finish it out. Echo Force bringing it back in that third game. As you can see, it was a very great series to watch, though, because oh, yeah. you saw adaptability on both sides, mm -hmm. bringing it back, taking early leads, and just playing a very good Smash. So I'm oh, excited yeah. to see the rest of the tournament after that first set of games because yeah. it, just, it just shows you the level of competition because... I, I haven't seen much of a bull ham. I don't know if like maybe in other tournaments he's played or not, but yeah. he's coming in and showed very much. And when well, we were talking about yeah, Atlas, the tournament strong. Yeah, and opening but, uh, it up, and it does look like Atlas, the Pac Man, is sitting down, and he will be facing off against a Blaze. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe he's not playing Pac Man. Maybe he wants to spice things up, and and Atlas really wants to play Ridley today. Right? 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 Never mind. Atlas is a killjoy and is only going to play his most incredible character. Ugh, this man. This man. Well, yeah, what's up, what's up playing with your mo your best character that's super satisfying for the crowd and everyone to watch? Like, like why not pick Ridley? Play right. You've spent four years studying Pac-Man. I think that's about how long Smash uh, Ultimate's been out. You spent four years. That'd be like college. You spent four years in the final day. You're going to graduate. Don't you want to be like, you know what? Never mind. I changed my mind. Let's do botany today, guys. Let's <laughs> let's uh let's get the redo. Run it back. Yeah, but I don't know. I'm excited to see what Blaze is gonna pull out though, because that is the best part about these is that when you are in the lower part of pools, even at those other tournament, like even at normal tournaments, you have your name staples, you have your ESAMs, your hung like hungry box. You have all those people. You know what they play. Oh yeah. But you don't know who the other person's gonna play. Right. And that's where the surprise and like the fun of having these tournaments is is seeing those other characters go up against things you see that are more popular. Yeah, and given the sheer roster size of Smash Ultimate, obviously when you are practicing, you need to learn your own character, you learn their own fundamentals, and you just master them. And then you pick the biggest threats to them. So if you're Pac-Man, anybody like that hero, as soon as he gets bounced, you know you have to plan to play around that before you ever even get to that matchup. When you're playing somewhere local, and maybe not everyone's running the common meta, they might find someone who does have your character at a bit of an off position and seeing that potential for, oh, I guess I know my character, but I haven't planned for whatever your win condition is, so I don't know exactly how to do this. And I'm hoping we can see Atlas. Uh, obviously, we love Atlas. I want to see him struggle a little bit. Yeah, we, we want to see these people. We want to see a struggle. We want to see them fight a little bit. We don't want to just have... So I'm really excited to see what Blaze. I like what you mentioned with the hero, because it's one of those things is that when you get to like a certain level of play and there is like a meta in mm -hmm. quotes, sometimes maybe like a character that is considered bottom tier has a very good matchup oh, into yeah. Pac Man. That kind of rogue matchup. Exactly. And so if in these lower parts of the tournament, that's where you can see those like surprises or like what because maybe if it is a a bottom tier character and it loses to like the other top ten. So if those characters are getting weeded out at the beginning you might not have to worry about it per se, but when you're at the lower parts of the end, that you, that's where the surprises can happen. Yeah, what, the upsets happen at the bottom. That's where you didn't expect it. And we're going to be seeing that Wii Fit trainer come on out. Uh, now, I hate fighting Wii Fit trainer. i got to be honest. Everything about their animations, I don't physically comprehend what is happening. And they're just, like, so quick. And then it's just, like, yeah. they're also, like... It, because of like how it is, it feels a little bit rigid, so it's just like it's really like hard to read sometimes. Yeah, I'm, I'm used to the flow of a lot of characters. Them having a weird amount of uh, meteor smashes that that always puts me off. Like the soccer ball, if you can hit with the headbang against the soccer ball on the opposing character, that's a meteor smash. I don't comprehend how to hit that. So maybe that's my own ineptitude. But Blaze over here pacing Atlas out very nicely. Both of them keeping that near 100%. Ready to get that meditation going. He's finding the soccer ball. How? How? I don't get it. <laughs> Twice! Why? Hey, we're talking about maybe we see Atlas be put under pressure and the Blaze is doing a very good job coming out swinging in this first set. They're both basically even at this point because most of the moves are probably going to kill at this percentage. Oh, the melon. Barely living on that one. Oh, that's a lot that's a lot of projectiles. If you're looking to come in off that side of the stage, uh, Blaze with a lot of fear, but man can navigate it well. Yeah, he's looking. Trying to, he's trying to keep his space here. Trying to see if he can get anything in it. Oh, the apple. apple taking the hit. Apple a day, you know. Taking that star KO and Atlas coming out on an early lead, but with how it is, when well, he's racking up straight to 50%, so he's making that, extending that lead very quickly here. 
but Blaze can find a kill here and not make sure the game gets too far away from him. Yeah. He's got to close that out real quickly, though, because Atlas still on that first stock at almost double the percentage, but, I mean, what's that worth in the next, oh, the next stock once it comes along? You do not want to be fighting from that behind position this entire game. Especially against, like, a character like that Batman. Ooh, that key going a little bit limp as the Hydrant pushes it back a little bit, I think. That was huge. I'm wondering if Atlas, uh, obviously being such an icon, is someone that Blaze has watched a lot of. He's watched a couple of those streams, so he kind of has that little bit of knowledge on Atlas's playstyle, knowing that the key to the Hydrant Hydrant is such a useful play. Atlas, given that little bit of nine, he sees what happened there. He yeah. feels it. And sometimes when you're in that first game, you get you take these really far oh, well. and deep lead, or, dis or not leads, um, you fall far behind early. You just have to get that one stock to try to get confidence back in yourself. You're like, I can't get stocks off him. Just yep. a little bit rough trying to get that first one off, and that's maybe all you need to try to bring it back. Yeah, Pac-Man, Pac-Man's but immortal like the rest of us. But sometimes Atlas makes him look immortal. Oh, managing to swipe the bell back somehow after getting the bounce off of it. Unable to tech off the side there, throwing in the sock ball just to try to find himself some recovery options, but not finding him. The ghost hit him off the side. Yeah, and it's just like Atlas is like taking nice and calm, just keeping it very collected and cool, because if I had to pick like people in the tournament, he is obviously one of the favorite people. Oh yeah. So he just needs to make sure that he just keeps games nice and calm, make sure he's all warmed up. Look at the just the razor focus. I think that's the favorite part of looking at these cams now. Is that you just see how focused both players are. They're not really letting the what's happening in the match affect their like mentality. Oh yeah, they well because that's the kind of thing you have to realize that oh no, I missed my start to the combo. That is totally okay. I have to mix up options. I just gotta make certain that I don't lose myself in this. Wow! Like halting the hydrant as soon as it comes out to get back up at the Pac-Man, preventing all sorts of combos. Uh, of course, once he gets that bell out, it's all over with the crying. I... Okay, maybe yeah. I blinked for a few too many frames there. Yeah, you blinked for two what, frames and the bell happened? flied across. Why Why did the bell get over there? Was it? I guess he just, I think he Z-dropped the bell onto the Hydra and just yes. sent it across the screen. Yes, it Okay, is that what happened? I, I, the, I, the, I the trainer threw some. They threw their projectile as well. It bounced off, and it looked like the bell still managed to go over it and knock him out in the end. I was exceptionally confused. I thought from that position there was nothing to do, and all of a sudden I'm just sitting here. Okay, the soccer ball is coming down to hit them, and then all of a sudden, ooh, Blaze with the switch up now going that into Pyra that Pyro Mithra. Mithra. Opening it up with that Mithra too to try to get the speed and quick damage to get onto the field. We'll Round it out. Ooh, managed to snipe the item from the air, but not using it to their own combo, unfortunately. Um, we'll be seeing that Pyra almost as soon as Atlas starts hitting that 60%, because at that point in time, all you need to do is fish for that final hit. Holy cannoli! Pac-Man! Oh. With the stage spike coming right? back to stage. Almost saving Mithra, only to say, no, no, no. I'm just saving you for later. Yeah, and, and then Pyra's out right now as a try to see if he can probably tack on some of that damages here to maybe try to find an early kill because assuming Pyro being that harder hitter definitely could probably kill from it one of those early percentages. Yeah, I, I think the mindset from Blaze on that one is as soon as he rocked out with Mithra, it was very evident very quickly that Pac-Man has a lot of experience against this fighter. It looks like maybe Blaze is hoping that if they're prioritizing potentially that early Pyra instead of the early Mithra, they might have a bit longer chance to like switch up their options. Yeah, as you were uh, mentioning Atlas does was playing against Flake and Flake does play a lot of Pyro Mitho, so there is a lot of experience to be had in that matchup. But you can see Bot Dodge but still get pulled out by that dash attack. It's just like Atlas is just playing this nice calm and just keeping this Pyro Mithra at bay, not allowing them to get in there <laughs> as he's comboing off of that bell. Right, deciding not to back air them off stage, but rather back them back into stage, looking like it might get punched just a wee bit. We were talking about some of those early kills coming out. Diane at 91%, so that's a very good spot to find if you are Blaze trying to find those early percents to kill this back right now, to try to bring this game back into his play. Oh yeah, again, the earliest you can get them off the field, the better. Obviously, any chance, any time that they are on the field, you're just accumulating that little bit of extra damage, and you never know when that extra 20% is the difference between life or death during that final stop. Yeah, you already see that Blaze is playing this a lot more in that slow stage to try to get as much as possible. Oh, and he snipes him out with that bear. bell. Oh, that dang bell and Hydra combo uh, switched up to the bell and key combo. It's just an absolute nightmare if you're trying to go against a Batman who's the entire stage of rest, but just kind of safely sitting on his side, doing whatever he wants. 
that, that's not the Pac-Man and that Hydra. That's like the more like under, um, not thought of as much with that is that it's just, it takes up a lot of space. It could just really throw you off your game enough that it could make it so you don't find your normal options. Now, for those of you who don't know on that one, uh, Pyra has the ability to throw her sword there out at a distance and try to guard it out. Uh, and when you're hovering it there over the ledge a little bit, for most characters or people who aren't attuned to it, oftentimes get caught when attempting to cover on the ledge. Obviously, this is the showcase that Atlas knows what he is doing. So as soon as he saw that, he decided to up, uh, up air dodge through the blade so he wouldn't get caught on it by that ledge. I did not know that either. That's what I was looking at. It does look like he is trying to finish him off with this Pyro who does have more of the kill options and with Oh wow. Is that a neutral the, air to kill? I, I'm pretty sure that was a neutral air. Okay. Killing yeah. at 120. Cool. So every attack in her kit does kill this one. I mean that is what happens Ow. sometimes is with that bell coming down coming down from the skies just to get grabbed. Balancing the hydrant just a little bit. That Pac-Man trap on the trampoline. I did not know. Oh, oh and once again, that apple. hydrant coming into play to take out the last stock, just like in that first game. And very good performance by Blaze, though. Bringing oh, yeah. Atlas in both games down to a one-stock scenario. And when you're I facing a tournament, hey, when you're if you're in a tournament setting and you're facing one of the tournament favors, just bringing that one stock just shows that, you know what, I'm feeling good right now. And is that that's going to be a lot going into that. It's going to give him confidence oh, yeah. going into his later pools match because it's like, I can do this. Yeah, and Atlas obviously has to feel good catching the normal win high. I don't know. You've got to have a little bit of doubt when that happens because now that you've lost the two both times to someone who's not on your team, who's not usually going to those national or like regional tournaments, you're wondering like, who else do we have on campus? Who else is the sleeper? That See, that's the, always the thing when you are in a college setting, when esports, it's on the rise now in colleges. Mm -hmm. it, like, our program is only, like, four or five years old at this point. Yeah. It's it's really oh, not that hands. old yeah. at all. Because So when you think yeah. about it in that context, how many players came in when our program's two years old and are currently juniors or maybe even seniors that they just didn't know or they yeah. just didn't know? Like They've been practicing this whole time, and it's like, oh, wait. We offer a team for that. What if I just walk on and stomp everybody? I think that'd be just as funny. Yeah, and that's a, I think that's a really big thing when you think of stuff because, like, um, when we were like trying to find people for League of Legends, we found someone who was a senior. They so that means we've had a person that was capable of playing for us. Yeah, we just had to find them, and that's a lot yeah. of time. And that's the good thing about these tournaments too is that it helps you to find those people and be like, oh wow, we have more than just these. Like, I think there's may maybe like six to eight people on smash bros varsity or that are just like that are yeah. capable of taking stocks off these people because like you and i were talking about like two games in a row taking two stocks off of atlas and i i right you never know it uh so next up on the docket i think we're still now we're we rolling into group two now just looking at bracket yeah let's go ahead and bring that bracket up oh beautiful looking at the scores there Ruby Leviathan, Blaze, RPDP, Atlas running back in again. So do they have another set going on in the other room? Is that... We got all groups going over right now. Okay, so all groups are okay. concurrent. They're running over in that other room as well. Uh, you can see the upper right. 1% of matches played, so don't you worry, guys. We have plenty for you today. And reminder, this is all for Gamers Outreach. Uh, if you were there to see those videos earlier, we're helping out get those go-karts for children in hospitals, giving them the ability to game while they are either in recovery or still unfortunately getting through whatever they are going through. We're trying to raise as much money as we can for them. And again, I got to plug it every time. Anything you can give always helps. I know not a lot of us have a whole lot of money, but if you can give whatever you can, we can use it no matter what. And if you are interested, it is exclamation point donate to pull up the link to donate to. And if you want to know more about gamers for giving, exclamation point GFG in the chat too. If you want to see more of what they do and see any more promotional or see how you can get involved yourself to help them out in the situation. Yeah. And it does look like we have our next set. We have Coach, Coach Dane. Dane. And we have also... Badger. Is he just going by Badger for this one? Bless he him. goes under a lot of stuff. I've seen Casting Badger. I've seen Wounded Badger. Seems like he, he, he it's Badger and he changes <laughs> as he goes. But I'm very excited to see because this is coach versus student because 
they do interact with each other because I do know Badger is on that JV Smash team. Mm -hmm. So it's very exciting to see these two play against each other so early on in pools, and I'm very excited to see it. Oh, yeah. For anyone who was here kind of before the actual tournament itself started, we were just watching the friendlies. You got to see a little bit of that Coach Dane play. He was running through with the Jigglypuffs, with the Captain Falcon, and we were seeing a lot of fun with him up against a Ganondorf. So we know he's good against the heavies, so we're going to figure out who Badger's going to be playing. Yeah. We'll see if Coach Dane can keep running that same skill level. I'm excited to see what Dane's going to pull out. Is he going to show these youngins <laughs> that his his he's, he's not struck in with age yet, so he can play those fast characters, combo-heavy characters, yeah. still try to keep up with that? Or if he's going to go back cause, and play a lot more of the laid-back characters, maybe an Incineroar? Cause, or I want to see the Incineroar so badly. I'm, I'm a simple man. Simple desires. I That's think so we're cool. both on the same page, is that we like seeing heavies, and we like just seeing them hit their satisfying heavy attacks and just send someone off stage in it at 60%. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I just, like, you know it's funny when you get the one revenge, and you're like, haha, I'm powered up. And then if you're the point, you're like, oh no, they're gonna hurt me. I gotta kill them first. Right. Then they get the second revenge, and you go, uh-oh. Have I made an error? Surely, surely this wouldn't happen a third time, would it? And then Dane. The Mad Lad hits you. The third revenge. And now, you know, if he so much as blinks at you with a minor aggressive intent, you're off the stage. You don't even have a chance. You're gone. My favorite part about Incineroar is after you hit a giant smash attack, he just sits there ah. and just taunts you. It's ah. just like, I just smashed you with that. And goodbye. Him and having also BM native to his kit following everything, you don't need to taunt. We got those built in. We know you're a busy man. We'll just automate that for That's, you. It is the best part about Zinroar. That's all I'm gonna say because you just smacked him, and I'm just gonna sit here and BM you, and then yeah, and then he just BMs you afterwards with another taunt. It's just like so you're trying to get in that mental game right there. Yeah, and then with him, I also huge fan of that neutral special. Just kind of helicopter, helicopter uh, there <laughs> on stage gives me that little DK feeling. But he's got weird amounts of armor on that, and it's just pleasant to witness. Xavier. Shout out with that $20 donation. Thank you so much. Oh, uh, Yeah, I only just saw that through hey, the last donation. I'm sorry Booker, if I didn't see that that's earlier. That's my homie. That's my homie. Yeah? My, he's actually was my high school's Smash captain. Oh, shit. And shoot. we went back and forth Ganondorf versus Bowser for yeah. literally seven months. The amount of time we played that matchup <laughs> is ridiculous. And thank you very much. We appreciate oh, we'll any give, little we'll donation. Give Xavier a little heart, give a little too. Heart. Yeah. But, yeah. No, it's just one. It's just, every little bit helps. And. Every time you see it, it's just a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, as we, we just saw it in the uh, in the most recent donations. We're like, oh, shoot, did we miss that? Oh, no. We're sorry, man. <laughs> we appreciate it. I think it just popped up. It, it probably popped up while we were switching in between stuff. We were so, so vehemently speaking on the uh, Incineroar. We weren't ready to even pay attention to anything else. I said, I went through a character crisis, and he's also had to deal with Incineroar, too, because ah. I think I think there's three characters, I guess four, because after I stopped playing for my high school, I picked up Zero Suit, but I've gone okay. Zero Suit, Incineroar, Bowser, and Byleth are the four main that characters I've been playing. It is quite the eclectic team. I gotta say, I think my, my most usual is Zelda, uh, but I play her almost exclusively using the up recovery to nice. deal damage, mm -hmm. because I think it's the funniest thing to just warp around the stage. Uh, Joker, I'm not good at him, but I will play him. Uh, and a whole lot of Dark Samus as well. We got the Incineroar. Dane blessed us with the purple Incineroar. We got big, the cat Incineroar, too. So you know Dane is a man of culture. He's out here for the win. Yeah, and we have Badgers that suit, or not Zero Suit, sorry. Other Samus. <laughs> full we suit. have a Full Suit Samus, and I've seen Badger play before, and he's absolutely insane that this character. It is so fun to watch him play it. See, I know, I know it's not a lot, and this isn't a, a great tale of skill, uh, but if you're using the Zare as Samus, I know you actually know what you're doing, because I don't usually see the Zare from anyone who's just, like, casually playing Samus to camp you out. Yeah, I think that's a very good thing to point out, is that when you see with both Samus, it's just using that Zare to zone out, to keep them as space, it just shows the level, it shows that they, they understand the show. Even just a little bit of getting that nice combo there to try yeah. to take him off the top, well, that's because, Dane, you're in, you're in a weird position, right? Because, obviously, Samus is bread and butter. We're loading up that plasma cannon. We have the rockets with the side B. We have the Zare to keep you zoned. And the down B, if we need that extra jump, or just a little bit of explosives, 
Uh, but he would love to keep you at a distance, just keep tacking on that minor bit of damage, and then maybe get you with that final smash. Uh, whereas Dane requires that up close and personal to absolutely beat you silly. Uh, and seeing him try to fight against the barrage of projectiles to try and get there, whew, takes a man with skill. Yeah, and you also even see on that ledge guard with those uh, down, it's down air, right? It's little bombs that come out, I'm pretty sure. Uh, that's down special. Down special, it's down special just sitting there and just gimping <laughs> the recovery of Incineroar. Because that's the one thing with the, when you're facing Incineroar. With the cancel into a grab, it looks like Badgers is reading Dane right now with all this little stuff he has going on. Yeah, you see the punish on uh, Dane's up special for that recovery. If you're able to drop the bomb just at where you know the tail end of his recovery is going to be, you can brick him out of it, remove him from the damage in the fall, and then immediately rush into a combo because you know he's not going to do anything. He's stuck at free fall. Yeah, it, I think Badger is doing a very good job. Oh, we finally revenge, see that revenge, revenge coming out. Any, hey, hey, Come on, he, it's a 148, on, Samus. Anything? Oh, he grabbed oh, him to take grab. out that revenge. Dangerous. Okay, so the revenge is lost. We're gonna be finding that up recovery into the smack. Oh, but poor Badger. He doesn't care what Dane does. He will always recover unless it's off the top. And it finally takes it off. It's the one thing you have to remember when you're playing against the Samus. Samus is on the heavier side of characters, so it does take that extra bit to take them out. And Badger's been getting a very nice lead, oh, but oh, that B Already back out. to 80, 90? Dear Lord, Dane, it's been approximately 13.57 seconds. Yeah, you see how fast the server can just rack up that percent, because we were talking about the lead that Badger did end up building, but Dane, with just a few hits, brings it back to a basic oh, even game. Great DI. Is thanking her stars for actually having that little bit of heavy character element. Oh! The forward tilt, the single finger. We love to see it. It just like that, and Cinderor brings it right back to their advantage. And the good thing having a stock up is that he can just go in there and build a Whoa. look for the down air, but just Terror. doesn't get Terror this fight. Terror in bones. Nice okay, back air nice. to finish out the stock, and it's very healthy, 63%. So he's able to definitely bring this one back from this percentile. Because mm -hmm. again, so long as you can keep the zoning on the Incineroar, so long as you can keep that distance, and attack up that little bit of damage, honestly, that up special from Samus can deal a monstrous quantity of damage that lead people off towards the top. Oh, hitting him with the sweep with the down tilt. Doesn't get that um, sweet spot on that um, side air to get, but it's really dangerous for Badger at this position because any move basically from this incinerator will kill, kill. But if he gets him off the edge, he can look for a gimp and be able to take the stock super early, so it's not over for him. Just has to get oh, yeah. this incinerator off the stage. Yeah, truly, because Incineroar is up special. Like, his recovery is so... <laughs> oh, in the revenge. revenge! into the aerial! Into the forward air. Oh, that was really nice for Dane. Nice, cool collective. You can re you can definitely see Coach Dane still has got oh, nice, yeah. calm. He's like, you know what? Coach. I'll give you that first set. I'll give you that first... I'll give you that first stock. You did a good job zoning me out, yeah. keeping me out. Playing the range advantage that Zero, or Samus does have against the Incineroar. Mm -hmm. But Dane's like, you know what? I'm going to turn it on now. I'm just going to go in on you, and I'm not going to let you use your range, and I'm just going to use my meaty moves and just tack on that percentage and just kill you with, like, four moves. Yeah, that's that was Dane being like, I'm your coach. I love you. I want to see you thrive. So here, take this learning stock. Afterwards, prepare to just eat dirt the entire time. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly what ended up happening because pretty sure after he took the stock, he landed on the ground and immediately grabbed yeah. down throat into yeah. a forward air. Immediately. Absolutely gross. Absolutely gross, but we love to see it. Yeah, and that's a good thing to see is that we finally got to see the Incineroar roar that you wanted to see so much. Right? Hey, and that's the best the part things. about it. It's the little things I ask for. Exactly. And honestly, Samus is also more of a rare character oh, on yeah. the side too, so it's very exciting to see. We haven't gotten any repeats of characters yet, which is very good as we are going to be taking this to Battlefield. Let's go. So now we've got the platforms involved. This is great uh, for both players because it's terrible for both players. Uh, the big issue being that if you're in Cinewar and now you're using that up recovery, a lot of times these platforms may catch you, so you're either able to get out of the way easier, or if you were looking for that kill or extra damage with it, you're going to be finding yourself and you're going to be stranded. But if you're in Cineroar, obviously you have way more locations that you can jump, rest, and exist for just a moment dealing against these Sam's projectiles. Finding the revenge into the dash attack, attacking on that little bit of extra damage you can. Off the side ropes! 
and going off that side blast zone. Yeah, and it's just what you're talking about. It is good and bad. I think it does give a little less recovery options trying to come off the ledge. He can't up air immediately land onto the stage. He has to worry about those platforms and yeah. being punished. But Badger's also using the bat um, the platforms to keep this Incineroar above him in order just to be able to just create an, a little bit extra space for him to play around with his projectiles. Yeah, Samus is in a great spot because if you can get Incineroar up onto any of those projectiles, short hopping into the up air puts you into a great location to start chaining together uh, double up air into even an up recovery if you want to, and just tack on that quick bit of 45% damage even if you get that reduced damage from that short hop. Yeah, you already see that Incineroar is pulling away as Dane is trying to come back in. Ooh. But Badger is trying to zone nice off. Look for the Gimp here. He's not going to find it. But this Incineroar is at high percent. And Samus does have some medium kill options in their oh, kill. Oh, they're trying to jam out of that grab as best as they can, but unable to find it. Getting thrown up to the top. But is there to ledge. So having to roll on. Oh, and the terror of the down smash from that epic Eddie. It just with the bombs, not finding any gimp, but applying like a 3% damage and ends up still barreling through with that little bit of armor. Finding the rage now on the incineral for them to do it more damage. At the 52 being carried up. Oh, look at that. Tane's got the download right now. He's just in. Tapped him there. He's not letting him side breathe ropes. as he hits another side rope, putting him off stage and going down for the aerial. With the neutral air. Just doesn't end up getting it. The Badger's finding himself in a very difficult spot now in this second game. But, ooh, he's got the revenge going. You can see the determination on their faces. He has rage Dane's and revenge build up. Hit. Any little thing could kill him right here. Ooh, but not with the weak spot. The full smash on the ground. Back air, back air. Trying to get these back as fast as possible. This is still not a loss game for Badger. Badger, if you just keep zoning him out, it's possible to keep going. You just got to make certain that uh, the center roll is large, large cat hands. Dude, that's going to be right here. Yeah, and we were talking about early on, and we even saw it, is that Samus can zone out this Incineroar, so this is a doable game to come back from this percent. Just guys, play to his space, not let the Incineroar find any of those easy hits. Ooh. He's just trying to space him out as much as possible, but just not able to get it. And the up Hoping smash. for the shield Take break out of the off. upward recovery, but not finding it. All right, an impressive back and forth between both individuals. And whoa! Oh, hold on. Yeah, say that for me. I will say the forty dollars. I was gonna say Shobra of the Shadows Shobra with a forty dollar donation. So absolute lad, thank you. We see. Yeah. Oh, we have someone that's over in our in-person crowd that Let's knows go. you. So shout out to the you. Shout out. Much shout out. love. Yeah. We Hearts, very much appreciate you. it. Love seeing it. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. Is there comments yeah, on we're, the? Yeah, we're thing? unable to see the chat right here on this screen. I'm not sure if I'm not sure if my mic pick up what it said, so I will read off that comment. <laughs> um, I often enjoy seeing such competitive competition to push oneself to become the best they can be. It's an invigorating. I wish all the oh, sorry. I wish all the participants good fortune. Very much appreciate their donation. Thank you very much. Absolutely and I'm glad that. you can enjoy the show because we've had some very competitive matches so oh, yeah, far. Really. And we're only three matches down on the live stream, and obviously all the groups are going at their own rate here in the other room as well. This is just kind of that main public stage. Uh, we're going to be getting our next group in here as fast as possible as they determine who the next on that round robin list is. Uh, so this is a great time to remind you once again. Thank you for that donation. And all of this we're doing for Gamers for Giving. We're doing this, uh, taking donations to assist children in hospitals, providing them game stations that they call go-karts to help those kids get their minds off of either just one being in a hospital, obviously, not an exactly cheery location and trying to take their mind off of pain, recovery, or whatever else they're dealing with and try to bring them that joy through video games. Yeah, and if you're in or interested in donating, any small amount helps. Anything you can give, exclamation point, donate in the chat. We'll pull up the link if you want to know more about gamers for giving themselves. Mm -hmm. exclamation, point, uh, exclamation point, GFG in the chat will bring up a page to take you there and just learn more about what they're trying to do because I, I want to say... They've been doing this for tw 11 to 12 years. Gamers for Gaming has been doing that. And it does look like we are going to be pulling up is this wayward waywardness versus Major Meteor is the next match that would be playing Ooh. for us. So we're going to see a lot of the Smash team um, come out and play on this live stage. Finally get to see Waywardness Zelda. Ah, the I aggressive zoner yep. that he is. And it's just so fun because Zelda is a character that has a lot of zoning options. 
But Wayrenus also is like, you know what? I'm going to zone you out, but I'm also going to look for my options. Oh, yeah. And I'm, I'm just going to go in on you way. at the same time. And yeah. I think that's the best part about watching him is it's just how well he controls the stage and then yeah. takes advantage of his advantageous state to put on that pressure and to take out those stocks quick and easily. His usage and knowledge of Zelda's down B, so the phantom that you would recognize from Legend of Zelda, oh, Spirit Tracks, um, is the reference that that move comes from. His knowledge of utilizing that and keeping players zoned, knowing when to charge it up to the full capacity so that he's able to let it rest for a moment, punish you, and then let the phantom come in for the final hit, and or use it as just a minor phantom to try to tank any little damage and prevent him from taking that like big old yikes hit He's very good at utilizing that phantom for all its different variations and keeping you on your toes with it. I also um, I also like the usage of the up special, too, because a lot of the times, I think watching Waverness play, I realize it's a very underutilized move. Yes. Because there's a lot of times you can use it and go unpunished, oh, you get the especially kill on, too. especially at the early percentages when maybe you might, maybe you'll go from zero to like 30%, but if you do hit, you will hit a good. Oh, yeah. 20 to 30 percent on the target so it's a very good option to look for when you're playing that zelda yeah if you get that opportunity to if you are able to catch your opponent off guard you get them up to that like 60 70 percent grab them up throw up special to teleport into them to catch them while they are flying upward if you can hit them just right send them off the top there and it is a beautiful situation to put yourself in yeah it does look like we are ready to get into the next Let's match go! Ready to see Wayne and Zelda, and I'm very excited to see what the other character we're gonna be matched up with, and we're gonna see Major Meter pulling Joe. out that banjo Let's and go. Kazooie. There's that Phantom immediately, like we're saying with Wayne. He knows when to use it. He keeps that open out and always as a looming threat. I think Banjo is one of those characters that is probably pretty good into Zelda because with having that Wonder Wing, he oh, can yeah. just go through a lot yeah, of those options. Exactly. Put yourself on that back, and oh, Major Meteor knows the match. He knows what he's up against. Yeah, but we already talked about that aggressiveness that um, Waywardness does have. Ari putting in the pressure. Not letting the Banjo take any space because even though they both have zoning capabilities, Waywardness knows that they can put on the pressure a lot early on. 100%. And that Wonder Wing, difficult because you only get five per stock. So as soon as you get blasted out, you do it. Go ahead and get that refill. Um, but having that opportunity to use that to blitz through any attack, wonderful little utility. Yeah, and already see that the Waverness is playing as part that they can be taking out the thing and it does look like we did get another yeah, donation. Yeah, we got a donation. Shout out to Bye. Doug Simpkins. Thank you so much for the $20. Super appreciate that. Super moving us towards our goal of 500 You guys don't know how much this means to us. Uh, and to everyone, honestly, we're trying to do this for the best cause, and the people here are trying to put on as best a show for all of you viewers as well. And a best a show they've been putting on because already seeing Wizardness and Major Meteor chaining stock kills together, putting themselves at 2 2 and keeping this game very close to even yeah. as they're pushing through here. Absolutely incredible gameplay as well, because Banjo, we've, we've talked about it. He's not some incredibly busted character, but if you're able to use him, he fits in Smash and he makes sense. You can use his kit well enough. It takes a little bit of learning, but heavens, if you can learn it, you can go far. Yeah. Wonder he, Wing! He's fighting these wonder, his Wonder Wing usage has been very good this time to get through the zoning that Zelda has and tack on and put on the pressure on Waverness. We're just being at 129 and Major Meteor keeping at 24%. Really putting on the pressure on the Zelda. Yeah, I will say from a, a general banjo, I'm not used to seeing this sheer quantity of up airs. Just tacking on that little bit of four, like 4.3 damage wherever he can. But heavens, when he, when he blends together seven of them, you are in a terrible position percentage-wise. Yeah, and Wyverness is trying to control the stage a little bit more, try to get away from this banjo, because it's putting on so much pressure on right now. That's yeah. very hard for him to Oops, get to play. Spot dodge cool. wonderful counter from the post. And we like to see every perfect pair that we can, as he now has banjo as spot dodge. He's able to find any of his kill options with those... Back throw, Ooh, just back throw, you know, heating Zelda way off the stage and taking a nice stock lead against Waverness right now. Yeah. Trying to throw him as best they can. That's the thing though, at 124, even when he was earlier at that 80%, those are all wonderful positions for Zelda to be in. If you're able to chain together either that side B, that uh, flare, or you're able to get that up special into that teleport, all of these are wonderful kill opportunities for you. So he's just got to manage to find himself that one free moment to land it, and it'll be good to take that final stop. Yeah. Wow, a wonderful little down tilt there. 
trying to catch him off guard from that player. But he's Body just going to run out and not main jumps to get back safe. But now he's got five Wonder five Wings Five Wonder Wings again. And having Wyvern is already at 45%, then he has a lot of kill options. He could yeah. look for these Wonder Wings after a little bit. Zelda, not exactly a heavy character by any means. Those Wonder Wings will provide a lot of damage and a lot of kill potential. We saw that earlier with only the DI off the right side saving Zelda. Oh, a spot dodge the up into a back throw to put Zelda into a disadvantaged position right here. That's the wonderful little gamble about Zelda, right? So you can upward recovery with her, and you can deal wonderful damage. But, given that it deals that nice damage, the trade-off is, if you miss, you are in danger. Because you are stuck, you are stranded, you're going to be taking at least two seconds to try to recover, and that is perfect time if the opponent has to just plan what the next move is. Yeah, you already see that. Major Meteor is trying to find that, but oh, that beauty sweet air. spot, just sending the banjo across the stage, Finding the force Spacing out the Wonder Wing and just managing to catch him on the tail end of it, throwing him off. Yeah, and I think that was very good from Waverness. Seeing that his best option he's probably going to look for out of here is look for that Wonder Wing. Yeah. Throws out the, um, you saw his spirit? From uh yeah it's it's the phantom spirit phantom, from phantom spirit he throws out the phantom spirit wonder wings through it he back he's backspaces it looks for a charge force match the moment he leaves wonder queen yeah. and just sends him out to confirm that game one genius but the good thing for major meter is he did take a really nice lead yeah. actually <laughs> yeah, in that did. spot so I think if he just maybe he's a little bit careful when he with his last stock so he doesn't end yeah. up taking so much because he had the lead but he played a little bit risky and that put him in a bad spot. So we're gonna get right back into it and we're going to be going to town and city for the second game. Oh Animal Crossing. I just love the music on this map. It's just so it's so upbeat, but it's also a little like just relaxing at the same time. So, uh, the original lo fi soundtrack to uh chill and do homework too. Exactly. Yeah, I think it just also just helps you focus in. It's also wow. just a, such a meaty, those sweet spots. <laughs> that Finding that, really good spacing there. That was that hold on that phantom we were talking about. Zelda's able to control and hold off the phantom from moving for a fair deal of time. Trying to, wow, space them out just a little bit. 36 only. Percentage on waywardness taking that first stock off me here. Uh, which obviously, if we're thinking about uh, Banjo in the totality of the match, Total of 15 Wonder Wings. And if you don't use your 5 first stock, those are simply Wonder Wings lost. And when each one is useful against Zelda, losing those early Wonder Wings to nothing really hurts. But he's going to find a way to make them all matter, using that one to find the kill off the left side. Yeah, and it was very, it was looking a little bit risky there for Major Mirror as Waverness took that stock with only 20% available at that part. And he's trying to find a claws away back in here, but Waverness is not laying breathe, playing a little bit more aggressive than he did in that last game. Uh, punished on the end of that Wonder Wing once again. Oh, the falling back into stage. Wow, managing to stun Zelda out of that up, air, er, up special kill. Uh, simply by dropping the grenade in. But then he comes right back oh, yeah. in, in on the stage and just sending them immediately off. And now Waverness is sitting with a very healthy lead in the second game here. At least a full stock ahead. Percentage still down. Wonder Wing managed to bypass both enemies, however, getting grabbed on the tail end of it. Waverness knows exactly what he's looking for. This is one of those matchups where if you are a Zelda player, you know to plan against it because that Wonder Wing is such a detriment to your entire kit. I do like the adaptability of Waverness. He's, he's using the like hit stun on the shield wow, and that forward air coming out. Perfect hit. And closing out that game and a lot cleaner game the second time around. Waverness it, it felt like he got the read very quickly on yeah. Major Meteor and actually ended up getting a two stock there. Closing it out nice and early and it was very good to see. Yeah, honestly, it's just a clean match. We love to see both of them. Waywardness is someone I've had a lot of classes with myself, actually, so I've known him from outside of the Smash everything. Wonderful little lad. Uh, and just an incredible Smash player, truly. As a Zelda player myself, I would almost say Zelda main. He is what I aspire to. He is what I want to see when I'm able to pick up that controller myself. But it was very good performance by Major Meteor as well because he did come in, and he basically went blow for blow in that first round. Yep. And just it just felt like... Um, Waywardness was able to find his like combos into kills a lot quicker in that second game. As we can see, like he was at twenty percent, he found a nair into an that put him up in the air immediately into an up air and just explosion yeah. immediately killed. And it does look like our next two contestants are already out here to play. We have two um two Jags and Koopa right. are out here to play. And 
rig C does look like we're going to get into this very quickly since they're nice and ready. Obviously, we have no we have no means of knowing. They haven't chosen their characters beforehand that we know of. Uh, who are you wanting to see? What's the matchup? What's the matchup? Who do I want to see? I'm calling I... Rob versus Lucario because I'm just picking okay. ran random choices is all I want. I don't know. So you say Rob, but I was thinking Rob in. Throw a little bit of an oh, I in at the end there. Okay, Maybe okay, see a little okay. I Rob in or, or I feel like it's going. I feel like we're going to see a Fire Emblem character that's not a swordy. So I feel like, or well, I guess I, I was going to say Corin, <laughs> but I guess Corin does have a sword. Uh, they also have dragon because... arms. So I mean, it, six and one half dozen the other. Yeah, exactly. So I think we're. I think we could see it, Robin or um, a Corin. Corin. Um, I think. Hmm. What other character would I like to see? We haven't seen. We've only seen one heavy character with Incineroar so far. I think. Yeah, so, I think when HR Prime, if we ever get to see HR Prime here on the main stage, we'll probably see him play with Ganondorf, because uh, he is such a proponent for heavy characters in general. Um, so I'm hoping to maybe see another. What well, is Pedro considered a heavy? Banjo? I don't know. Isn't he like on like the he's very like, he's mid heavy? Mid I, I would heavy? put him yeah, in the okay. same location as Samus to that like okay. mid to heavy. I want to see a heavy. Yeah. I. I'm a heavy proponent myself. I like yeah. playing them. King so. DDD, let's go. A, a King DDD is super fun because it's it's the weird heavy because he's like low key <laughs> a zoner. Low key, like, low key when he's throwing out the uh, obviously he doesn't throw Waddle Dee's since Smash. Uh, rip Waddle Dee for Smash. Miss that. Yeah, moment of silence for the boy. But. I don't know. I like seeing King DD because just swinging around that massive hammer, floating around. It's he's a very unique character. Like he's one of the unique heavies, and so yeah. he, I very like watching him because he has combos. He has very satisfying he kill has option. Terrifying combos. Oh my gosh! It, I he, hey he also can do the curvy special of sucking you in and then just taking you off the map. Yeah, he's gonna, just gonna throw you towards the map. He's gonna stage spike you and then he'll jump up 14 miles and be like, yeah, no biggie. This is and it looks like we are ready, so let's see who let's these two go. are going to end up playing here. And let's get right into this next match. Game, Game and Watch and Wolf. Wolf. We were completely off in our predictions, but... Yeah, you know what? Wolf, I love Wolf. He's a flashy character, and Game and Watch is simply a funny little lad. Wolf was my brawl main, so a little bit like old like me coming out there but two very fun characters to watch both having really nice combos and kill options they can look on each other and oh yeah a, a beautiful spot for game and watch here is that one of wolf's uh, favorite things to do here is space out with that blast he has but yep as we saw from game and watch going no what if you didn't use that i have a bucket to collect these uh, and i will throw them all back at you with three times of power given the opportunity but cut the thing off the side ledge there Wolf decided to give him what's for. I really like two jags with the um, getting that um, down smash there. One of Wolf's best things is his ledge trap ability and having kill options on the ledge because he can really get those, I'm pretty sure it's called two frame if I remember correctly, on the ledge to try to kill people. Yeah, it's something something gross how quick Wolf can throw those out. He has a lot of end lag for many of his moves. Uh, but man, if you catch him early, he'll send you out. He's Wolf's game way deep out there. Try to see if he can get anything. And this oh, Wolf is really putting all the pressure there. on the game of launch. Absolutely. Oh, with the spot. Oh, no! Missing the parry, but managed to come through at least with the chair. Trying to find him with the turtle. He's really pushing on the pressure. Now Game Watch is trying to get this stock right back in there. As he's at 130, so a lot of these moves Game Watch does have available to his kit. He could try to find a kill. Oh, uh, hit off the up smash. I will say something I love about watching Game Watch, though, is that if you're commentating and you basically just state what is happening off the screen in Game Watch, if someone's just in the room, they have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, here comes the turtle. Oh, watch out for the bucket. The the little uh, manhole? Oh no, you know it's all over as soon as they break out the keys. And we have the chair coming out. The and chair just... once again. And the manhole! And, and don't forget about the fishbowl. Fish it's fishbowl. Like, Game & Watch is one of the characters like, wait, I thought there was only two characters on the screen. Why is there so many different unique things going on in this <laughs> character? Surely no one man has so many different items. Diving helmet? Oh, brutal. This one like is finding a little bit more of spacing in this game, so he's trying to bring it back. And Game Watch is one of those characters that if he can find the right options, he can bring back some of these deficits. But the Wolf is doing very good on the ledge and keeping them spaced out, I think. Yeah, it's exp Oh, wow! Managed to catch him with that side B over ledge. Uh, super difficult attack to land if you're Wolf. Great payoff if you hit it. If you miss, you're put immediately into free fall. So if you don't hit stage, yikes. 
if you're just jumping a little too high and you miss, that gives your opponent plenty of time to try to throw it back on you and just absolutely mess you up. Yeah, but I think... You hit sometimes, and it's awesome. Exactly. I think we just see um, to the strength of the characters with Wolf's very immense pressure he is able to put on and the ledge mm. pressure he does have with all the different moves having so many like f um, frames that they're active in just like, yes. keep them out and like just put out pressure. Also Game & Watch able to just fly around the screen so quick he's got Turtle into a key into a oh. Shulk is coming out, so we are going to see the we are going to see the switch up as we move to Kalos and the Shulk. Shulk having a little bit more ability to outrange Wolf a little bit with having that sword. Yeah. Now, if we can get into the technical talk just a little bit, there is a very specific reason I don't play Shulk. It's because I watched people at the competitive level play him, and once I realized they were doing things like frame data storing with the Monado arts to minimize the amount of time it takes to throw out a Monado art to one frame. Uh, by storing it, by activating and canceling it earlier in time. Absolutely crazy. My brain does not look at that speed, so I, I sadly will not be able to pick up uh, Mr. Anime, the man. I did not even know that existed, but no, now I do. And honestly, that makes a lot of sense why my Mud Auto Arts takes a lot faster <laughs> to come out than them. We have the Smash coming out already. He is looking to try to find that kill option early here, as any little thing can kill when he's in that mode. Yeah, so for players watching, obviously, Wolf is a wolf. There's not a lot of other fancy things to that. Now, Shulk, on the other hand, if you'll see, he'll bring up a radio menu every so often. He might start glowing into different color. That comes from his special sword that he uses, which will give him different abilities. Uh, and for each ability that he gains, he loses somewhere else. So in something like jump, you lose a whole lot of your defense. If you use speed, you get smash attack easier. Uh, and it kind of has that same pro and con across the entire radio dial, so you have to manage in your mind. What are you going to go for for the next 15 seconds this is active? And how do you avoid running into an issue where you're putting a deficit where that con stops you? I think it's when you can really tell a Shulk player Whoa. versus each other. Because just the way they use the arts is just so great to see. Because you also see how people use oh, wow. them differently as well. Yeah. yeah, we see him catching now a lot with this uh, counter pick. So where that Game & Watch wasn't working, we've now really realized with Shulk, he has a lot of after attack hits, I would say. Oh, a fast fall, unfortunately, sending to the bottom. Both of them losing out that stock, bringing it 0 0 on one. Yeah, and bringing right back to down to a one stock scenario. Wolf coming out with those early combos that he's able to produce. And Shulk just trying to keep that Wolf out with the sword that they have available. Yeah. Uh, big issue with Shulk, so a lot of the other sword users, they have a whole lot of radial attacks, which Shulk only really has with that neutral air. Everything else is very directional, very in a straight line, where if you aren't lining up your opponent, if you're just throwing out these like forward or backward aerials, you're not going to be hitting just randomly wildly. It takes a lot more dedication to an attack. Yeah, I also and like your backslash. Yeah. Ooh, we have a smash attack coming out with the down air. Really good catch right there. Absolutely brutal. As you take that back, and we do go into that one-on-one -on -one connection. And That's I did really like impressive. the counterpick, though, because you did see what ended up happening there with Kalos, is that Wolf doesn't have the ability to follow up once they go up straight in the air, because oh, yeah. there's not the platforms able to jump up like there was on the previous. Yeah. So, but now, Two Jacks does have the potential to pick a counter for himself, so I don't think they will run yeah, into I the same situation. Yeah, I think they'll probably run that Wolf still. Uh, obviously, they enjoy them a whole lot. Uh, if you had to counter Shulk, you're in the scenario. Who who would you be throwing in? Would you keep it with the Wolf? Or who, obviously, you have the Bowser bias. Yeah. But who do you think you would run? Honestly, back at I would keep the Wolf, because I think it was doing fine. I think the only issue was with the stage, not having the ability to follow up on the Shulk going straight up in the air because of where gotcha. the platforms are. So I think maybe even taking him to, ba I was to gonna battle say Battlefield. Field. Yep, we got to see a so couple more platforms. And also, I think it gives him a little bit more options because he was looking for the... Uh, like the backslash that comes all the way down and lands, it's a lot harder to hit that when you have those three platforms. Yeah. Shulk going ahead and activating the Buster form. I believe Buster is what adds more damage to the attacks you deal. Smash then increases knockback. Yes, I think you are right. Yeah. I actually never knew what Buster form, but I feel like that's like the only one that isn't available with all the other forms, so it just makes sense. Wow! But the okay. nice counter coming out there. Wow! Now, when you're an amateur Smash player, or you're just playing with your friends, if you're young, obviously you are loving counters because it just feels like the cheapest option in the world. But as you just saw there, if you mix it up, that one in a hundred moves, boy, howdy, is it going to catch you off guard. Especially in a game two scenario, when I don't even think he even used that last game. No, so he, he did not use it once last game near as I could see. 
Wow. With a good glide trap in there with the with the in there, a really good option for Wolf because the mount is just active to just put them in a very good spot. And the game is going a little bit behind, wow. but now they're coming out again, using it very efficiently in this game. At this point in time now, if you're Wolf, now you're getting bored. Because what before was never happening, it now feels like the Shulk is a completely different moveset, even just reintroducing this one move into the play. So now you've got to worry. A lot of my big hits, they get punished by this. So am I going to get punished off stage if I try to edge guard him? Wolf managing to find that hit, unfortunately, off the side. Yeah, and it does look like the Shulk is finding a He's, he feels like he has a rhythm. He has the momentum going, and he's just using it to zone out this Wolf and not let him find many of his combos or his options he has. But Wolf is one of those characters that has the ability to kill early and to find options, so I, he's not close to being out at all. As he puts him off stage with the back throw, catches his jump with that and a very nice, nice follow-up to punish. get the edge kill and bring him back to a last stock scenario in game number three. Yeah, obviously the Shulk is still terrifying here. Living at 40%, not a great place to begin, but you know what? That is recoverable by a wide margin. We've already thrown it back. We're seeing that about equal percentages. Ah, uh, finding that kill. Oh, Shulk is really looking to get that knocked back and go in for it right now. Yeah, but Wolf is just showing that. He's like, you know what? You have, may have smash out, but you know what? I'm going to just keep on coming in. I'm not going to let you breathe. I'm going to take the fact that I got the last stock to put you into a disadvantaged state. Do a very good job oh, at doing that right now. As Shulk is in a dangerous spot. Oh, and, and the Shulk air dodge. Unfortunately, yeah. Air dodging, not having access to his upward recovery, ends up finding himself falling off the left. All righty. Well done to both players, though. We love to see the match. It was a lot of fun and not characters we've already seen. So I like seeing that. Uh, Smash roster diversity and everybody picking truly whoever they are feeling for the day. Yeah, and I also just like, it's, it's you can see the adaptability that the Shulk ended up bringing out because he's like, you know what, Game & Watch didn't work at first, didn't feel that strong, so you look like, let's switch it up, let's take out my Shulk. Yeah. It's, I feel like at the, it has good matchup into Wolf, keeping the space out, and did a very good job at pushing the advantages that he did have. Yeah. And you could just really see the success that it has. I don't have a lot to add to that. It's simply true. The wolf was doing well. They were caught off guard on that uh, Pokemon area. But as soon as they were able to bring it back to Battlefield, obviously their first choice, that first match also, they kind of know what they're doing. They know how to play around with the ledges. It helps them out severely with their side B attack to not leave them too falling in that free fall state. So he just kind of knew his character and he knew how to play it. Yeah, and I think you put it perfectly there because I think I think it was one of the issues that Wolf wasn't able to follow up off of the Callow stuff. Yeah. And even that ledge, to an extent, it's kind of awkward to play around because it gives you less like, offstage space to play with. And so it was a very good counter pick, very good bring back. A little unfortunate that the air dodge misses the ledge, so yeah. he ended up falling. But it was a very good back-and-forth game and series, and it does look like the next two are already up. I do believe... It is Flake and the Great and, um, Antonin, or Antonin, I think, is what Let's that says. Let's go. Come but, on, Flake, show me Terry. I think we're going to see a Terry. Let's see Terry. So we're going to keep the amount of uniqueness basically the same. Yeah. Who knows? We'll see what they're going to end up bringing out. Because we're getting pretty deep in the roster. We have a lot of unique picks. <laughs> pretty sure, because we know at least a Terry's probably going to come out. We're yeah, at least we'll in Terry. I think 10. the other guy, I don't remember, but we might see a Rob. I, I think I've seen him play Rob before, so okay. the chance we'll actually see him hit the stage too. I mean, I like seeing Rob's because yeah. he's, just, he's just a quirky character. Ever since he came out in Brawl, it's just has all those little, just, just a little robot that goes around. And then he's also just going to hit you with a, smash, a laser smash attack and then kill you. Like, and everything's a reflector. And he can fly. He can down smash. Get down air. And he has the gyroid. I feel like you've been traumatized by Rob. And maybe maybe I'm not that traumatized because I did play him a lot in Smash and Brawl. Sorry. I, it was, I was Wolf. Hey, sorry. Wolf, Rob, Main, and Brawl. I, they, Wolf he's just and a Rob? Yeah. It okay, was a that, really weird combination. Sporky. And then, like, I don't know, when, when and then later I, like, I played Pikachu, I, it was just so weird. You know what? Pikachu I've always found interesting. I used to play him on 64 because I'm simply a Pokemon fan. Uh, now I play him in Ultimate because I went, oh my heavens, this small little mouse can fly. <laughs> That's incredible. And then he has little, little baby brother Pichu there, sitting there nice and cute. 
dealing self damage. Dealing self damage, but also like one shotting people. Like, oh yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Let it's like oh, that, you. before they like remember. I remember before they nerfed the forward tilt, that they would just kill so quickly and easily. Yeah, it, it was absolutely ridiculous. Well, I think one of my other favorite things I playing Smash played it for the last few years. I kept somewhat up with the patch notes. I think the funniest bit was Pichu. If you looked at his patch notes, he just kind of like grew slightly every update. Like they literally just increased his size a little bit every update because he was just simply too small. He's such a small little dude. Most people who are firing projectiles, it goes right over his head. Uh, and he just kind of gets to sit there, clap his little clap. hands and go, you can't hurt me, but I can hurt you. <laughs> and then the best part was that it's when he just crouches on the ground and he does a little bit crawl and just crawls at you menacingly as your projectile just goes over the top of his head. It's like, what you gonna do? I'm yeah. just gonna crawl under it. Shoot, you can't crawl. stop me. It yeah. does look like we are ready to get in. So well, let's go. Let's see. Are we going to see the flake Terry? I'm I'm cheating a little bit, chat. I, I'm looking. <laughs> you, you you just have to know. I'm not gonna give it away. No, of course not. Oh. Y'all are four seconds away. I'm the impatient one. Oh, let's go, Terry! Versus Mario, two characters that do have a lot of combos available to them. As we see, both of them throwing their fires out almost immediately. Oh. I just kind of let it sink in that Mario's going to suck to fight against because you're power dunking and he decides to use his cape to a uh, reverse direction. You are in a really disadvantageous position because you are backwards. You are forced with Terry to move the other way. Now, thankfully, he has a mechanic very similar to the other uh, Street Fighter characters. Now, obviously, Terry's from King Fighters Fighter Fury. Um, but he has the same fighting game mechanic where his character will always attempt to face the opponent. So even if he gets spun around, he'll just be caught in a weird little uh, circle there. And this is actually one of the better stages for Mario 2 with having those up air strains that he's able to find them in those percent. You can't find very early kills off the top Ooh. if possible. You have the Ghost Sauce out right now. Go Sauce. There we go. Power Geyser trying to see if we can connect with it. All I can see is the, another Power Geyser. Come on. He's looking for it there with those with those little kills. Buster Wall! <laughs> and he finds the first one and taking that first stock, he still has Ghost Sauce, so he can look to rack up a really high percentage with these Go moves. I think my biggest fear with Terry, obviously I love playing him, uh, but I have a buddy who is undeniably better than me. Uh, and I have a sweet love for Buster Wall. He has a gross ability to hit me every time with Power Kaiser, and I'm never expecting that weird wow that weird diagonal angle that Power Guys comes out at, punishing those uh, more jumping characters. Yeah, and you see that uh, down smash comes out super quickly, and a very wow. good edge guard by Flake. Absolutely incredible stock he took there. It's just, it's just one of the small abilities that Terry does have to come out of that game and just get him off the ledge super easy. Yeah, poor Mario chilling now at 57. Terry's starting to find his way. He's finally warmed up that controller a little bit, finding his own. I was looking for that backer, but the thing is, you gotta remember with Mario, if he finds him around center stage, he can just look to up air him, <laughs> chain him all the way to yeah. 70%. There we go, deciding to steal the neutral combo from Terry. Ooh, grab a Coke. I don't actually remember what that attack is called, but it's the like, mini Buster Wolf with the blue flame. It just sounds like he says grab a Coke, and then he makes an action. Like he's lunging forward for a Coke. Yeah. Burn Knuckle. Burn Knuckle. Burn Knuckle. I don't know. Grab a go. Not sponsored. No, honestly, I, I, I'm never under, I'm never gonna unhear that now that you've said that. Grab a coke. They're just gonna hear that every single time that you say that now. Whoa! With the funny aerial <laughs> dunking him straight down into that bottom blast zone. Yeah. And Mario's right. not out of this yet. With the, how the character can go, he can get that percentage racked up. Right. If you're the great Anthony, oh, unfortunate finding that burn knuckle. Uh, but if you're the great Anthony, you feel so good after that meteor smash. You're not worried that you got this far because obviously you got Terry to one stock. You're in a great spot. Now you get to go to second stock. Like you get to go to second game. You're not feeling bad. You don't feel like you were so utterly defeated. You had the mental win. You got that meteor. You're taking it. Exactly. I feel like it's more of a statement too. You get the oh, yeah. meteor and you're like, you know, what? I just got a meteor on you. Everyone finds that hype. Everyone pops off seeing a meteor. You got your ghost sauce. And so it ends up going to happen now. He's got momentum. Oh, because yeah. he got the he got the meteor, immediately lost the stock. So, but he still feels the hype from that meteor though. So, yeah, 
I'm expecting, and now he has counter picks, so he, there is potential he can take him to another one of those stages that can get him those up airs into up B combos. It does look like they are ready to send into that second yeah. game. Sticking Day with both the same characters, and we are going to be going back to town and city. Let's go. So now we've got those moving platforms, as you can all see, kind of coming in and out of the stage, altering the map layout every so often. Helps keep people on their toes, because you don't have one single formation to play around. Wow! Terry just decided to send Mario as far as possible, as early as he can. It does look like they... Terry just feels like he got the download after that first stock. He's just putting on the pressure, finding his combos. Oh, got the minor meteor. Didn't get into another combo, but Terry... Jab, oh, jab, 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 power, power dunk. dunk. It's, it's a combo for a reason. Ooh, yeah, perfect pair of the fireball. But not gonna wow, he is really fish for that forward aerial. What an absolute lad. But you know what? That's what I'm here for. I wish I could play Mario simply to perform those meteors. That's why I love DK so much. It's just so funny to hit it over the side. Uh, of course, though, uh, jab, jab, power dunk. Yeah. Uh, it just look yeah, like yeah. the great Anthony is playing into the fact of there is a chat watching, there is a crowd. Oh, yeah. Let's let's look let's for that. Up. Let's look for the meteor smashes. Let's look for that type of gameplay. Yeah, the people in chat they want to see the spectacle. They want to see the part. They want to see the meteor smashes and the power geysers. And he's just taking it now. He's oh, just no. putting on so wow. much pressure. Jab, jab, power geyser. Not the same true combo of jab jab power dunk. But you know what? I respect that muscle. But we respect those though. We take the, just like the fact that you're like, you know what, I'm gonna jab jab and if you don't get a roll out of it, I'm just gonna power guys you right on the corner of the stage. Yeah. Whoa, power guys will return to stage to try and catch that Mario off guard, which yeah, it did happen. Yeah. Just like Mario's finding a little bit more foot stage on this stage, trying to be able to get this first stock because Terry is at 165. Oh. The Buster Wolf coming out to take the stocks down to three to one. Mario has a lot of ground to cover into the second game. Yeah, not oh, power guys are an unfortunate quick gain of 30%. You cannot be seeing any more than two wheels when you are in severe danger. Yeah, and it's, you just see Terry's nice. just not letting him breathe as Flake is just putting the pressure onto him right now. Finding these power guys, just finding these combos, just finding every little bit. Look for the meteor smash of his Whoop. own. But get spicy with it. Alrighty, we're going on through. Now here's the issue. Mario, lucky man, playing a hundred percent for three stocks. That's dangerous. I think he could do it. But I think it's dangerous. But it's so dangerous too, because this Terry is living there 204, and it's just one of those things. It's like with the higher and higher percent they get, it just gets a little more and more. Ooh. It's like ooh, he almost finds it there. Being yeah. Terry just was refusing to die right yeah. now as Flag is like, I'm going to take this stock as long as I can. Oh, Buster, Buster Wolf, Wolf for game. Taking the game out. You got three stocks of Buster Wolf, so yeah. that's what you were looking for. Blake Dude, or Flake was making sure not to let go of that last stock, taking that all the way to 204%. Yeah, seriously. I I love it all. I love Terry. Terry's so funny. Uh, and Mario. That was really well fought. For those of you who aren't familiar, though, Flake is on the official SSU Varsity Smash team. He is awesome. He's a senior. If you guys were there on Thursday for our senior night, you got to witness him play and take six stocks. There was an absolute wonderful time. We had that interview with him afterwards. Great guy. Great player. Love to see him in the tournament. He, he has been having a very pop-off week. Yeah. Like, it started on Tuesday. Take six stocks. Bring back a crew battle. Going into Thursday, coming on tournament, taking a three stock in yeah. his opening match on stage, and he's feeling good right now. He like, better, like he better. He's when doing you have well. a when you have a week like this, and it just keeps on going. You're yeah. on like such a like you're just so up there that you just like you just like keep on living on that cloud nine and just keep yeah. on taking it as far as possible. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we've been ca commentating for a while. How how long are we in? We are at four o'clock and we started at two thirty. We we did okay. just finish pools and so we are going to take a quick break as we are about to head into group stage. So we will see you all in a second. Once again though, 
please remember this is all for Game is Forgiving. We are doing this as a charity event. If you guys have any money that you are willing to donate, we would love to see it. It's for a great cause. Hopefully we'll have those videos playing for you again here sometime during the break so you can see it in action. Um, but this whole thing is obviously Game is Forgiving. This is our jab block to try and assist them, raise that money to assist children in hospitals, uh, try to ease some of their suffering and or recovery periods by helping them game, bringing them game consoles where they usually couldn't, and try to help bring them back to that normalcy and feeling like a child. Esco exclamation point donate in chat and then exclamation point GFG to see more for Gamers for Giving and thanks everyone for the donation so far and we will see you later. Every child deserves a chance to be themselves but right now in hospitals around the world many kids are isolated fighting some of the most difficult battles of their lives. What if we told you gamers have the power to help? We're Gamers Outreach, and we believe the world is better when kids can play. Our team is on a quest to help make play a part of care. With your support, we can restore a sense of joy and normalcy in the lives of families through video games. Learn more and get involved at GamersOutreach.org. This is a Gamer's Outreach Cart, or Go-Kart for short. It's a portable video game kiosk built specifically for hospitals. Created and assembled by Gamer's Outreach, each unit helps provide recreation to kids and young adults unable to leave their bedsides. The carts can be disinfected easily and have 360 degrees of movement, making them ideal for transport in hospitals. Go-Karts can accommodate a variety of gaming consoles, they also come with wired controllers, a gaming monitor, and are equipped with a lift mechanism that allows the height to be adjusted. Go-Karts provide a safe, flexible, and efficient way to ensure patients have access to entertainment during long-term hospitalization. To learn more about Project Go-Kart, visit GamersOutreach.org.
Every child deserves a chance to be themselves. But right now, in hospitals around the world, many kids are isolated, fighting some of the most difficult battles of their lives. What if we told you gamers have the power to help? We're Gamers Outreach, and we believe the world is better when kids can play. Our team is on a quest to help make play a part of care. With your support, we can restore a sense of joy and normalcy in the lives of families through video games. Learn more and get involved at gamersoutreach.org. This is a Gamers Outreach Cart, or Go-Kart for short. It's a portable video game kiosk built specifically for hospitals. Created and assembled by Gamers Outreach, each unit helps provide recreation to kids and young adults unable to leave their bedsides. The carts can be disinfected easily and have 360 degrees of movement, making them ideal for transport in hospitals. Go-Karts can accommodate a variety of gaming consoles, they also come with wired controllers, a gaming monitor, and are equipped with a lift mechanism that allows the height to be adjusted. Go-Karts provide a safe, flexible, and efficient way to ensure patients have access to entertainment during long-term hospitalization. To learn more about Project Go-Kart, visit gamersoutreach.org. Welcome back, everybody, to Gamers for Giving here at Shawnee State University. Uh, I'm Nettia16. And I'm Koopa. We're going to be casting the next couple matches for you, so let's get right on into it. This is a charity event. Very exciting. We're having a lot of fun here today. I'm sure today's matches will be quite exciting. Though. Oh, yeah, but pools were intense, man, I'll tell you. Oh, yeah, pools were really crazy. Man. Oh, yeah. All right, let's see. Uh, all right, who do we got up on deck next? Can you put the camera down for us a little bit? So yeah, you know. <laughs> All right. Uh, anybody watching this is our first time casting, so mm -hmm. we're uh, we're amateurs here. We're gonna try our best, though. We're gonna hopefully keep things nice and entertaining. We're gonna keep things lively and moving. Uh, I personally know quite a bit about the game, so hopefully I'll be able to provide some of the technical uh, sides of the matches going on. Oh, we have a, oh. another donation from Missy and Alex Eddie. A hundred dollars. Thank you so much for donating. Thank you, thank you very much. Very much appreciated. Your donations directly benefit Gamers Outreach Foundation for the job on here today. For Gamers for Giving. I think that's our new top donation. That is our new top donation. Yeah, it beat your 40 from earlier. <laughs> Wait, what? I didn't donate. I you... No, I, oh. I didn't know it. Yeah. Oh. I wanted to put this on. Well, I mean, I can't blame you. I mean, I probably would have donated if you had a chance. I you. Well, All right. <laughs> we got our first match. All right, we'll we'll right now. Here we go. All right. We got a little buy Go! X. All right, here we go. All right, so we got Steve versus Sonic here. These players just trying to get stage control, start getting some stuff going. Now, Sonic's uh, has a pretty interesting combo game. If, uh, he's playing Sonic. X9. X9, wonderful. All right. Ruby? I apologize. Yeah. Yep. We got tags. Yep, okay. So, Ruby is playing Sonic. Uh, if Ruby can... Oh, their name tags are messed up. No wonder. Yeah, they're on the wrong side. Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> but that's okay. But, uh, yeah, X9 is playing Steve, and Steve is on the setup. Exactly. Those are right, right? The bottom of the screen's correct. Or is the screen's correct? Correct. 
So we're just playing Steve. Steve is all about one thing. So if you can manage your blocks and resources correctly, you can do pretty much anything you want with Steve. Yes, exactly. Uh, Sonic is a pretty interesting combo game. A lot of uh, Sonic's grabs and throws combo into each other. Sonic can do a lot of aerial. Uh, interesting thing about Sonic is that sometimes Sonic has some trouble taking the stocks with him there. Oh, yeah, yeah. We have to see how uh, our player here is able to take the stocks. But let's see what we got going on. Back to the match. Uh, Steve is offstage. Sonic is going to go for the, off the edge guard. Oh, oh uh, unfortunate. That air dodge will keep Sonic from keeping back. The stocks unfortunate. Yeah, 2-3. Steve, Steve's at 100% though. Sonic can Set here. Good forward smash. Good forward smash. Nice move here. If Sonic can get off a good forward smash, that would be another stock for sure. Got a good jab block there. Maybe. Alright, let's see. Throw by Sonic forward. Forward throw from Sonic. Let's see if Sonic's able to capitalize the homing good attack. Homing attack but not going to take the stock. Not quite. Another one. Unfortunate launch angle there. Why the miss to sword? Down tilt. 169 on Steve. Up smash will not take that. Next nine will take that stock there. 26%. Not a lot. Pretty even game so far. Both fighters seem to be using their also. Exactly. 64%. So Oh, oh, oh no! Oh, we're good. We're good. The recovery. Sonic's got some pretty decent recovery game. Oh, the jab reset? Oh, we've been able to capitalize on the jab reset. No ball up there, but that's okay. Sonic's got the speed to come up with something. He was able to get the tech ball out of the point. Baited spin dash. Spin dash can't see with the forward air pickaxe. Forward smash there. Nice shield by Sonic. Both of these players are playing really defensive right now. Neither of them really want to commit to anything because Steve's punish game is so strong. Oh, definitely. If Sonic, was, if Sonic makes a mistake, then Steve can punish him so hard, especially with things like his up smash being very good and his forward smash. Especially if Steve were to get the diamond sword, the up smash would be a lot better. Oh, if Steve gets a diamond sword, that last time is Minecraft out here. He capitalized on stage. On the Minecraft stage. <laughs> I'll thought. I think it's called Minecraft World. Yeah, Minecraft. Like the game, yeah. I still honestly think it's kind of crazy. Oh, it oh the side beat minecart. Steve's favor now. Next time he's got about 31%. Next time he's got the last, last stock. Sonic's got the potential to come back. Steve is doing a great job maintaining control of center stage. Good backer getting some off stage. Let's see him. Left or right? Just holding a tech. That's okay. Good shield. Good conversion. Good conversion. Get Steve back off stage. Oh, oh just barely missed that up smash. You see what we see back here? Go back here. Good use of the elytra there, keeping him in center, making. Uh, making for X9 have to guess where he's going. Good board match, taking that stuff. There's a lot of fun. There's a lot of fun. These players are going to be very strong. He does have a lot of fun. He's not putting on a lot of pressure right now. Exactly, he needs to keep putting on that pressure. Good conversion right there. Oh, oh, and he keeps it going with the holding attack. Distance. Good Elytra, though, to get out of that straight. Game, Ooh, punishes the landing, though. Back to ground, no use. Good shield on the up smash. Oh, spot dodge time. forward smash. Let's see if we can make this recovery back. Good air dodge. Good, good, good recovery. Good recovery. Coming back in. Only about 25% separate piece of players. Very intense. The up smash is going to take it. Ooh, Ruby takes the first game. Ruby takes the first game. That was a very, that was a very close game. All right. Ruby looks pretty happy about this. Yeah. All things it was a pop off. You see the pop off? Yeah. <laughs> Gotta celebrate something. Yeah, pop yeah, off. yeah. That's okay. Sometimes hey. you never know. Oh yeah. All right. All right. So um, I don't know how. They can, I think they can hear us, so we probably shouldn't give them tips for the back. <laughs> we probably shouldn't, because I was... What's, what's the rules against coaching? So. I was about to say, I was about to say, like, I was about to say, like, so something, um... 
Oh, perfect. Oh, speaking of, we, we were just informed that we're almost halfway to our goal so far. Uh, what's our total goal so far? We're, we're, our goal is 500, and we're at 247 right now. You said you okay. We're, we're at we 247 just, so far right now. Uh, we're going for $500 here today, and we're almost at we're 247 right now, so just three more dollars will get us to that two, will get us to that 250 But, you know, any donation of any amount is greatly appreciated. Yeah, and if you can't donate, you can simply just support by watching the stream and spreading the word. Yes, sir. We appreciate you being here, Ricardo. Yes, sir. Definitely. Looks like the fighters are getting ready for their next match. All right. Uh, one in favor of Ruby right now. Yes. Let's see if uh, X9 will be able to figure out a strategy to uh, see if he can close out this, this second game. We can take it. I'd like to see a game three. I think a game, a game three, three would be, really be very exciting against these two opponents. Yes, for yes. Sure. Both of these players who seem to have so much knowledge of their characters and of the game, they they definitely seem to know this matchup, which is kind of interesting because I wouldn't expect that. Oh, and we're going right into it. All right. It's Steven Sonic once more. We're going to Battlefield. This stage is actually pretty good for uh, Sonic. I guess the last one was also a Battlefield. So this, this, this is a good stage for Sonic because Sonic can use the platforms to string his combos together. We saw uh, Ruby doing that last game with the uh, using the platforms to string his combos. Not to mention the Elijah last game. Yes, yes. Back throw on Good grab out of shield there, getting, uh, doing the back throw on stage. Homing attack down. able to catch him into the dash attack. Good string there. Yeah. That, if I get hit of that up air, might have connected. That might have taken the stock there. Ooh, that lingering hitbox. The lingering, that hitbox is so weird. Sometimes you never know. Good back air. X9 seems to be really turning it up this game. You gotta pull it back to so pick up 1-1 one, one. <laughs> see that game 3. Exactly. Nice grab punching down Elytra. Let's see. Elytra versus Ruby. Seems like X9 is really figuring out for the Elytra game here. Is able to punish it. Well, the TNT's out. This is oh, gonna be dangerous. No. Clips it, gets him oh, with the TNT. Oh, X9 steps on the TNT. It's extra damage there. Again! We're doing it again. <laughs> whoa. Hey, whoa. Oh, uh, we have, B, we have BM from the players. Trash talk. X9 there we go. X9 the taking the first talk with that forward smash. We have some trash talk coming from our players. <laughs> True. This is a very intense game. At the end of the good day, the players are here to have fun. Exactly. We're here to have fun and play Smash for a good cause. Off stage, we'll see if Ruby can close out the stop. We'll see what the option's gonna be here. Ruby's got that diamond. If he can make the diamond, uh. The sword diamond sword is out. One solid hit from, that, from those diamond tools should take the stock. <laughs> Going for it. Oh, good shield there. Avoiding getting the forward smash. Oh, the dash is not gonna close it out though. Exactly. Steve's got it. That'll, that'll last for Nice doing a really good job getting a lot of percent of the out this stock because he doesn't want to deal with those diamond tools anymore. Definitely. No angles have been dropped yet. Yeah. Uh, a lot of deep players seem to use the angle. Maybe oh, more. good air dodge. Oh, punish the down smash. Punishes the air dodge with the down smash. That'll close out that stock. Three stocks to one right now. Steve's cashing over. Cool. Sonic, a lot of percent though. One solid hit should close out that stock. Sonic. Sonic's got two stocks and down. All right. A little more dangerous. Sonic is up a full stock right now. It's heavily an excellent sphere. We can bring it back. Very much so. Steve, like we they are in the back here. Like we mentioned earlier, Steve's punish game is very good. So Ruby's able to outpick some of the X9's muscles. Uh, very much punish and get a lot of percent for the victory. Good job using those blocks. There's the anvil. <laughs> That's what we were waiting for the entire time. Because he hasn't been using it. You know, X9 doesn't see it coming. was too far away to get them there, so they slashed uh, up into the center of the stage to avoid getting punished by oh, yeah. X9. That was a great decision. It was a very good... Yeah. Ooh, that was almost, that force match almost hit, but X9 was able to so use the opponent. Back air. Ooh, Ooh, the back air will connect. That'll close, close, out, that out, that, close out that stock there. Now it's it's one-to-one. -one. This, this set's well, still well, anyone's game. It, it is, very it. much. First game... 
was really close in that second game. While it wasn't as close, they def both players definitely showed their promise. So this is going to be a really interesting game three, I think. Looks like X9 is getting the read on his opponent. Oh yeah, yeah, setting. definitely. But this is still anyone's game, folks. Anyone could win with game 100%, three. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I'm really correct. This is our first bracket game, right? First step off into the bracket, all things considered. This will lay out the land for the rest of the players. Yeah. Double elimination bracket today. So whoever uh, does, whoever does uh, lose this game, will have a chance to run back, run it back through losers. If you fall, you can pick yourself back up exactly, from grace. Exactly. The winner will be spread. We're having some sage discrepancy here. Yeah, they'll figure something out. No worries. All right, we're about to. <laughs> I think we're getting ready to head into game three here. Are we going to see a character switch from either player? Let's see. I don't know. We same might characters? see. No, nope, same, same characters. All right. Three, two, one. They're fighting on the uh, Great Plateau Tower. <laughs> Small little good conversion, 52%. Sonic popping up with the aerial game. Sonic gets a nice early conversion, getting his solid 61% right off the bat. And he's still going. X9 is keeping this conversion going. Forward air, Steve with the back air pickaxe. Good aerial came out of that. Oh, that was really nice. That was really smart. Good back air. This is an early lead here from X9. Let's see if we can get to the higher. Off. Yeah, good choice by uh, X9 to get up. Nice jab. Another up air. So looking for a two up air. Nice, uh, nice movement there by me to avoid getting up air. Most likely to get Sonic. Sonic's up air is actually very powerful. One of his uh, strongest kills. Especially if you Yes. Dash attack. Double right? dash attack. Sonic on stage. That early conversion by X9 doesn't seem to have so much merit because Ruby is bringing it back now, closing off his percents. Oh, close. Wasn't able to get a good air dodge back in the center. Really high percent. Oh, good movement on the elytra. Oh, up smash will take him. Signed at eighty percent now. However, as you saw earlier, Steve is no stranger. Steve is no stranger to attacking with lots of percent. Oh the, oh, the jab, jab locks! Jab, jab locks! It's jab locks, good, good roll out of that uh, up smash there. <laughs> and he's doing it again! <laughs> doing this it man! Fishing for the jabs! This man! Steve's the one with the fishing for the Oh! oh runs it's right a, into that forward smash. Ruby, definitely a punish for the Ruby said, no, I'm not having any more of that. Yeah, you can, you can leave your jabs at home. I got a sword. It's no longer jab lock, this is sword. <laughs> Good jabs by Ruby here, keeping Sonic. Oh, the Iron Sword's broken. We have to, have to capitalize. Good punish though by X9, capitalizing, seeing that Ruby can no longer attack. X9 immediately took it off. Of Good block option was not able. Had to force X9 to do an option there because he stood on the block, and because of that, he wasn't able to get the conversion. Good down smash. Good air dodge. No, no. That's okay. He was, he was in that situation early. I think X9 is really familiar with this character. He really knows the cover situations there. Seems X9 has definitely played something. Another up air. Oh! Catches him with the spring up air. That's two to one. Great option right there. We can still bring it back, however. Very much so. It's not over yet. Iron tools upgrade here. Since these iron tools don't do anything, I think we can mine diamonds now. Jab reset, down smash! Nice short elytra there by Ruby. Swing by Ruby. Ruby and up here. Stop ball. Good dash. Good dash attack. Sonic's all speed, but Steve said, no, you can slow down. You, you can slow down. Steve has a lot more kill options than Sonic. Oh, oh! The down, down air anvil dropping some lead on him. The unpredictability of Ruby's anvil is Oh, he went for the. Back. He went, he, I think he read the homing attack there, but it was just a little bit off the spacing there. Elytra to the top platform forces X9 to make, make a choice there. Well, Not gonna quite close out that stock. Very close though. This is a really close game. 
It's too close. So I'm just looking for fair. Go for it, go for it again. Not quite. Though. He's going to stay on. He's going to hold center stage. I like that option. I like the option of holding center stage. Make these to him. Hold the neutral. I didn't hold the neutral. It's in there. What's not going to do? Elytra on the platform. Oh, oh and it's just the Elytra. Takes the up smash, and that will take it. 2-1 to X9. X9 takes the game. Good game. Great job to both players. That was a wonderful set. Very fun, very fun. That All was right. some fiery smashing right exactly. there. Exactly. All right, so who do we have uh, up next? Sounds good. I think that was a pretty good display yeah. of fighting ultimate. Exactly. And Smash Ultimate has so many characters, you know, you can, like, it really is awesome to see so many people playing so many different characters. Definitely. Ultimate has the most variety out of any game. And it also, it's also the most balanced of every game. Yeah, that too. Like, there are... Go ahead. Uh, there aren't, you know, three or four characters that are super overpowered. Oh my goodness, something's going on over there. <laughs> They're quite excited. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, so Smash Ultimate has so many... There aren't just, like, three or four characters that are so overpowered. Every, like, almost every character in the game is viable to some extent, so you truly see so many different characters, so many varieties of play styles. It, it's honestly incredible to see at a, at, a, at a Smash tournament. Definitely. And when it comes to games like Melee, where you'll see like a handful of boxes, and most of the time you'll see some Falco and every now and then Machine Player, Ultimate has this wide array of characters. Exactly. V variety of characters that you know, you'll often see. And I think that's about. why Smash Ultimate is so much fun to play and watch, is because, especially you know when we were playing Pools and Friendlies earlier, you, know, you, you truly see how many different people... All right. We've got another match underway. We got another match coming up. Reminder, everyone, that uh, this Smash Ultimate tournament here is for a good cause. This is for gamers' outreach, so please consider donating. Uh, if you can't donate, any appreci any uh, appreciation or um, viewership. There we go. <laughs> yeah, any uh, for it. <laughs> uh, I I will remind that we're almost halfway to our goal. Very true, sir. Very true. If we could reach five hundred, that'd be really great. We'd be donating to a great cause. I'll put this in. Gamers' outreach is a great uh, cause that donates. Uh, you know, computers, game consoles, all kinds of great entertaining stuff to uh, people in need and people who don't have access to those things normally. It's a wonderful cause. Uh, this is, we're just having a great time here, playing some Smash Bros. For a good cause. Definitely. That's what it's all about. In today's day where, you know, technology is required for almost everything, people could really benefit from things like this. I'm going to give the microphone right. now to my, my good friend Blaze. I had a lot all of right. fun casting. All right, all right. I'll catch you later, man. Definitely. Thanks for... That was fun casting with you, man. Hey, how's it going? All right, I got my main man Blaze on the mic right now. Yeah. All right. Uh, like I. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead and donate to. Um, we are almost at our halfway point. We're trying to get five hundred dollars. Oh, I have to. Okay. Yeah. I gotta go play a match. I will be back later, possibly. Um, All right. <laughs> that was fun. Yes. We are halfway to our sub goal. That's insane. We have $257? Big shout outs to Missy and Alex Eddy with a $100 donation. That is insane. Thank you so much. That's that's Ben's parents? Wow. All right. Well, now you got to put on a $100 performance. All right, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do one ear because I can't hear you without oh. without um I'm on one ear so I can hear you as well. So we got um waywardness versus bird. That's Zelda versus Wolf. Three, two, one, Zelda is crazy. Good. Uh, for my money, shoe in to win this one uh, if he can overcome Atlas and then also some dark horse named Dane. 
to say, but these two know each other pretty well. Uh, they're both in uh, the Smash class together. Um, I've seen them play friendly before. Uh, they fought each other in the Varsity versus Academy crew team battle. Waverness on Varsity, uh, Bird on Academy. Um, Bird actually camped them out pretty hard. And really impressive. Um, and made Ben sweat for the first time. Thank you so much, Kaylee. Going to a great cause. Yeah, that's, we're over halfway. $257. Yes. Wait, that's the wrong song, isn't it? I don't know who BTR is, but um, I, do, I do know the uh, Bon Jovi song. Journey? I don't know. I clearly don't know. Okay, anyway. Anyway. We're doing great. Back is going to take it, though. Um, so that brings it to 2-2. Two, two. Um, so Ben um, is playing Zelda, who is a... Ben Waywardness is playing Zelda, who is uh, a, so, sort of a semi-zoner, sort of, sort of a uh, um, turtler. Um, and he's going he to want to keep his distance from Simon, um, Bird. But Bird is, like, super, super patient. Uh, that's another one. Bird's up. Yeah, yeah, Zelda, uh, Ben especially is a very close fighter. It's not necessarily always we'll, we'll Zelda's strength, especially against something like that. Yes, yes, the get off me, the hard get off me, um, which is, is, Ben is very good with that, but uh, he built a career off of it. Um, so Simon has been careful to play around that. Yeah, see, he's Panic throws that out. That's the new we were talking about um, as a fear factor. Bird takes game one. No, just kidding. I lied. I lied. Ben's still alive. Hanging on by a thread. That, well, that'll do it. That'll do it. Catches him once again with the wolf up smash scoops. Yeah, yeah, especially with Smash. It's weird you wouldn't think because um, of like how he just like brings his legs together in an in a incredible feat of gymnastics. Um, but he, the hitbox starts uh, on the ground as he's bringing his legs up and it will absolutely stop the battle. Mm -hmm. Definitely, as we saw there. This would be a huge upset if Bird can take this over Waywardness. Um, Waywardness, I believe they played in pools actually uh, earlier. Three, Waywardness did win. Two, um, too low, I believe. Uh, so Bird, Bird got the download then. He said, I'll see you in the bracket. And now we're here. See, this is missing. Yes. Yeah, it was a revenge story for sure. We get it. The score is... For, uh, time. The score is 1 0. Alright. On the ledge there, the shield gets really small. Back here at it. Back here at it. That'll take it real quick. I'm jealous of Zelda's kill option out of shield. She has that. She also has that up B, as we're seeing there. Um, he won't commit to it at low percentages, but he can follow Wolf up after he upbees, and it will kill out at high percentages. There is a back here at it. Yeah, he can use it. Uh, it has to be very cautious with the knife. Oh, that's a snag snatch. That was a far right oh, back here, back here. Yeah, far back here, got it. We had another kill. did, Lauren Gilman. Thank you so much, Lauren. Um, brings us to $267, getting close to that $500 goal for the Gamers Outreach Foundation for the gamers for giving for uh, those game mobiles. Have you seen those? Yes. Oh, he got to. Uh, he, he think that's what he meant to do. He was to do. <laughs> Throw out the laser a little bit. Maybe he was feeling himself a little too hard wanted to bring it back. He was, yeah, yeah. This input or swag, but never know. Catches the landing with a board tilt. Yes, Shield gets the scoops. Not quite. FD is a... Yeah, one time. Oh, he doesn't need to get that far out of here. So I think this two of us would be a huge upset so far. Oh, the Thomas. Yo, the weight? He's got the count. Gotta be careful with the Shield. 
now Ben is playing the turtle game. He's going to the Excel, so he's going to back it up. He has a lot of strong distance. He helps him. She's so strong when she does. Two, yep, yep. That was a reflector you're talking about, but uh, Ben was ready for it. So he was on his face for it. Okay, really hard to get off the ledge of himself. Simon manages to sweep guy for a minute. Gotta make it back against Zelda. 87 down. Yep, good grab. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. He throws down the knight there at ledge um, to scare his opponent into shielding, and then he dashes up and he grabs him and he just holds him until the knight comes and finishes it off. That's um, that's classic. That's classic Ben right there. That's a great way we're gonna set up. That's a um, really hard that's ledge classic trap. Zelda. Classic. Yeah, that is classic Zelda. It's really hard to like do anything about it. It's so yeah. scary. You're both yeah. yeah, exactly. You gotta <laughs> mash for your life, yeah. but um, you can't mash that fast at 100. 50% or whatever he was at. Yeah. So you really, get it, if you can get back on Ben, Three, two, that is a huge, one, like, plus you're taking away from him. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll go after, after this. I'm being called, called back into bracket here after this, after this game. Oh, thank you. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, one my first game. Only two out of three, so winner takes all in this game. There. Simon, Simon's waiting on the so good right now. Uh, he just, I've seen him really strong. Uh, the scoops. The scoop. Had to get back. Oh, God, with the down tilt. My life, that's incredible. Knight again looking. Oh, jumps over it. Catches, catches flavor is trying to grab. Yep. That move has some lag. It is punishable, but not as punishable as a lot of people would hope. Oh, shield looking low. Corner here, left trap misses. Misses any punish. Yep. On the ledge, yep. Catches that one. That's fine. There are worse things than losing a stock at 160%. But he's got to take this one fast. He's not one percent. He's looking for it. He's looking for the back air here. Okay, but it could set something up. Yeah, he tried to catch a jump. Keep him on the ledge. Oh, oh but he wasn't ready for the stronger punish. So we'll take percentage. There, Ben's out of there, but he's time to release this stuff. Can you take that with a dash attack? Oh, maybe you should have tried. Oh, not fast enough. Four out of shield. Ben is a survivor right now. Wayward is not going down without a fight. Griffing up a whole bunch of extra credit. Even though he was on the ledge for like 20 minutes, every little bit he gets back. Well worth it. This kill. Scoops doesn't count. No, and a four out of shield. Don't commit to, you don't want to overcommit, especially at 177%. Get, get thick. Oh, that was the time to scoop. He's oh, scared. Everybody's scared. That's fair. I'm scared too. That'll take it? That'll take it on, especially on Town and City. Gosh, that was close. That last one, it showed a two stock, but man, they did not feel like it. Yeah. That was, that was, yeah, that was on the edge. Yeah, right. Out of shield, you can that's you can just kill on that. I wish I wish I had that. I wish my character had that. But uh, Simon almost almost upset in the bracket right there, right off the bat with a strong two one. It's wild. Okay, so it looks like I need to head out to play a game. Um, thank you all who have donated, and thank you all who are watching at home. Uh, we appreciate it greatly. The kids appreciate it. Gamers for Giving appreciates it. Uh, and stay tuned for more games as we go along. Every child deserves a chance to be themselves. But right now, in hospitals around the world, many kids are isolated, fighting some of the most difficult battles of their lives. What if we told you gamers have the power to help? We're Gamers Outreach, and we believe the world is better when kids can play. 
Our team is on a quest to help make play a part of care. With your support, we can restore a sense of joy and normalcy in the lives of families through video games. Learn more and get involved at gamersoutreach.org. This is a Gamers Outreach Cart, or Go-Kart for short. It's a portable video game kiosk built specifically for hospitals. Created and assembled by Gamers Outreach, each unit helps provide recreation to kids and young adults unable to leave their bedsides. The carts can be disinfected easily and have 360 degrees of movement, making them ideal for transport in hospitals. Go-Karts can accommodate a variety of gaming consoles, they also come with wired controllers, a gaming monitor, and are equipped with a lift mechanism that allows the height to be adjusted. Go-Karts provide a safe, flexible, and efficient way to ensure patients have access to entertainment during long-term hospitalization. To learn more about Project Go-Kart, visit GamersOutreach.org. I am Kiana Johnson, assistant coach for Shawnee State Women's Basketball. And we are here to talk to you a little bit about recruitment. Um, and I thought it was very important for our women's basketball team to come over and support uh, just to see what this charity is doing for kids that are in the hospital uh, and just people all over who need uh, extra devices and regardless if that's controllers or consoles or whatever it may be. Um, it's just a really beautiful thing and I think it's important for us all to support uh, people in need and it's a way to connect everyone, even those who have disabilities and those who are sick or ill and, and they can't participate at home. So uh, I feel like it was very important for us to come over and support. Yeah, exactly. And I just want to give a quick shout out to our top donation, Missy and Eddie Alex. And I think I just saw a uh, donation for Moosh for you scroll by for $50. Thank you so, so much, Moosh, for you and all the people that have been donating that have really been helping out. That actually puts us well past our goal. Almost we there. Closing in our goal. We'd love yeah. to smash that goal, get to that five hundred dollars. That'd be great. And I just want to again want to thank everyone that's done anything. Really come out and help today. Thank you guys. Every child deserves a chance to be themselves. But right now, in hospitals around the world, Many kids are isolated, fighting some of the most difficult battles of their lives. What if we told you gamers have the power to help? We're Gamers Outreach, and we believe the world is better when kids can play. Our team is on a quest to help make play a part of care. With your support, we can restore a sense of joy and normalcy in the lives of families through video games. Learn more and get involved at gamersoutreach.org.
This is a Gamer's Outreach Cart, or Go-Kart for short. It's a portable video game kiosk built specifically for hospitals. Created and assembled by Gamers Outreach, each unit helps provide recreation to kids and young adults unable to leave their bedsides. The carts can be disinfected easily and have 360 degrees of movement, making them ideal for transport in hospitals. Go-Karts can accommodate a variety of gaming consoles. They also come with wired controllers, a gaming monitor, and are equipped with a lift mechanism that allows the height to be adjusted. Go-Karts provide a safe, flexible, and efficient way to ensure patients have access to entertainment during long-term hospitalization. To learn more about Project Go-Kart, visit gamersoutreach.org. Welcome back, everyone. What's up, boys? 
We got a good one. We're going to get the salty run back. A bull of ham. Salty run back. Versus Echo Force. This is going to be a good match. They played earlier. Uh, I, I believe I believe Desmond won. Des um, we call him Desi Fresh here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, shout out to my family. Missy and Alex Eddie. 100 bucks. I believe my grandfather also donated 100 bucks. That's awesome. We are so close to our goal. So close. Guys, just keep rolling it in. It's for keep a good cause. Coming. We greatly appreciate it. Thank very you so much. 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 Um, I believe we're ready to go, and we're here it comes. All right, we're about ready to get in this next match. Echo Force versus Bowl of Ham. This is gonna be a good match. Joker versus Byleth. All right. This is. I'm excited for this. Joker on paper. If it gets our sent, so I think. Yeah, so. I, I believe so. Against Byleth, I don't know though, because Byleth gets an early stream. Oh, nice yes. pack here. I love to kill very early though, especially on a lighter character like Joker. Especially against Joker for sure. Uh, the recoveries are. This is going to be really interesting edge guarding game because the recoveries are very functionally similar. Yes. So, our sense definitely different, but I think Violet arguably have an easier time to, yeah. to edge guard that one. Those uh, arrows from Violet are going to really shake this game, I think. For sure. Joker's going to have to think of some way to not get hit by too many of those. Those keep. If he gets, they keep getting, keeps getting hit by those, he's going to rack up a lot of percent. For sure. If I know Desmond correctly, he's going to. He's going to highly use that down to get our sense if that's possible. He doesn't yep. need it right now. He's just going to get it. Oh, the inverse frames touching the forts, man. Our send is out. Here we go. Let's see what we can do. Good up conversion up there. Awesome. Up there. Classic. Oh, Simon just misses, though. This is the, this the, is the moment where hook game becomes especially important for Joker here. Desmond loves to keep the range going. He's going in here. Using the uh, using the gun to get a lot of percent while Violet's on stage. Now I'm trying to get uh, up use my fight Violet. Absolutely. So it's a very good, very real possibility. Violet's definitely have to play the turtle game here. She can't really afford her approach now. Oh, well, now that I say it, uh, Arson's gone, so things should be coming back to even again. So maybe does not go as far as probably anticipated. Good nice use of the gun right there to get, to get a lot of percent. Desmond is so good at knowing when to do that. When I play Joker, I literally just spam it. <laughs> but uh, but Desmond, Desmond's beyond that. He's, he knows his game more than anything here, for sure. Gotcha. Nice. That was back here. That taking, was, that, taking that sock. That was awesome A lot of timing. percent on Violet there. Not very much on Joker either. Violet's going to have to think of something here to get a lot of percent on his game quickly before Joker starts Big doing punish. stuff like this. Good well, spacing tool by Violet, Violet there, keeping advantage. control of center stage, but Joker's so fast, he's so fast. To run right in there. How do you react? <laughs> How do you react? How do you react? Especially as Violet. I mean, only I think only Nair is like reasonable to approach. Yeah. Order, sure, can do it, but Joker can I mean, use the shield it. If you catch your opponent off guard, side B can be a good option, but sure. side B is very predictable. So yeah. Especially with the spam. you got to be very careful. Oh, oh no tech. Unlucky. No tech, he but he gets it back. Though. No much guard. Violet's is struggling to approach. Nice up here, though. That's not, not going to quite close it out, base. though. Ooh, Ooh Arsene is out. out. We're going to see an early. Nice Ooh, edge going guard. deep for that Nair. Take that stock. 3-1 Joker right now. And at a pretty good percentage, too. You can definitely survive a few more hits yep. from center stage. Now we're going to side the onslaught, but towards with the Fourier. That's awesome. Nice use of the gun right there. The gun has a lot of hits done. Violet really good at spacing up the Nice call out. Violet was unable to get Down off gun? stage to edge guard Joker there because of the good nice, nice gun. Cool. Nice stand on stage up start. Thank you. Violet's got a big road to recover, but it's not possible. I definitely think it's winnable. You just yes. gotta play insanely smart and play out of your mind. Yes. But it's, it's looking a little dire for sure. Stuck at the ledge. Good forward tilt. The recovery. Guesses correctly with the roll. Now he's in the advantage. Violet's got stage control. Ooh, Joker's, Joker's no worse, which is so fast. Good range, too. Nice snare to approach. I was doing really good at calling out these yeah, switch punches, definitely. but a nice smash. I could hear it from over there. <laughs> <laughs> He's able to break out of that uh, throw. The throw could have really shaken it. That would have definitely changed the pace for sure. Another the option is up to the nice. Time for Violet's got City. control right now. Yep. Oh, oh up the air. up air. LDI. Gonna take yep, it. that's going to take it. Game very, one. Very energetic yes. game one for sure. I wonder what they're going to... Do you think we're going to see a character switch, or do you think we're going to run it right back to the same um, characters? I don't, I don't know if a bull of ham has other characters. I'm pretty sure he only plays Joker. Yeah. Or not Joker, sorry, Byleth. Um, mm -hmm. Desmond has a pocket Bayonetta. I don't think it's going to come out, though. He Probably does, he not. He does not need know. to, I don't yeah, think. I don't know if Byleth Bayonetta is really a, mm -hmm. an interesting matchup. And we got a thumbs up. I'm sure you saw it on stream. I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we're going into game two very shortly. Yep, it's loading up. So I wonder what we're going to get. 
Roy, oh, oh let's go. Oh, we have a character go. switch. Awesome. Going to the, going to the Roy, right this back is, to PS2. This is a classic Shawnee matchup for sure. We have, <laughs> we have like four Roys here that just lab it out. Now we're, now we're I, think, I think this is an interesting character switch here because a lot of Roy's neutral aerials are very fast and it seems to be yes. a decent counter for Joker speed. For sure. And Roy also has a very good combo game. Oh well. yeah. Clearly he's he's done some labbing because I mean that's that's kind of a hard game. Throws into aerials too. Ooh. Quite a bit. Ooh, this are is a out. chair. Really called it the salty chair, Sean. <laughs> oh, nice air coach. Yeah, Joker. Struggling a little harder on this matchup for sure. Violet previously could not really. Throughout the hitbox, it says, Roy. Roy is definitely up to the I think this is a smart switch so far. Nice! Anti hop side B. Good dancing, so. like good DI, though. Able to see if he can edge the situation going to be like. Good down tilt to get back into control from the stage. Ooh! Tech situation. Nice! Good tech Three. chase. I'm not sure. Probably going to be a I'm just going to save you. I, I like the control center stage. Good side B, though. Get tacking on that percent. Oh, the pressure! So patient. Incredible. Good spot dodge. Oh, shield's looking kind of low though. Looking, Joker shield's looking small. One solid hit could break that shield. Oh, down gun does not catch it, but it's punished by very powerful side tilt. Yeah. Only 92% on Roy. Although Roy's this recovery... Activity. This is dope. You think guns would hit all those things? Like... Yeah. Roy's recovery uh, is kind of interesting. It has two different ways it can go. You can send it horizontally or vertically. Yep. It's all about mixing up your opponents. You know, Absolutely. Both players playing very patient. Yep. So far, 0%. Oh, as I said, that comes from Oh, oh the, the raw the forward smash. Forward smash in neutral? Man, if that hit me, I'd be so What a <laughs> Oh, nice. Nice use of that down B. Yep. Arson comes alive. This could really shake things up here. It uh, certainly would. A lot of percent. So far, no. Oh, but no fear. No answer for it, though. Nice side B to stop this no approach. No fear. He's just going oh, right what in. a crap. Out of the side B? Into the side. Oh. The madman. Counter is not finding any mark. Nice grab up throw. Up throw. Does not kill. I would think it would. Oh, nice. Oh, Makes up with a down. Tail into that dancing blade. That's sick. He seems to really Great know the down. proper situations to use this downward angle gun. For sure. He's, uh, he's got the mind of a boy player for sure. Oh, but Ooh. unfortunate. Down air covers his high approach. Superb. Superb. Yeah. I, I don't think the Rebels fully grabbed that. I guess not. Get an attack, not answered. Ooh, interesting tech situation. Yeah, or try players. to read Joker's ledge. Ooh, get nice out, SDI out. Joker was too smart, he's able to... Find that. Pressure again, forces Joker to think an option, to do an option there. Yeah. Roy's gonna play really smart. Good read on What a call out! Oh my gosh. We have an even game. We have this other game. Super even. <laughs> Mixed grab. Um, Joker's gonna play a little safe, more safely, I'd assume. Yeah. Nice save. Nice use of the gun right there, attacking on a little bit of percent. Every also percent matters. Oh, that was right. It's so interesting how Deathman uses his, um, his down in neutral. It's just, you just don't expect it. He's gonna get Arsene any moment on here. There it is. This could be. Oh, this could be scary. Gets chipped by the side beat. Yeah, just spam that. Like, what are you gonna do? So much range. Big back air. The back oh, air will he magnetizes. Oh, superbly played. It's a great set, though. 2-0. That was very well played. Wonderful that, set. That game two could have gone either way. Oh, for definitely, sure. definitely. Yeah. Good game, boys. That was awesome. Oh man. Yeah. All man. Right. I can't wait for the next game. Actually, that oh, that was yeah, that, that was... that's a good sign to come for sure. Yeah. Uh, We've like seen this. so many high level games. The game I uh, casted earlier of uh, X9 versus Ruby was really was really. It well was played. it was really funny to it watch. Was a really good. <laughs> it was a really good set. It was so good. Oh man, I wonder who we're gonna get. Atlas. <laughs>
Oh, yep. All right, we are back. Atlas and Koopa are on deck. This is going to be a great one, for sure. Um, Atlas is our re resident Pac-Man main, best owner in Shawnee, for sure. He is currently number two on PR, um, just above me. I'm number third. Um, it's going to be... We're going to be a very exciting match. I don't know who Koopa plays, for sure. Do you know? Usually Game & Watch. Game & Watch? So, okay, yeah. that's going to be an interesting one. Um, Game & Watch's bucket side B could definitely change the pace of the of the match, for sure. Because yeah. Mark is... He's kind of 50-50 with, like, um, like neutral and mm -hmm. also zoning. Um, it's going to be interesting to see, because I'm not sure... I think... I would assume Koopa knows the matchup, though, because I'm pretty sure they've played a few yeah. times before, also. I'm pretty sure they have, yeah. Yeah. So this should be pretty interesting. I wonder if they're they're getting ready right now. They're still setting up. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. And uh, yeah. Uh, I think they're ready. So let's let's get it on. I wonder what stage we're gonna go to. If I w if I was Mark, we probably would be going to PS2 though. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing. <laughs> oh, we're at town. Okay. So let's see if Mark is setting up. We approach us with uh, Nair. <laughs> Bug is a hydrant. Not gonna find it. Nice down air to resolve. You know, watch things. Just gonna get on the pressure. Nice grab by Mark Atlas. Gonna find a zone that's gonna reflect it. What a grab! <laughs> that's scary. Big dangerous game. But they're certainly separate of the hydrant. Mark here is probably just gonna keep circle camping if he can afford to. Game Watch is gonna keep approaching. I, I can only assume that's how the game's gonna go. Slowly approaching. Potentials are relatively even. That's gonna be bad. Mark in disadvantage. Getting juggled by up here. Down smash, does not find it. What the? Oh my god, the range. Mark's still charging up food. Bell comes out. Gets reflected though, unfortunately. This, this is definitely an interesting matchup. I don't know how Mark's gonna, gonna come around this. Oh, puts the shield, unfortunate. Came to the side platform. Back to center stage. Bell comes out. It does find it, but just bad punish. Oh, as I say that, nice forward smash. Koopa, Koopa loves it, though. He loves that. <laughs> yeah. He's, he loves the sportsmanship. Gallagher coming out. That's going to be easy. 40%. Nice job. Delta does not find hydrant. Nine on the hydrant. Incredible. Mark, uh, 130% off stage. Gonna find the back air. Nope, not going to find it. But Uppy powers through. I've never seen that. That's crazy. Jumping way back to center stage. Going to set it back up. Nice upbeat. 106%. Nice downer. But he dies off trampoline! Oh my goodness. Man, that is just so unfortunate. Nice conversion. Wow. Nearly 50% already. This is certainly anyone's game though, for sure. Big 30 for um, Mark. Mark Endless. We're back to neutral. Game watch approaching. Nice. I just see some juggling, but no. Forward smash beats out the down smash. Nice reflect with the orange. Okay, back to center stage. Mark's gonna set up a bell. He's stunned! Oh no! Down smash is fine, it gets grabbed. Back throw for sure. What's Mark's situation? Oh, Oppie finds him though. Here comes Bell. Re grabs. What's the situation? Oh, huge! Oh my gosh, big damage. Does not find the follow up though, which is alright. Big back air, nice, solid two stock. That was that was sick. Holy goodness, that was very sick. Gotta say, I was very kind of concerned because Game and Watch was definitely definitely had his number the uh, first stock. Um, but just Mark solidly finding his footing and just reading his situation since just awesome. Yeah, counterplay, so good. Um, I w they're already going back into it. I wonder what stage we're gonna go to next. Um. He said he doesn't have frost because that probably means you swapped characters. Yep, he's going in Yoshi. Um, this will be interesting. I'm not sure how the Yoshi matchup goes. I worry are you into on Kalos. I think Pac-Man doesn't do as good on this stage because Bell Ledge options get covered by the the Age of Platforms. People approaching with solid. Oh my god, I did 25 percent. He's at already 50. Oh. Mark recovers. Solid forward tilt. Resets the neutral. Back of center stage, Galgus goes out, does not need it, he's getting solid near to backer conversion. Nice up smash! Oh my goodness. 
Hydrain beats out the uh, his uh, down beat. Oh, he just goes for it, DBZ! He's still living, though. But he's... Oh. I can't believe he actually made it back, though. I, I would have vested. <laughs> um, uh oh, for it. Nice nair! Koopa, Koopa knows a thing or two about Yoshi. Holy crap. Oh, yeah. It's just reset, though, to stocks piece. Percentages are very even, but Yoshi is just going in. Nice down B, actually. Grad does not find it. Mark's got a vanish here. Bell does not find it, but he re-grabs. Gets rid of it, though. Grad is canceled. Four airs. Oh my gosh, that's so scary. This dinosaur knows a thing or two. Big Nair. Up tilt. Up air. Up B. Does not find that, though. Hydrant broken. Mark with a bad approach gets four smash. <laughs> Koopa loves it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but Mark, Stone Cold Killer, he's back in it though. He knows he can win this. Bill comes out. Hydrant. Ducks under the Hydrant. What's the approach? Nice. Good forward air. Good percentage. Really wants to crap here. Like the center. He's getting the back ears. Break that. Breaks Mark's concentration. Failed aerial approach. Big spacing. Nice oh, he's back here. Can we set up. Oh! Fight this one. Ooh, nice air dodge. This is very scary. Back throw. I don't think it's going to kill. Not quite. Mark's struggling to find a kill here. Oh, this should do it, though. Yep, yep. Bad DI also. Definitely gets it there. Galco's online, though. This should be an easy 40% if Mark can find it. Oh, make that 50 almost. <laughs> forward air, forward air. Neutral's reset. Oh, he grabs the bell with the back. <laughs> nice back air. Hydrant coming down. He's going to get shooted. Great air to get him off him. Side B coming through. Not going to find anything. Nice. Down tilt. Oh, big hydrant mix up. Looks like Galico online in his pocket. He's gonna reset the situation. Bell come through. Oh no, but he re grabs. Can't do a forward smash on that. No punish after it off after the second hit throw. That's really unfortunate. Nice back here to get him in disadvantage. Oh! Yeah. The raw forward smash! Nice! That was that was that was yeah. sick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one one there. Yeah. Koopa's killing it. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Given PR number two a run for his money. Yeah. I don't think anyone I would have got it by that too. No one was suspecting that. No. That was very scary. Mm. This um I wonder if he's he, surely he's gonna say Yoshi this time. Cause um, there's no reason yeah. to swap now. He's solid. Sure the game was relatively even, but he definitely had his number. Yeah. And I don't I don't see a switch coming. I don't think Mark's gonna switch either because no. he firmly believes in his Pac Man. Yes. And I firmly believe his Pac Man too. He can mm -hmm. totally win this. Just Miss up some conversions, no big deal. I mean, Yoshi's double chunk negates a lot of that because of the super armor. But back to town, I don't know how I feel about this one because I, I think Yoshi loves this stage also. As I say that, already getting two up here. Oh, 60% already. That's very unfortunate for Mark. 70 now. I try to approach. I, I think he's trying to go for a grab but he's got too close. Kind of re approach. Nice. So I'd be interesting to reset the neutral there. Oh, Galaga barely stops Yoshi's full here. Oh, he just wants that force match so bad. Yeah, there it is again. I wonder what the setup is going to be this time. Yep, Galaga. Definitely really good push off him. Goes back to disadvantage. To, gets punished by a Nair. Yeah, Mark's sense it, but no punishment. He was not ready for it. Hydra does knock him off the stage again. 126%. Raw forward smash again! Dies at, I think it was 80? That's crazy. Back to neutral with the nice key snipe. Mark had, has had enough of it. Absolutely enough of it. Now it's time for Galaga Strings. Easy 40%. Let's keep it going though. Morse online, so is Hydrant. Takes 20% off that. No follow up with our up tilt from Yoshi. Grab some melon. <laughs> what a mix. Nice up smash. Hydrant. What's the recovery option? Roll. Nice. It's out of that. I wonder where that is. Ooh, watch for the Hydrant. Yep. Down B breaking Hydrant was looking very, very gosh in there. Good approach. 
Force punch on Hydrate. Uh, feels bad for Mark. Hydrate is working on both teams here. I'm sure this game. Very difficult situation. I wonder where the recovery is. Nice. His down air finds him first. I, I thought for sure Yoshi's would first. That's right. Key into Hydrant. Does not find it. Back to center. Market disadvantage up high. Oh, big up smash. He's going to recover this, though. Yep, low recovery. But it's found by down air. God, this is so, this is so stressfully close. High percentages on, on both sides. Re grabs the melon. Big back here, though. Mark resetting up. Across the stage. Stipesing it. Oh, deep sea. Back airship, yep. Very poor choice of Davi on that one. That's alright though. Higher percentages here. I guess punches with the fire hydrant. That oh, big forward air though. I wonder how he's gonna deal with the stop. He's just getting percentages in. Very bad state he's in. Bell! Sure. Nice conversion, re grab. What's the set? Oh, nice back air. All this percentage on answer for it as I say that, though. Big, 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 big forward air. Reset. Oh, re grabs Bell. No jab conversion, though. Now the set for the Hydrant again. Oh, bad approach! That takes it. Mark wins it again. That was an insane set. Yeah. Um, I was very nervous for Mark, for sure. He was not ready for the Yoshi. Um,. Definitely the Yoshi up air, not up air, sorry. Um, double jump had a lot to do with that. Super arming through a lot of um, Pac-Man's normals. Yes. And just just rolling in, just rush down Dinosaur. We oh, love to see Yoshi. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, but Mark, going still proceeding through winners. you love to see it. Good shit, Koopa. So good. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> a good run. Sorry about my language. Um, <laughs> That was just really. I'm just really passionate about that one. That was just so good. Close game. Um, I yeah. don't know. It looks like we don't have anyone else on stream um, set up yet. And oh, we're back to bracket though. Um, currently, we're 73 percent through the match, or through the um, tournament. I wonder. I really wonder how this going on through the bracket though. I wonder if there's been any upsets. Um, reading through here, it looks relatively makes sense. Um, this is only group one though. We only we haven't seen anything else though. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, what what did you think about that uh, set? This is a very close set. I think that it could have gone either way there at the very end, but for sure. Um, hmm. I wonder what the word is back there. Mm -hmm. But guys, we are still very close to our goal. We're four four fifths of the way there, and we're just yeah. we're just so thankful though. Um, for your generous donations, we're just we're still so very happy with how the things are going down. We have so much more tournament to play. We may be through seventy through excuse me, we may be through seventy percent of the bracket, but we still have certainly enough time to make this work. Yeah. We can definitely achieve our goal, uh, no doubt. Um, man, if I if I was to guess, I'm assuming we're still gonna go, we're going through some losers bracket though, because I think we've gone through enough so. winners, yeah, um, side of things. So we're definitely gonna go through some. Loser brackets. Um, oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take a break. Um, thanks so much. Please stay tuned. We'll be right back. Every child deserves a chance to be themselves, but right now in hospitals around the world, many kids are isolated, fighting some of the most difficult battles of their lives. What if we told you gamers have the power to help? We're Gamers Outreach, and we believe the world is better when kids can play. Our team is on a quest to help make play a part of care. With your support, we can restore a sense of joy and normalcy in the lives of families through video games. Learn more and get involved at GamersOutreach.org. This is a Gamers Outreach Cart, or Go Kart for short. It's a portable video game kiosk built specifically for hospitals. Created and assembled by Gamers Outreach, each unit helps provide recreation to kids and young adults unable to leave their bedsides. The carts can be disinfected easily and have 360 degrees of movement, making them ideal for transport in hospitals. Go-karts can accommodate a variety of gaming consoles, 
They also come with wired controllers, a gaming monitor, and are equipped with a lift mechanism that allows the height to be adjusted. Go-karts provide a safe, flexible, and efficient way to ensure patients have access to entertainment during long-term hospitalization. To learn more about Project Go-Kart, visit GamersOutreach.org. Hello and welcome back to some gamers for giving a little bit of commentary um, for this great, amazing charity event. I'm joined by I'm Casting Badger or Dylan Gonzalez, and this is O Obama. O Obama, right here. I just uh, want. To, oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, you go ahead. All right. Thank you. Uh, I want to start off by just thanking everybody for donating because we have donated four hundred seventeen dollars for game for games for giving, which is a very great charity fund. It's very good. It's going to people and children in hospitals who just are, especially people in, who are children who are in long term care. It's very good charity. Please give the last donation was Howard Bishop with um hundred dollars. Thank you very much for that. That's a really big donation. That is a that's, big that's, donation. That's already twenty percent of the donation. That is that like needed. just imagine if everyone did that. Everyone goes five hundred dollars yeah. for the donation. <laughs> even if everybody uh, watching or even if everybody who's been playing in matches donated a dollar, that would go towards a lot. It would go a lot. Just yeah. just a dollar, which is it's not much. It's not even like uh, the cost of, cost of a coffee. So like, yeah. Hey, sometimes just skip on a Starbucks and just help out a very good cause exactly. for just a lot of people. With the top donator of $100 with Missy and Alex Eddie. So I wonder if anyone's going to try and dethrone them. Maybe someone's going to yeah, try and maybe $101. Both, oh. And both of them are, oh, both, yeah, they are both, both about 100 Both of them at 100 And let's just see. I'm, once again, very good cause. And we're almost at our gold in general. It's 417 almost only like $83. I <laughs> yeah, yeah, didn't have to. It's like I had to think. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Math is hard. Math is hard. Yeah, math is, math is very difficult. Um, But yeah, only $83 to reaching our goal. So, hey, just give it all if you can. Yeah, and uh, it was actually really fun setting up this event because I set up this event with uh, some other uh, people. Uh, one of them is playing, and then, no, two of them are playing in this tournament. Uh, and then I am also playing, so three of us out of the five that were setting it up. Uh, it was actually really fun figuring out what we had to do in order to actually set up this tournament. And... Uh, there was a lot more than what we expected to putting into a tournament. Like, uh, you have to make sure that you have all the setups ready. You have to have the monitors. You have to have the people. The most important thing that we found was uh, making sure that we had enough people, like, for commentating and stuff. Uh, making sure that we even had enough people to make the tournament go on for long enough. Like, we had to advertise. We had to... Yeah, yeah, because I saw a lot of, like, even in, like, just the den, you were, guys were always up there, like, with this table, just like, hey, you want to join the tournament? It's free. <laughs> yeah, they did most of the advertising. I wasn't I wasn't available whenever they were doing the advertising, except for yesterday. We actually had a booth set up, and we were just playing Smash, and people were like, hey, you're playing Smash? And I'm like, yes, we are. Would you like to join a charity event? They'd be like, oh, I'm, we're not too good. And we're like, we're going to have two brackets. We're going to have the main bracket, and then we're going to have the amateur bracket. You guys can come out and join us. This is for charity. Uh, you don't have to feel bad about your skill level. It doesn't matter. This is all for fun. And so far, I've had a blast. I've had a blast, too. And just, like, seeing everyone, like, people who have never actually played in turns, like one of my friends, like, like, ah, he's nervous, he doesn't play, but he's have, he's a lot of fun, it's yeah. just look general. And just seeing people who don't normally, like, go to tournaments, just having this opportunity to not only play, but play for a good cause. Yeah, and exactly. People getting in the feature match, like, who wants in? It's like, <laughs> I want it! <laughs> I want to commentate! <laughs> or, like, and even especially like, in the feature match, when we when the commentators t t do a match, and it's like, yeah. who wants to go in? Like, who just thinks to like, go in? And, like, oh, and, like, always get, like, last game, for example, Atlas, and, um, forget the other guy's name. Uh, uh it's Koopa. Like, Koopa, and the yeah. just amazing matches, and great commentary, that, and just... That match was so much fun to watch, because, uh, it wasn't shown on camera, but before Koopa went in there, Koopa was really, really nervous about fighting Atlas. Mm -hmm. And seeing that second match, whenever Koopa actually took it, I, I kind of popped off for Koopa whenever, like, the uh, 
I think forward he smash? Sma yeah, he forward smashed in front of the Hydra, and I was really worried that like maybe the maybe the, the Hydra would block yeah. it or something. Yeah, just... I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I was really happy to see Koopa get one good set in. Yeah, and, and like. like a little bit of like, and a lot. And Koopa's also done a lot of it good for this. For example, he brought pizza to the event for everybody oh to and enjoy. I was it's just like, yeah, yeah. Whenever I saw that Koopa was going out to go, I was like, "Where's Koopa?" At? And then like, I figured out that Koopa went out to go get pizza. He brought like six little Caesar's. brought like six p little Caesar's pizza. Yeah. yeah, and then a two liter also. And two liter, and he got like cups and plates, and just like, "Hey guys, playing for Jared." He's like, "Hey, I brought some food. You're going out so hungry. No, no charge, no cost. Just come on in." Yeah, was I playing you whenever he brought back the pizza? I think you. I think you, we were. You looked playing. at me. You're like, "Hey, uh, kid." We need to go get a slice before it's all yeah, before gone. Yeah, before it's all gone. Everybody started gravitating towards. <laughs> and it was like, it's amazing. Just like, he's doing a lot of good. And like, and everyone here who's just even just like watching and just being like, oh, you know, I just want to like give, give my support just by watching. It's uh, it's helpful. It's genuinely like nice that you're like here if you're do watching. And if you are here watching and you haven't donated, you should seriously consider it. You should really consider it. You should it. consider it. It's for a great cause. Once again, <laughs> we're only eighty three dollars away from meeting the five hundred dollar mark. Only eighty three dollars, which is. Less than 84. <laughs> that, this, is, this is factual. This uh, is a true fact. But, but like you said, it, people will go out to eat all the time, and they'll spend like $5 or anything like that. Uh, or just like stop by Starbucks and get like a $3 coffee. Yeah, like, exactly. Exact, well, I think it's more expensive. Than probably. <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, like if you even put $3 towards this charity, that's $3 closer that we can that's, get to $500. That is over 3% because... Math. Uh, I'd have to do math in my head, but it's like four or five percent of like the donation with three dollars, which is yeah. like a good substantial chunk. And hey, good once again, good cause. You're helping out all these people and helping out children who don't normally get to play because like long term hospital things, and they get to feel like just a kid because they are. Yeah. A imagine if we could get all of the, <laughs> the kids in the hospitals playing Smash Brothers because Smash Brothers, honestly, it's like the the one game that I play like like whenever I want to just feel good about myself like, yeah i'll joke around with like friends and stuff and i'll be like i just kind of want to play smash right now like after getting done with like an exam or a midterm or something but uh i i think uh if everybody had a copy of smash this world would be a better place i think so too and it's also just like i've had a lot of fun with like my my brothers and my my very little siblings and like <laughs> yeah. we all they'll uh, like one time i was walking downstairs and all the playing they're all like like seven year olds like playing smash but it's like oh kirby it's like <laughs> yeah it's fun whenever uh i was uh much more young, I had Smash 64, and the person that I would play all the time was Kirby. And then mm -hmm. I did that with Melee, and I found out that Kirby was really bad in Melee. And really good at <laughs> <No>. 64. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, Smash is, it's great, just seeing, like, and even, like, the amount of people that showed up, I was expecting, like, maybe 10. But we got, like, over 30 people to show up, I think. Uh, yeah. Almost really? 40 people? Wow, that is that, amazing. That is a lot of people. That's I all. don't. I don't think we was expecting that many people. Whatever we were actually going around to create the tournament, but I'm really glad that's the number that ended actually ended up showing up. I'm seeing characters that I don't ever see played. Like I haven't seen My a. I haven't, I haven't. Huh? My Ridley. I haven't seen a Ridley. <laughs> I was like, oh, cool. It's Ridley. I saw like. Mr. Game and Watch. Yoshi. What? I mean, I know the characters are good, but I don't see them often. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thirty-eight, thirty-three, and like ten. Wow, that is like thirty-eight registered, thirty-three showed up, and like ten just showed up. Yeah. And that's. Oh, that's awesome! It's amazing. Oh, and like there's a lot of just good. It's just good to see how like this energetic and fun and it's just nice to play some Smash Bros. Pull some people or yeah. relax and play. And I there like I said, there was a lot of people who were nervous about coming in and playing Smash Brothers and they were worried about their skill level. I think one of them was like, Yeah, I played the story mode and I beat it and then I never touched it again. Like ever since <laughs> he bought it and I was like, dude, it's fine. Like yeah, play some of the DLC characters, have some fun and he picked up Mithra and Pyro and he was like, Man, I'm gonna play these characters I'm like, Congratulations, you found the top tier. <laughs> <laughs> you found one of the best top five. <laughs> yeah. And uh it, it seems like that he's been having a lot of fun with it. I, I think uh, he ended up getting knocked down to losers, but uh, he seems like he's having a lot of fun with it. Oh, I thought, like, I've, like, even, like, my matches that I played, like, I got to fight Dane. He's really, really good. I, I and I fought almost, Dane. And, like, it's scary just, like, playing with him. And it's like, oh, but I got close. And, like, genuinely that kind of energy and Smash Bros. is just, it's so much fun. It really is. Yeah, uh, yeah I fought Dane in, uh, over in the other room and that was really, really fun and really, really nerve-wracking. Uh, he beat me the first round, I beat him the second one, and then uh, he won the third one. 
And yeah. I, he just he just picked in center where I was like, all right, we're going to brawl you in really close <laughs> range. Let's go. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Uh, I think it was where, like, I played Ridley at first, and then I was like, okay, I'm going to have to play Byleth and try to outspace and make mm-hmm. sure that his Incineroar can't get in on me. And that worked well for the second set, but then, like, the third set. It, it, it just, like, adapts up. and gets used to it. Yeah. Like, There's a reason he's the coach. <laughs> yeah, there is a reason why he is the coach. Yeah, faculty, yeah. we got students, we got kids, we got alumni, we got everything. I, we have a high schooler who showed up and almost completely ruined, like, just beat me just really well and just did a lot of damage. Who was the high schooler? Um, I forget his tag, but um, I want to add double E. Something is up double, double E. Is it Neek? Neek, yeah, Neek. Oh, I didn't know Neek was a high yeah, schooler. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a senior. Oh, I did not and know And, like, that. I was like, I was like, oh, cool, I didn't know that. You're like, it's like, yeah, it's like, uh, it's like I kind of want to try out now. It's like, dude, you're great. You'll dude. definitely be fit. Yeah, ne- Neek is actually really good. I was playing Neek earlier and, uh, in pools, and he's all- so much fun to play against. And we started playing friendlies and stuff whenever uh, pools were over and done with and we were waiting for Bracket to get set up. And we were all just having a blast. It's just nice, just like everyone's having fun, and some people who don't play, like you said, or like we said earlier, some people just don't play a lot. They're just coming in, just doing their best, having some fun, and like doing good, genuinely. There's also just a lot of, you know, we haven't seen a while. What we haven't seen a donation. Someone should really. Somebody should donate. Someone should donate. Someone should donate. You know, it'd be really nice. Um, we'll read your name out. It'll be really fun. Hey, we just got a oh, donation. Oh, we just got $10 from Brian, Brian. donated $10. Thank you very much. I do know that person. <laughs> Thank you so much for donating. It's going to a great cause. We are $10 closer. Only 73 That is like over like, that's like 15% of just yeah. like $10. Thank you so much. It's going to a great cause. Really, genuinely, it's thank you. Um, Thank you, Vincent, for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I give unto thee golden shillings, help thine, help thine in dire need. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you very much, Cabot Ryan. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I all the uh, all the people in the other room are resting up. They're getting their minds mentally prepared for the next round of games and uh, stuff like that. Uh, a lot of incoming intense matches. Believe me, the excitement is not over. You yeah. thought Atlas versus Koopa was intense. Ooh, it's going to get crazy. Yeah. I'm excited to see you versus Dane. Um, I don't think I, I think I, I think I lost. So I don't get to face Dane again. Oh, I did, oh okay. yeah. I don't get to face Dane again. I lost. Oh, wait. I thought you said that you were going to, against Dane. No, I've already faced him. Oh, you already fought him. How did him, that yeah. go? Um, I got really close twice. Oh. Did not manage either time. But I it's mean, really, really good close yeah. is better than being really far. <laughs> it feels, but, it feels yeah. like it's like I think I did pretty good on those sets, you know. Like even mm-hmm. though I lost, I was like I felt pretty good about it. And hmm? uh, yeah, if we can look at the bra- yeah, let's go. Let, let's go to the bracket. bracket. Yeah, we can. Okay. All Atlas has won all of his matches so far. <laughs> yeah. That does not surprise me all that much. I will be honest. <laughs> He's a very, very good player. I'm excited to see Atlas into Waverness though. Those are both. Oh, very... I did not know that. Dane won uh, two and one over Clown Tims. That they must have just fought because I just lost the Clown Tims. Dane is Dane is also Dane, won all his yeah, matches yeah. so far. <laughs> I know that. I'm genuinely incredibly excited to see like Dane fighting, um, like either Atlas or maybe even. Um, Waywardness, because they're all really good players. Mm-hmm. And seems, seems like Nedia is 16. You guys probably seen him commentating. He won 2-0 over Mithra. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's unfortunate. Hey, but but the thing is, is like, there is still the amateurs bracket. There is, yeah. And there is still like, and even if you come in, you're like, oh, you know, I'm not all that good. There's an amateur bracket for people who are just exactly. not that great. I did not know the there was that many. The has had a total of 111 matches. And that is only possible through the organization that we have uh, here and that we have actually set up. And it, there is a lot of time and effort put into this tournament. Uh, like, we would actually have, like, weekly meetings. We'd be like, okay, this is how this is going to go. This is how this is going to go. And it, it's really amazing uh, that we was even able to get this far with this. Mm-hmm. Oh, we got another donation. We got another donation from President, President Barack, Barack Obama. Obama. Let's go. <laughs> I have to do more than Vince is what President Oh Barack my Obama goodness. Said. I know who that person is and thank you so much for donating. Thank you and genuinely it looks like your president has come, yeah, Mr. Go. Obama. 
genuinely that's so amazing. That's a hundred and that's a not hundred eleven dollars. I mean, that's eleven dollars. That's that's so close to the goal. They're only like. Are you gonna let that happen, Cavadrine? I mean, you, you donate like, yeah. twelve dollars. Yeah, yeah. You're you gonna let that them. happen? <laughs> <laughs> like you, you could definitely outdo him. Twelve dollars. Uh, just just twelve dollars. You know, <laughs> you know, no, technically speaking, they've already done ten, so only two dollars. And I mean, you, you beat them, you know? Yeah, you beat them twice. If you yeah. donate thirteen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you donate them twice, but. Four hundred thirty-eight dollars out of five hundred. That's sixty-two dollars. That is, <laughs> we are so close Math to that goal. Hard. That's a little bit more. I had to do all the numbers in my head, like <laughs> numbers. But yeah. doing so good, and just genuinely, thank you so much for donating. It's a great cause, helping once again helping children in those long-term hospitals who normally just don't get to play these games because a lot of treatment, a lot of stuff like that. But sometimes it's nice to just sit back and be a kid, you know? Yeah, and I think that's uh part of what this also is, is, like, being able to sit back, be a kid. And, obviously, there are some people who are, like, trying to win this tournament, but there's a lot of people here who are just, like, I want to have fun. Uh -huh. Like, I, I want to sit down, I want to play some matches, I want to have fun, and, uh, Maybe see how far have some of go. that competitive spirit in there. Oh, yeah, really see, see how far you go. We have Cabbage Brian donating Let's $12. Go, $12. Cabbage Brian. Don't let him out to you. <laughs> Immediately shooting him up to $450. Get nay nay Obama was the message. Get nay nay Obama. <laughs> <laughs> that is, we are $450. That is so close to donation gold. That is, we are, we are $50 away. We're only fifty dollars away from meeting our goal of five hundred dollars. What we great can go cause. above and beyond this goal. We could theoretically, yeah, we but could. just think about this. We set you all, you you all set out with your with your people like let's donate some money to a good cause and let's play some Smash Brothers. And we're so close. People are doing so well and genuinely it's so amazing just to see. And it's really really good to see that we've already almost hit the goal and we haven't even uh, been to like. Any of the more hype matches, not even like we, the top eight. Yeah, we yeah. haven't we haven't even seen like Atlas versus Waywardness, which I hope will happen. Because I that'll really be a good, do. That'll be a good match. Uh, uh, the problem see. is one of them's gonna be knocked down to losers, and then we have to deal with them. <laughs> yeah, we have to deal with them. Uh, but it, like, it's not even later into the tournament, and we've already reached four hundred and fifty dollars. We've already reached, and that's amazing. Yeah, amazing. Genuinely, it's just. The upcoming matches are going to be intense. Let me just yeah, say that. Thing. If anybody is watching now, you better keep watching because there are going to be some really, really good matches. People are just now getting warmed up. Oh, yeah. And just yeah. seeing, like, Atlas, a really, really good player. And Mr. and then Mr. Waywardness, both of them incredibly intense, doing crazy things. I've seen them both play. I don't actually see them face each other a lot often, though. Uh, I was actually over at their apartment yesterday, and I was watching them play, and they do some smack talk. <gasps> Somebody just donated $51. We have 50 we the goal. We're the goal. Let's go. Let's go. Let's who, was, go. who donated? Uh, Loose for YouTube? Loose for YouTube. And it just says, done. Done. Thank Done. you we so have much. Meet we that have goal. We have beat. That's amazing. Five hundred and one dollars. Like I said, we're not even like like we're probably only like halfway through the tournament. We're we've already we've already beat the goal. There were in more intense matches. There were crazy high. I can things. hear them screaming in the other room. They know Thank that you know. we reached that five hundred dollar goal. That is amazing. Thank you so much, Moose, for you two. Thank you. <laughs> Let's go. Mm. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> We got oh. videos? Oh, we got videos. All right, okay. we're going to watch some videos. Let's watch some videos. Every child deserves a chance to be themselves. But right now, in hospitals around the world, many kids are isolated, fighting some of the most difficult battles of their lives. What if we told you gamers have the power to help? We're Gamers Outreach, and we believe the world is better when kids can play. Our team is on a quest to help make play a part of care. With your support, we can restore a sense of joy and normalcy in the lives of families through video games. Learn more and get involved at gamersoutreach.org. This is a Gamers Outreach Cart, or Go Kart for short. It's a portable video game kiosk built specifically for hospitals. 
Created and assembled by Gamers Outreach, each unit helps provide recreation to kids and young adults unable to leave their bedsides. The carts can be disinfected easily and have 360 degrees of movement, making them ideal for transport in hospitals. Go-karts can accommodate a variety of gaming consoles. They also come with wired controllers, a gaming monitor, and are equipped with a lift mechanism that allows the height to be adjusted. Go-karts provide a safe, flexible, and efficient way to ensure patients have access to entertainment during long-term hospitalization. To learn more about Project Go-Kart, visit GamersOutreach.org. And we are back. Welcome, welcome back. We, once again, I'm. Th thank you very much for just sticking around. Oh, there goes Travis. Uh, thank you very much for sticking around, and I hope you all enjoyed that little video. And I'm kind of tempted out there that there's some doctor out there who's just like an ex-pro. He's just like shows up to kids like, let me teach you how to play my. Soul. Yeah, yeah. And just there's, them wave dashing and all these like, crazy my things. My child also plays Smash Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I believe that. Travis just left to see if we're gonna do something special. He we might be able to do some something special. Exhi exhibitions match. Maybe we're not. We're not promising anything. We're not because we don't know. We don't. <laughs> but but uh, maybe maybe like a doubles match. Maybe something. Maybe like something. Eight player smash with some of the top players. Yeah, maybe something funny, something wacky. Yeah. But whatever it is. Thirteen dollars. Oh, Thirteen dollars. What was? I'm gonna go check. We're gonna check the message. All right. Thank you so much, Obama. Obama team rise up with O Obama, President Barack Obama, and Obama. Thank you so much. And I do know who you are. And I think I think Vince has been beaten. I think he has. What is the message? Uh -oh. I can't let Vincent win. He smells and is stinky. <laughs> <laughs> uh. They are, they are, we are both friends, so some friendly banter, but like, thank you so much, 500, that's, ooh, pushing above the goal, that's, 514, $514, Obama with $13, <laughs> mm. doing me some good as O Obama. <gasps> what? Whoa, okay, okay, so, we're going to raise the goal to $600, if, if we can make that goal, you are not you're going to see Koopa commentating. But not just Koopa. You will see Koopa in a chicken costume commentating. Is, that, is, is it actually like a chicken costume? Oh, oh he's the got chicken, a chicken hat. hat. Oh, it's gonna be so much fun. Oh. I Koop, just from the way Koopa plays, he's so expressive. <laughs> I cannot wait to see what kind of like antics he can get himself into with that. Just like chicken. <sighs> That's not what I was expecting you to come back with. I was expecting some kind of match, yeah. but <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> Can we have a chicken costume? <laughs> oh. Um, I was not expecting <laughs> Koopa to have a chicken costume. <laughs> he carries it with him at all times. <laughs> yes. He always has that thing on him. $14, 14 from Cabbage from Brian. From cabbage Brian. <laughs> dare you think that... Dare you think you can outreach me? <laughs> oh, outmatch me. Outmatch me. <laughs> oh. There is some friendly there is competition. Some, there is some friendly competition. Do you think the Smash Bros. is intense? Who can have yeah, most competition donation? and donation, which is even better. Uh, I mean, if we can hit that $600 with this competition going back <laughs> and forth. a little back and forth. This is going to be a third person going to show up and just, <laughs> I shall win. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is so, like, genuinely nice. Like, going to a good cause so please compete <laughs> yeah please compete because we enjoy this kind of competition it's so nice it's just oh it's so mm, it makes me happy you know just it, it really makes me there. happy also knowing that this is going to a good cause is just even better and just people are like being willing like yeah i'm willing to give up some of my money for a good cause it's yeah just, they, they've actually gave up a good portion of that's their money like so far more than 10 because <laughs> <'cause, 'cause, laughs> yeah, it was like 10 and then 11, 11 and then 12 and then just uh, numbers yeah but it's pretty pretty decent substantial bit and that's really cool yeah uh, but not only have they given up a good portion of their money but there's also those two really big $100 donations that mm -hmm. have skyrocketed us that what far oh who did wait someone did oh moose for you 
Oh, oh Moose my for goodness. You Moose has for actually you donated one hundred and one dollars. Oh, Moose for You was the one that got us uh, past five hundred dollars. Yeah, he is. Yeah, ago. he is the one who got us actually. So thank you so much, Moose for You, you uh, helping out. This. He's number one donator he by a dollar. By a dollar. <laughs> That's all that matters. He's there. We'll get that top donation spot. I mean, to stay if, here as as we can. I mean, if President Barack Obama. And Cabbage Brian keep going at it back and forth. They, they are going to be the top. <laughs> yeah, exactly. With their efforts combined, they might actually be the top. Ah. I don't think I don't think it's quite yet there. But what they do, I don't. I wonder if Food for You is gonna let that stand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so much, so much genuine goodness. It just puts a smile on my face. Yeah. Like I came here to play some Smash. Just like sit around. I woke up at like one. I was like, oh, I'm gonna be late. <laughs> I, I got here. And I was just... supposed to be here at like I was supposed to meet up with them at like I think like ten thirty, eleven o'clock. But I woke up at eleven, so I woke up a little bit later than what I was supposed to. But I got that little bit of extra rest, you know. You know, a little bit of extra rest. Get went to the tournament with a clean mindset, just exactly. ready to play. I'm like, I'm all well rested. I came in, I saw Wayward is playing, and I'm like, well, <laughs> <laughs> time to go into losers bracket. Time to go losers bracket, and like, um, it's just genuinely each match is fun, and like. I have people like, oh, hey, you're the same. Obama donated $15 to... Obama again, not Obama, just President uh, just Barack not, Obama. Not just Obama. Oh, oh love, love you, Vince. Vince. Love you, Vince. <laughs> oh, we're almost... We're almost... We're almost, almost, at 543 yeah, again. We, we just we have, set the goal for 600, we and have we've a, already met, like, the... 50% of added. Yeah, oh no, over in less than 15 minutes, we have had donated over $100 to this charity. So, thank you so much to oh, everybody. Wow, that is that that's really putting it into perspective. That now. is that's a <laughs> lot of money. That's more money than I've seen all year. Yeah, cuz well, <laughs> uh, cuz what did it start at whenever we we sat down? It was like 400 and what? It was like 400 and like 20 Four, something. Yeah, like 420. That. We've seen over $100. We've seen over $100, which is so much genuine goodness coming. I'm just Ah, love you, t love you guys, love you love, guys. We love you, and, and it's a good cause. And just we're all here, having some fun. And believe me, do and thank you not only for donating your money, but donating your time to come and like learn about this and hear about this and watch yeah. some genuinely impressive Smash gameplay. Like just watching these people, I'm like, these are really good. Yeah, I really like watching the really top players play Smash, but. In there's actually some really good Smash players here on oh, campus. Oh, genuinely, like. Even just like, especially if we watch like um, the competitive matches that we play against other schools, the team here is really, really good. Like just Alice the other day got a twelve stock on the enemy team. Just did, 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 one to the entire. Oh, what are you talking about? And um, what is it? To drink senior night. Oh, oh yeah, that was on Friday. Cabbage donated sixteen dollars. Oh my goodness. Sixteen dollars. I may not have disposable income. But I will out donate you. He Thank you so much. You. You're doing so much help, Cabbage Brian. Thank you. Um, you honestly, five hundred and sixty dollars. Someone's gonna see a chicken. <laughs> so, somebody is going to see a chicken very, very soon. We are only forty-one dollars away. Forty-one dollars. It's going to a great cause. Once again, don't like bankrupt yourself. That's not a good idea. Yeah, may maybe you shouldn't do don't that. Don't bankrupt yourself. But helping out with this genuinely great cause for helping out people and kids, and just, it's amazing. Oh, it's just really genuinely, ah, oh, smiles. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, the matches here, you know, the games. The energy here is just crazy, you yeah. know? It's yeah, I, ever since I uh, came in here, because we started setting up around like a, what was it? I think it was like 11.30, like I said, like after I woke up. I just woke up, got dressed, brushed my teeth, you know, everything like that. And uh, coming in here, setting up the tables, making sure that everything was set up correctly, the bracket was looking good, getting people checked in. The entire time, the atmosphere, the energy, everything was just amazing. I, I, I've never per personally participated in a tournament before. Uh, this is my first tournament, and it has been a blast so far. It has really been so much fun. And if I don't mind me asking, how did you hear about this? How did you guys get this idea to do a tournament for this guy? Uh, well, we, we noticed that there wasn't, like, that many tournaments going on at Shawnee. Uh, and if there was, then, like, they weren't – there weren't too many. There weren't uh, too many, just a few casual ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, most of the time they happen on Sunday, and I usually have things going on on Sunday, so we wanted to set up this one on Saturday. But uh, – we just kind of wanted to run more tournaments, uh, and I think 
it's like every couple of weeks that we were planning on having tournaments and stuff like that. Okay, that's nice. And just was there anything that specifically gave you guys the idea, like, oh, we could do games for, games for gimping or anything like that? Or uh, I believe that Travis came up to us and was like, hey, you, you guys could definitely do your first tournament. Uh, that that that's going to be public. It will be a charity tournament. We're like, we will absolutely do this for charity. Yeah, and it's amazing. And I think we might actually be getting a friendly oh, match, which means match. we get to do some commentary Let's for a gameplay. Go. That is going to be a little bit exciting. It's going to be Dane and <laughs> HR Rhyme, it looks like. Oh, no. Dane, the one who beat me in bracket. Oh, uh, <laughs> and me. And me. <laughs> He's like, I beat everybody in here. <laughs> you beat me in pools, but yeah. yeah. Currently yeah, undefeated, yeah. actually. Let's see if HR Rhyme could do it. Let's see it. Oh, to get him mirror match. Again in mirror. Immediately, we're oh, gonna, oh, 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 that, that's a good way to start. <laughs> oh, a nice forward smash again and special. We get two forward airs, forward air. And the nice thing about Ganondorf is he has so much damage, so high output to do some crazy things. Both of them, you're going to see high percents. You're going to see early KOs. You're going to see some crazy things. You will not see combos, though. Gan does no. not allow those. Oh, we got the so F smash as a punish. Pretty that Doria doing some amazing things. Oh. I don't know. I don't know if HR Prime's going to be letting Dane get away with this. Uh oh. Oh, oh, side, oh side B. Double side B. <laughs> Hitting the, got side. the side B. Got the get up attack. Oh. Hitting another side Punishing B. Punishing a side B with a side B. And he punishes another <laughs> side B with another side B. <laughs> <laughs> and just All these. Right. Once again, high DPS, HR Prime taunting Dane, oh, saying that I'm the better Ganondorf here. And Dane's taking none of that. Oh, Instantly. forward air. Powerful forward air, knocking right. Oh, oh going my for the goodness. spike, but I don't think that ended up happening. Oh, we got an up air on ledge. Oh, we got Hitting. the up B. Oh, that, that's the going to kill. That was will. very, very close, though. Oh, we got HR the Prime nair. getting back HR with a name. <laughs> oh, down to <laughs> oh. Down, down, down. Oh, Ooh. gets side B. Side B and the down smash. Oh, gets smash. hit by the forward smash. That's going to even it up in terms of percents, but not in stock. The oh! It's our game! It's prime an even game! Resetting the stocks down to one on one. Prime. Oh, up air. Hitting a we warlock punch. We might be able to get a good string. Oh, Ooh. hit the warlock hit. punch. He's off of the stage. If that is about prime 50%. Can capitalize off of this. And oh. Using a spot dodge to get out of the way. HR Prime gets the side B. Dan oh, and HR oh, Prime oh, both he has the down smash. Oh, Dorian comes out with it's a jab. It's going rack. to come down to. Oh, I thought, the, I thought the up tilt was going to hit. Forward, forward throw. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh. HR Prime's going to hit the down smash. Like pushing it back, trying to get the up tilt. Oh! Let's go! Let's go! go! Pop off. That is amazing! Coming from HR Prime, <laughs> getting some revenge for us! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you! Thank you, HR Prime! Oh, that was a, that was that, that was a really fun match. That was a, it's always a really good time whenever you have two Ganons going up against each other. Walking up there, huge swords. <laughs> I'm gonna deal 30% with a single attack. I'm going attack. to F smash. <laughs> uh, F smash or up smash? Up smash, side smash, or grab. Do a bunch of damage yeah. drop. Oh, and they're running it back. Running it back with Ballad. Oh, <laughs> that's a great way to start. That's what we like to see. Side B B side punished B by the side, side B. B. Doria! Oh, we got the F smash. H Prime is feeling primed up and ready. He gets a good F smash. Getting a really powerful F smash. Dane's not letting this get away. He's trying to hit those attacks to and succeeding very evidently. But H Prime's coming back immediately with the side smash. Oh, we got, we got the side B. HR Prime. Up bees and whips it. Oh, oh going for Dane. the kill here. Grabbing Ooh, and does not get hit by that forward smash. Oh, Ooh. that was so close to being a spike. Warlock punch, not gonna be able to connect. I think he's gonna. Oh, he's forward throws. I thought he was gonna back throw. We get the. We get the grab. Just <laughs> <laughs> keep pummeling. Pummel, pummel, pummel. Oh, oh, oh that's one stock taken away from saw the And we saw the taunt from from Dane. Really say, come on. Come, come on. on, bring it. Come on, show me that energy that you had from last game. Oh, that oh, was so close. Almost hitting that, but the air dodge coming out just in the nick of time. <laughs> Dane at oh. 150. Almost anything will kill here. So he really has Anything to be will kill. This is a like Ganondorf. This is Ganondorf. Anything will kill. Woo! Spot dodging the HR up Prime. Tilt. Oh, there oh. goes Dane. 
D Dane's eating at the same time. Wait. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You can see how the camera just is rolling. Oh, oh my goodness! We got the oh shield, guys! Oh, we, we got some taunts going on. We got the... Boom. Oh! Oh my goodness! Shield break getting some taunting in. It's always a good day whenever you see a shield break. Oh, we're getting some nares thrown out. We're seeing a lot of nares. <laughs> and Dane is going to hit the down air, doing a bunch of damage oh, and oh. spiking. Ooh, we, we're getting a lot of nares out here now. We're getting some nares, getting some good airs. Oh, and back, back air! Will that kill. will absolutely do it. Oh, Intra Prime's on this last stock, but so is Dane. Dane is going to be showing. Let's see, if we can <laughs> Let's see if we can see another shield break. <laughs> Powerful up air coming out from HR oh, Prime. Oh! He went for the spike. Oh! <laughs> Unfortunately, eight, eight. the way that timing works, it will end up killing you first, but still, that was amazing. Yes, that was that, nice. that's a really fun match to watch, especially since they're both just out here to have fun. Like we said, this is more so to have fun than it is for anything else. It is. It's just so not to have fun, but don't get me wrong. There are some very intense people like, oh, we're going to go in, we're going to win, and that's generally fun. But sometimes yeah. it's nice just it's really, Smash Bros. I, I really do like the competitive spirit, especially between like me and my friends, because like, where I signed up for the tournament, like, we're like... Yeah, I really want to beat you in this tournament. <laughs> yeah, I want, I want to face you, and I want to beat you, show you that I'm... And, like, and some fun little, like... Yeah, exactly. Fun little input. Oh, they're back, back into, into it. it. Oh, we see the down air already. And the Gandors going back and forth, just using their really big hitboxes that do a bunch of damage. Oh, we already got a stop taken away. First 20 seconds of the match. Oh, I think we got a dollar donation. I think we did from Obama gave us a dollar donation. These Gandors are intense. Oh, Obama says, unfortunately, I must accept defeat. <laughs> Do not read the rest. Uh, Yoshi. Oh, we got... We're oh, getting the side B chains. Oh, oh, my goodness. We got two side B chains. Oh, Side B see. again? Side B again? Are we going to see another side B? No, we're not. HR Prime can still bring this back. This is a Ganondorf ditto. Ganondorf has just really good damage and really good kill power. But what he side lacks is beat. frame. More like punch. Missing. <laughs> uh, yep, oh, okay. Pummel, 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 pummel. Grab him again. Grab him again. <laughs> no. Is HR Prime going to get another grab, another pummel? Oh, no, he's going to oh, get a that back kills. air. Dane, Dane just three-stocked him. Dane taking the four-stock just using his incredibly high damage. It's, ooh. Amazing. I don't know if you guys could hear that, but he said, stop eating and actually play. <laughs> Dane showing himself to be just... <laughs> We are, yeah, we are our attention was just brought to the $40. Uh, $40 away yeah. from reaching our goal. Our new goal. Our new goal. Cabbage Bright, Cabbage Bright with another dollar. dollar. No, dollar. We're <laughs> yeah, off of our goal. Oh, we get the BBF smash. HR hitting the amazing Doria. Uh, do we have a message from Cabbage Bright? He said, you are a respectable foe, Obama. Truly, the Battle of Legends does come to a bit, to a amazingly tragic but beautiful conclusion. Shakespeare can't write this, my friends. Oh, oh my <laughs> goodness! The reverse warlock And bite. Dane takes a bite! <laughs> Dane! <laughs> Dane's chewing right now, guys! He's gonna swallow the food! Dane is like, this is something for you to chew on! Take this warlock Punch! <laughs> Go oh, we got another F smash! HR Prime taking Prime, you away this. Dane stock. Boom! Oh! Oh! Oh, we got the down air. Down we, air. We're gonna get another down air, but it's going to hit the shield. I thought that side <laughs> special was going to grab him. Grab, we grab, are oh. only a minute and 20 seconds into this match, but it's it almost is already oh. almost at the very end of it all. Oh! Oh, oh my goodness! Give me the getting tech. The, getting the tech. Oh, he comes back, survives, almost gets he hit by the F smash. <laughs> oh! 
Pubble, 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 pubble. pubble, pubble. Alright, he threw out. Alright. Oh. He, he, he goes for the re grab. HR there, Prime is just gonna there, patiently there, wait, patiently gonna wait. Patience. He's, he walks up slowly oh. and forward smashes. Spot dodging to get out <laughs> of the way. Pummel, 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 right? Oh it's my goodness! The that charge is the for a second end of able that to game. Get, calling out the spot. Oh, oh my goodness! So much fun. I love seeing Ganondorf did us. Ganondorf is <laughs> big man who does lots of damage. Yeah, exactly. Doria. It's just, just a lot of F smashes and it F does, smashes. It does look like bracket will happen soon. Oh, so we're about to continue. We're about to continue the amazing brackets. We are um, about to watch these videos again. About to watch these videos again, so I cannot wait to talk to later. We will see you later. Every child deserves a chance to be themselves. But right now, in hospitals around the world, many kids are isolated, fighting some of the most difficult battles of their lives. What if we told you gamers have the power to help? We're Gamers Outreach, and we believe the world is better when kids can play. Our team is on a quest to help make play a part of care. With your support, we can restore a sense of joy and normalcy in the lives of families through video games. Learn more and get involved at GamersOutreach.org. This is a Gamers Outreach Cart, or Go-Kart for short. It's a portable video game kiosk built specifically for hospitals. Created and assembled by Gamers Outreach, each unit helps provide recreation to kids and young adults unable to leave their bedsides. The carts can be disinfected easily and have 360 degrees of movement, making them ideal for transport in hospitals. Go-Karts can accommodate a variety of gaming consoles. They also come with wired controllers, a gaming monitor, and are equipped with a lift mechanism that allows the height to be adjusted. Go-Karts provide a safe, flexible, and efficient way to ensure patients have access to entertainment during long-term hospitalization. To learn more about Project Go-Kart, visit GamersOutreach.org. Oh, well, welcome back. Welcome back. Yeah, my new name is Obama. And mine is Casting Badger. <laughs> yep. Clown Tims. Um, right. And after the M, just add a B. Huh? Um, Clown Tims, yeah, there, there you go. Thank you. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. So, um, who do you want to win this game set? Hmm. I'm not sure. Maybe Echo Force. All right. Hmm. <laughs> I think Echo Force is doing a really good job in this tournament here today. But back to bracket. Three, yeah. Two, one, go! We're away. Doing a good job of countering. <laughs> nice Rebel scoring. Power done. Oh god, Arsene real early. Might be another stop on real fast. The game is starting to even up. Mm. Joker's in full control with side and gun. Oh, almost that's deep right there. Nice snare. Joker is just blowing space really well. And Echo claims another stop. Joker is just so impressive with, with neutral B and grab. Yeah. And then Terry has um you know a turnaround system, which makes it even better for grass and stuff like that. Terry Terry is really good children for us. Mm -hmm. Especially the gold meter. Which I'm waiting to see. <laughs> He gets Arson. Really like cacked back almost. <laughs> and still on six times too. And Terry finally gets go. 
Oh, and we're almost to the donation mark too. Only uh, 49 more dollars. Nice back here. Could be a possible three stop. Terry's not out yet. But you might get a weird 3 0. Focus. Is Terry coming back? Yep. Nice oh. kill confirmed, Uppy. He's always good to see with the basics. Nice bread and butter. Mm -hmm. Nice up here. See that go meter ready. Ooh, crack shoot. Cover. Ooh, that forest smash is very nice mix up. Joker, I mean, Terry with the comeback. Yeah. If he gets his goal off, he might win the set. It's anybody's game. As long as Terry has really good DI, he'll definitely win. And that's oh, the game. Oh, got it. <laughs> Buster Wolf. That was a really good set. Really mm. good neutral from both players. Mm. Especially the Buster Wolf at the end. Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so how's your... Um, so how's your experience in this tournament, Clown Tims? It's been pretty good so far. Mm. Oh, we got a Min Min and a Terry. So, who's gonna win this one? I feel like Echo Force could bring it back. Mm -hmm. I feel like Midman has a really good match against Terry. Yeah, all uh, long range. Ooh, we have another donation. And hey, we reached our goal. Oh, we reached our goal. Hey, 602. Thank you, Inkling, for donating. We made our goal today. Um, hope we reach our next goal sometime next tournament too. Pretty good edge guarding right there for um, Echo Force. Really nice Min Min side smashes. Who do you think is going with this set? I feel like I feel like it's it's still too early to call, but I feel like Echo Force is doing really good. Yeah, Heavy Keys doing the um, long range stuff. Keep at bay. I think he'll do a good job. Triple jab on shield. But, wait. Gotta do just keep going in. Side smash will reach best. all the way across the stage. Ooh, and nice side smash gets it. Get the grab off. Charge it. So that's up right there. Ooh, and he gets that charge. That smash miss. Ooh, and he gets him. Can fleet make a comeback. Finman just keeps applying the pressure, keeping him at range. And Terry just can't get in. F smash. Oh, Chase him off stage in the air. Oh, it doesn't kill yet. Can Terry pull through? He's got go. Another Terry comeback? Oh, Ego Force sadly SDs. But Dude, it may not matter. Okay. Getting in. Terry make a comeback. Oh, you Perfect parried shield. it. Oh. I don't think he's okay after that one. 
Ooh, ooh, ooh. Terry ooh. makes a comeback. Terry taking it. Good game. That was a real nice game play from that Terry. And that was a really good aggro rushdown game from the mm -hmm. Terry. And Min Min almost had it that yeah. second game, but Terry just managed to get in. Mm -hmm. That was a really good game. Uh, and don't forget to donate, you know, helping the charity gamers for giving to help kids play video games in the hospital, you know. Um, and what player do you think uh, will get into grand finals? Like, what two players do you think? Um, I really think Atlas is going to make it all the way, and I also think um, Dane, too. Yeah, I think Top 8 is, is going to be littered with people from the Smash team and Really good players from the local scene. Hmm. Like in my opinion, I feel like I feel like um, it'll be major. It'll be major. Meteor, Atlas, and a few other people from the Smash team will do mm -hmm. really, really good in top eight. I also think Echo Force has a really good chance too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Um, we're gonna take a short intermission here. Um, go watch some videos about the hospital game we're giving, um, them getting cards and stuff like that. So, yeah. Every child deserves a chance to be themselves. But right now, in hospitals around the world, many kids are isolated, fighting some of the most difficult battles of their lives. What if we told you gamers have the power to help? We're Gamers Outreach, and we believe the world is better when kids can play. Our team is on a quest to help make play a part of care. With your support, we can restore a sense of joy and normalcy in the lives of families through video games. Learn more and get involved at GamersOutreach.org. This is a Gamers Outreach Cart, or Go-Kart for short. It's a portable video game kiosk built specifically for hospitals. Created and assembled by Gamers Outreach, each unit helps provide recreation to kids and young adults unable to leave their bedsides. The carts can be disinfected easily and have 360 degrees of movement, making them ideal for transport in hospitals. Go-Karts can accommodate a variety of gaming consoles, they also come with wired controllers, a gaming monitor, and are equipped with a lift mechanism that allows the height to be adjusted. Go-Karts provide a safe, flexible, and efficient way to ensure patients have access to entertainment during long-term hospitalization. To learn more about Project Go-Kart, visit GamersOutreach.org. Every child deserves a chance to be themselves. But right now, in hospitals around the world, many kids are isolated, fighting some of the most difficult battles of their lives. What if we told you gamers have the power to help? We're Gamers Outreach, and we believe the world is better when kids can play. 
our team is on a quest to help make play a part of care. With your support, we can restore a sense of joy and normalcy in the lives of families through video games. Learn more and get involved at gamersoutreach.org. This is a Gamers Outreach Cart, or Go-Kart for short. It's a portable video game kiosk built specifically for hospitals. Created and assembled by Gamers Outreach, each unit helps provide recreation to kids and young adults unable to leave their bedsides. The carts can be disinfected easily and have 360 degrees of movement, making them ideal for transport in hospitals. Go-Karts can accommodate a variety of gaming consoles, they also come with wired controllers, a gaming monitor, and are equipped with a lift mechanism that allows the height to be adjusted. Go-Karts provide a safe, flexible, and efficient way to ensure patients have access to entertainment during long-term hospitalization. To learn more about Project Go-Kart, visit GamersOutreach.org. All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, I'm Nettia16. Uh, we are about to head into winter semis. We're about, headed to, about to head into uh, top eight at Jab Lock here. Uh, we have reached our second donation goal, $600. Thank you all so, so much. Uh, every donation means the world. And uh, we're, uh, oh, my uh, second caster's here. So uh, I'm going to introduce my second uh, caster here today. Uh, Richard, come on and uh, come on, sit down. Take a, Take a seat there, Richard. <laughs> so um our next donation incentive is um 700 or 750 excuse me seven oh something just... so our next donation incentive is 750 dollars. so please keep those donations coming uh do we have a a goal if we hit 750 I'm being told from our operator that we will figure out what happens when we reach 750. So if you want to find out what happens when we reach 750, then get us to 750. All right, we're about to head into first side of winner's top eight, winner's semis. We have Dane versus Atlas, who are both undefeated right now and uh, coming into winter semis. So I think this is going to be a, a really good match. What do you What do you think? Do you think it's going to be a good match? Time will tell. Very true. Perfectly spoken. Richard has such a way with words, you know? All right. So uh, I think we're about ready to get started. Yes, we're waiting. We're waiting on our uh, second player to come join us here. So uh, if, you, if you're just joining us in the stream, thank you for tuning in. Uh, we're trying to reach $750. We're at just over 600 now. Um, we are donating to Gamers Outreach, which is a uh, a organization that sends video games and other electronic media and devices to children in hospitals and children in need and people who don't have access to video games normally. Uh, they have a program called Go Karts, Gamers Outreach Karts, 
which are portable video game consoles and monitors that they bring to hospitals for children to uh, children in those in hospitals to enjoy video games while they're at a hospital stay. So it's great. We're at the great cause. We're here playing Super Smash Bros. Ultimate here at Jablock, and we're we're having a great time. It's for a great cause. We're all having a, we're having a great time. We're about to go into top eight winners. Uh, Winner side, winner semis, and get used to my voice because I'm out of brackets, so I'm here for the rest of the show. <laughs> you fought valiantly. Thank you. I uh, I got two owed twice. I spectated your travel through this term. Yes, you did. And although your your mark here will not be forgotten. Very well spoken. Uh, so uh, have you? I haven't seen either of these two players play yet today. During pools or friendlies or any other matches. So, uh, what do you what do you know about these two players coming up? What do you what are you expecting from this match? One of the players is Atlas. Very true. Oh, and we're just going right into it. All right, Atlas. Uh, Atlas versus Dane. We got Pac-Man versus Incineroar here. All right, let's see what's going on. We're starting on PS2. I feel like PS2 is a favorite starter stage. I feel like all the matches that I've commentated today have started on PS2. All right. Yes, indeed. All right, the fire hydrant really. Uh, Fire Hydrant is really messing up Dane there. It was a good placement there in the center of the stage. Really... Oh, the Apple just caught Dane right out of that. It was a... It was a really good choice of Atlas to place the Fire Hydrant in the center of the stage because it made it really difficult for Dane to get in there and get his approaches going. So anyway, going right into this match here. Uh, Dane is starting off winning this neutral game very heavily. He has a lot of percent on... Uh, or Atlas is winning the neutral game, excuse me. Getting a lot of percent on Dane. Over 100% to be exact. Dane fires back with a nice back throw, getting Atlas off stage. Edgeguard situation. Atlas forward airs to get himself back on stage, and we are back into it. Going back into it. Yes, getting back into it. Oh, the strawberry! But there is super armor on Incineroar's up, uh, up B. Not quite deep enough to go in there, and, that and Atlas will take the first stock. Indeed. Are we, uh... Are we in... Only finals are 305, right? Or are these also 305? Indeed. Indeed. Uh, we have... Oh, uh, oh, well, Obama, for the, thank you very much for the $20. Very much appreciated. Yes, he is. Uh, a lot of us here today have donated for this great cause because we're all just having fun and we want us. Oh, the fire hydrant came back and hit Atlas. Is it for glory? This isn't. This isn't Smash Four. This isn't fat. It's also for charity. But you know, I, there's a lot riding on the line here. Indeed. Like, give it to gamers outreach. This is exactly what we're doing here. Exactly. And that's all that matters to us here. As long as. As long as those people in the hospitals get to have some fun, get to be entertained, that's all that, That's all we care about. All right, jumping right back into this match here. Uh, Dane is at a lot of percent right now. Uh, the thing about this match, Pac-Man's punish game and combos is something really interesting. Um, Pac-Man's fruit mix-ups are really interesting. All the uh, items he can get from his neutral B can really make up his... Uh, can really mix up his punish game and everything, make him really strong. Oh, the up tilt with the revenge. That'll take that stock. Dane is now up 2-0. He actually did a very smart move, getting the revenge off of the bell, which was a very smart move. Very good, really good option there. Uh, while Incineroar is at a lot of percent, Incineroar is extremely powerful, very strong. Is able to really tack on a lot of percent, especially with that revenge, which can stack. Yes, he does, very much so. However, he's... Uh, kind of gimped by his uh, his lackluster movement and his recovery, which takes some time to get takes some time to get used to. Nice key right there by Atlas, getting him close out that stock. We are one one. Atlas has a lot of percent. Like I said, his pun Pac-Man's punish game is really is uh, really impressive. So if he's able to um, if he can read predict uh, Dane's movements, I think he can tack on a lot of percent here. Yes. Yes, good up B though. Getting uh, Atlas off the stage. Let's see. Oh, good neutral air. 
re-grabbing the bell. The bell is really important because the bell stuns the opponent for a brief, for a brief moment, allowing for punishes like that. Percent was a little too weird. Had to just rely on the back air, but I think it worked. The up air is going to close out the stock. The first game goes to Indeed. That was a really uh, that was a that was a really close game. How many more matches are left in this set? I believe these are still best two out of three. I don't believe it's best three of five until finals. Very well. Then yes. Work. Yes. Oh, it's best of five. Never mind. I'm okay. We're in best of five. It is good that we are able to double check. Yes. This is why we shouldn't be running the tournament. This is why we have someone else running the tournament. Shout out to Travis, the person running this uh the stream over here. You can't you can't see him, but he's over here. Uh shout outs to him. He's running the tournament. Well not running the tournament, but he's running the stream so that everything comes through and uh is nice and good. And we're running it right back. Game two, no character switch on town and city. Uh I'm gonna let you take over for a minute. What do, what do you think about the stage with these two characters? Very true. You saw uh, a minute ago Atlas using the uh, the Galaga ship as part of his combos, was able to string it together with a lot of aerials and throws, was able to string together a really nice combo, get a lot of percent on Dane's Incineroar here. Dane, once again, using the revenge on the bell in order to get his revenge. Revenge is extremely powerful. One solid hit, even if Pac-Man's pretty low, 84%. But he does no longer have he no longer has revenge because the combo into the fire hydrant will take Incineroar's first stock. Indeed. Good forward air getting Pac-Man off stage. Oh my Yes, obviously. He clearly knows his character. Both of these players just know their character so well. They know everything they can and can't do. I I think this set's gonna be really, really good. That, if that first game was any indication. This is going to be a really good set, and Dane, right there, will take that stock with the back air. Ooh, Pac-Man's forward smash, just a little too strong, launches the Hydrant. They both went for the Hydrant. Oh, that was almost really smart. He tried to use the water from the Hydrant to hit the down smash. That would have been really great if he would have got that. I like the idea, but it just wasn't quite spaced properly. Oh, unfortunate self-destruct there. Indeed. Ooh, a good read, but unfortunately just didn't space it quite well enough. Thank you very much, Ethan, for the three dollars. Another game. Game takes the second game. That was a really decisive game from Dane there. Uh, two stocks. With the two stock victory over uh, Atlas. If I am correct. Thank you, Ethan, for the three dollar donation. Very much appreciated. Hey, Leviathan. Did, I sorry, I can't. Get Leviathan. Get, get Leviathan. Okay. Okay. <laughs> In due time. We're good. All right, and we are starting right here. We're going into game three. Will we see a 3-0 here, or will Atlas be able to figure out a strategy to bring it, making it 2-1? Let's find out. There we go again with the ship combos, cracking up lots of early percent. Very impressive. Oh, smart getting the revenge there from the ship. Yes, indeed. Good forward air right there. Pac-Man is now off stage. Oh! Yes, indeed. Really smart there, uh, being able to be being able to know where the trampoline is to be able to uh, fall back on it once he got spiked. Good meteor cancel. Well, he wasn't even a meteor cancel because he just fell on trampoline. So. Yes. Yes. Dane using the up angled side B 
to take that first stock, but the bell into the forward smash tries to DI it, but the percent was just too high and the pack in the move was just too powerful. He will take that stock. We are at even percents now. Once again, with the Galaxian combos, good down air. Indeed it is. Oh, the Fire Hydrant shield pokes. Indeed. And you see Atlas using these fruits so well to really uh, space out his opponent on ledge, making his opponent guess constantly which one he's going to do, what he's going to do. Oh my gosh, that was... That would have been... That would have been such uh, a good option there if the cherry would have come back and hit after the hydrant. That was so smart. Yes. That was also really smart though, using the water from the hydrant to come back, put him in a neutral situation to hit Dane with that back air. It's very close, Dane, and a very high percent. And as we mentioned earlier, Incineroar's recovery is not as good as Pac-Man, so one solid hit could knock Incineroar off stage just like this. Let's see if he's able to make recovery. He gets back on ledge again! Was so smart with the revenge on the bells there. Indeed. I think he tried to go for a clip with the Hydrant off stage. Good side B right there. Indeed, I always forget what that move's called. <laughs> I only played through Pokemon Sun and Moon one time. Yes. Zero percent, we have a dead even game. Let's see if that's able to happen. Ooh, an early revenge. It's gonna go ahead and blow it. 58% in one hit. That revenge is extremely powerful. Oh, whoa, all right, we got a little con Ooh. He does indeed want to see game four. He's not letting up. He's still got lots of fight in him. He's not letting Dane take this game so easily. Down smashing the Hydrant. Tries to clip him with the Hydrant. Good Darkest Lariat off stage. It's a very classic move. I think everybody who plays Incineroar does that. The Revenge off stage is going to take it. The back air. That's a 3-0 from Dane. Dane takes the set. Great, great stuff to both players. We just heard in the other room the... Uh, the audience watching in the other room just went ballistic. I believe that my as time is, here is as your time done? Oh. oh, no problem. Thank you for joining me on commentary, Richard. Everyone, say bye to Richard. He's gonna head out. Leaving this world isn't as scary as it sounds. <laughs> Alright, we're going to learn more about gamers outreach and the go-karts that they provide. We're going to take a small break, or a small intermission, I guess. And we'll be right back here for the next... Winter s we're, we're, I think we're still Winter Semis. The next match of Winter Semis. Every child deserves a chance to be themselves. But right now, in hospitals around the world, many kids are isolated, fighting some of the most difficult battles of their lives. What if we told you gamers have the power to help? We're Gamers Outreach, and we believe the world is better when kids can play. Our team is on a quest to help make play a part of care. With your support, we can restore a sense of joy and normalcy in the lives of families through video games. Learn more and get involved at GamersOutreach.org. This is a Gamer's Outreach Cart, or Go-Kart for short. It's a portable video game kiosk built specifically for hospitals. Created and assembled by Gamer's Outreach, each unit helps provide recreation to kids and young adults unable to leave their bedsides. The carts can be disinfected easily and have 360 degrees of movement, making them ideal for transport in hospitals. Go-Karts can accommodate a variety of gaming consoles, they also come with wired controllers, a gaming monitor, and are equipped with a lift mechanism that allows the height to be adjusted. Go-Karts provide a safe, flexible, and efficient way to ensure patients have access to entertainment during long-term hospitalization. To learn more about Project Go-Kart, visit GamersOutreach.org.
Welcome back, everybody, to Jab Lot, brought to you by the Association of Shawnee State Esports Club and Gamers for Giving. Uh, we have been putting on a banger of a tournament for you, I think, personally. I am Coach Dane. Um, you just saw me win, <laughs> not to brag. Uh, but I am joined here, more importantly, by the legend, Ruby Leviathan. Hello. Lily. How's the tournament been for you so far? Uh, Noise. Noise. Good, nice. good. Uh, we watched your Steve play against Sonic on stream. Nobody likes playing Sonic, you know that's no fun. But um, you almost did it. You you almost did it. it was yeah, if fun. I got if I got full diamonds, yeah, I would have won. Yeah, yeah, those diamonds, they're elusive, aren't they? Well, we got a match on the way for you. Um, we all have let's see, Flake and Waywardness in Winter Semis. The other side of Winter Semis. This is going to be a three out of five. Um, winner goes on to face me in Winner's Finals. Ruby, who do you got? What? Who do you got? Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. As far as I'm concerned, that makes me the people's champion. So I think they're getting into picks and bans, maybe waiting on us, and then we're going to go ahead and hop in. This is going to be Terry versus Zelda. You got any insight into those? Mm. Mm. Is it, they're tough, aren't they? Two, two blonde people mm. with magic, presumably. Mm. Fireballs. Mm. Fire. A lot of fire. You're going to see a lot of fire. You're going to see Zelda trying to keep Terry out and Terry trying to get in. That'll be the story of this match. Can Terry get in on Zelda? Go. We're getting into it. Game one. Flake on Terry. Waywardness on Zelda. Uh, I may call them Blake and Ben, respectively. Uh, that's out of habit. I apologize to the folks at home. Speaking of the folks at home, we have raised $625 for this tournament. That is incredible. I didn't even, when we had 500, I thought there's no way we're getting 500. That we're, we're shooting for the stars. But by God, we made it. By God, we did it. And then passed it. And then on to 6.5. And then we had to see a chicken. But now we got Levi, so it was all worth it. Okay, so we see Zelda stuffing out Terry with everything she's got in her kit. Can Terry make it back to stage? No, he doesn't have to recover. First stock goes to Wave this. Radical. Says Terry as he shoots the line. Look at this. Terry can't, can't, Terry can't break. There he goes. Quick kicks. Combo. Trying to get some percentage back. That's gonna be that's gonna be an important move for Ben here. He doesn't want to use it. He wants to make sure he's using it at just the right time. To keep carry off. That move has on frame four, up to frame four, that move has vulnerability, which means Zelda cannot be hit. So if she presses that button. It, you would think, you would think, but if um, Flake sees it coming, he baits it out, as in like he, he jumps up close and then he backs up, and Ben presses the panic button. She's stuck there just for a little bit, just long enough for Blake to get a pretty serious punch. And that's all Terry needs. All Terry needs is a jab. He can do some serious damage. See him trying to land a shot. Right now it's not going so well for Blake. He's up. He's on his last stock, mid percent. Ben can absolutely kill him if, if, if he gets him off the stage one more time. Just keep the ledge but actually on stage. A solid three stock to start. Yes. Yeah. What do you think about that? Good match. Good match. <laughs> Good match. Good soup. <laughs> Good soup. We got a donation right there. We got a new donation from Colleen Atkins for $20. Thank you so much, Colleen. It's going to a great cause. Yes. Game two, what do you think? What do you think uh, Flake needs to do to to get past the wall that Ben has created? Jump over the wall. <laughs> you know, you might not be wrong there. Uh, when Ben throws out that giant knight right here, you're going to see it right there. There's the giant knight. Uh, Flake needs to figure out a way around that. Um, and one of the only ways around that is to jump or jump over. Um, however, uh, then you have to start playing mind games because Ben can absolutely react or, or read the fact that uh, Blake is coming over the top and he can throw out uh, a big old fireball to give 
Terry a lot of problems. So it looks like Roncal is here for game time. Seems to be working out a little bit better. Uh, Blink hasn't lost, hasn't been edge guarded to death quite yet. Uh, I think it already happened in game one. He's got the go. Uh, he's ready to go. Oh, he didn't. He didn't get the go. That wasn't the go one. Okay, that was the okay but I think Ben here guys is in there, um, so he did want to kill. For the first time in this set, Flake is up. Back on this, it's scary. So there's that fire. Yes, damage. This go. All this just extra credit. Yeah, so uh, his special attacks, he's got that little fireball, he's got the, uh, the, the flying punch thing that he does where he turns blue for a little bit. Um, the, heat, the go meter turns those into like super sand. It comes on um, once he's uh, 100%. So once Terry's at 100%, he gets go and he starts doing something. I want to kill Terry as fast as possible. So it's basically like rage? Yeah, yeah, but like super sane. Because he's still got regular rage too. So he can kill very early. Then cleaned it up. Oh, catches him out of the side. Of the and the oven is over. Now he's low. Now he's low. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to recover against all that. But ben, ben doesn't have a lot left on this on this other stuff. He's gotta get some extra credit about Ken. Takes this one, 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 one. Nice see. Oh. Touch. Blake's back in on the stage, the hardest place to get against Zelda. Oh, see he showed it. Now he gets his big punish. Oh, the FBI is out of town. Oh, I see. I see that's one of the moves that becomes super simple. Oh, no. Oh, that was a great way to dodge. Terry. Terry. That was much closer, though, wasn't it? Yeah. That was much closer. He started using his, um, his, uh, his, his, your advice. He jumped over the wall, right? He started doing that, uh, and, and kept that one much more respectable. Even though his recoveries were, like, really good. He was dodging everything Ben had to throw at him. But Ben's edge guarding is, was, like, even better. Because yeah. when you thought he was out, when his bag of tricks was empty, he reached deep in his pocket, and he had more. Wow. That must be a really big pocket. It's a it's a massive pocket. Let me tell you from wow. first-hand experience. I don't know if the pocket has an end. So if you just jump into it, you're just... I think, yeah, I think entire civilizations have, have risen and fallen yeah. inside of these pockets. So if you, like, reach your hand into there, you, you could just... just do well, I mean, if you like, if you if you if you don't have your balance right, like if you just like stub your hand all fast, like you might fall in, and you'll never come out. What if you grab onto it like a board? I mean, if you were if you were dexterous enough, you know, strong enough, I suppose you could save yourself. But then Ben will probably just hit you and you fall in. So Terry, okay, so uh, back in this match, back on Callus, uh, he felt good about that one. Uh, he's got his go meter Terry's all ready. That um, that could have been the kill, to be honest. Yeah, it could have been. Go meter, but, uh, just a little bit. Right around. The go meter is like super overpowered if you know how to use Terry. Yes, for sure. It is. It it is his character maker. I would argue that if Terry did not have the go meter, he would not be nearly as good as he did. And no one would use him at like. Oh, I'm sure that you, know, you got you got people playing. Uh, Useless characters. You got little Mac Mains out there. You have characters. I mean, but um, they they wouldn't they wouldn't be getting any results. That's there would be no results. That's that's for sure. Terry's just got to get all that back out. Terry, this is this. Yes. Okay, well, there's a kill percentage. Yes. Terry finds it first. Point goes to blonde person in the hat. Terry's got the go meter. Terry's got it. He's so that's his, oh, that's that's, his, that's, that's his a super combo. Yeah, that's his, that's his blowing punch. See that move right there? That was the super super. Oh, that could have been hit if he was ready for it. Yeah. Catches it. Dead. Oh. 
Gotta clean up this a little bit. Probably some nerves coming in. Oh, up on stage. Oh, yeah. I did. Y'all like me right now. Oh, you're I'm nervous? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's nervous on camera. I don't even know how many viewers we have, but it's a lot, I'm sure. 645 viewers. Dollars, at least. That's a lot of dollars. That viewers. Yeah. Yeah? No. If every person stood for one dollar, we would have 645 people. I hope not. You just gave me stage fright at that. I thought it was going to stick around for the back piece. Oh, it's just a Let alone play. I'll have to keep that in my mind while I play. Every time I do something bad, I don't want to call that 645 people to make fun of me. Oh my god. Oh, catches him. You cannot escape Ben's ledge trap. That's a 30. 3 0 for Waywardness, who moves on to winner's finals. I believe in you. Oh man, I don't know. It's hard. That's a hard one for me. I, I beat Mark, who's who's demon number one. So now I got to go against demon. I believe in you. Thank you. I appreciate it very, very much. Okay, so what is this tournament for, Liam? Uh, Levi. You just call me Le <laughs> Levi. Liam. <laughs> Levi. Ruby Leviathan. Sorry, it's a uh, it's an L name, and I got a lot of Liams on the mind. Oh. Uh. Well, it's to help don't. Uh, it's to help uh, raise money for like uh, this gaming uh, console thing for like hospitals mm -hmm. for uh, people who can't get out of their beds. Mm -hmm. That's and, right. It's a it's a gaming console on wheels. And also, it's super easy to clean, mm -hmm. super easy to move. It's a pretty sweet piece of technology that I wish I yeah. had when I was when I was younger. That that yeah. is awesome. Let's show an ad for it. Every child deserves a chance to be themselves. But right now, in hospitals around the world, many kids are isolated, fighting some of the most difficult battles of their lives. What if we told you gamers have the power to help? We're Gamers Outreach, and we believe the world is better when kids can play. Our team is on a quest to help make play a part of care. With your support, we can restore a sense of joy and normalcy in the lives of families through video games. Learn more and get involved at gamersoutreach.org. This is a Gamer's Outreach Cart, or Go-Kart for short. It's a portable video game kiosk built specifically for hospitals. Created and assembled by Gamer's Outreach, each unit helps provide recreation to kids and young adults unable to leave their bedsides. The carts can be disinfected easily and have 360 degrees of movement, making them ideal for transport in hospitals. Go-Karts can accommodate a variety of gaming consoles, they also come with wired controllers, a gaming monitor, and are equipped with a lift mechanism that allows the height to be adjusted. Go-Karts provide a safe, flexible, and efficient way to ensure patients have access to entertainment during long-term hospitalization. To learn more about Project Go-Kart, visit GamersOutreach.org. And we're back. Hello. I got my main man, Ruby Leviathan. On the mic with me. This is good. This we're going into losers side. Losers top. Yeah. We're going into losers semis top top eight here at Jablock, raising money for gamers outreach for charity, a great cause. Uh, the last match I just saw it extremely hype, really close. Uh, has a lot of fun to watch. I commentated my man Ruby Leviathan's match earlier, the Steve versus Sonic, one of my favorite sets I've seen all day. So much fun to watch. It was ridiculous. Thanks. All right, so I got. We're gonna. We're waiting for our uh, next two players to come in. Who do we got uh, on top eight? We're going into losers. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna. We're just gonna. So we're gonna find out who's coming into losers. Let me take a swig. Okay. So we are here. All right, let's see what we got going on. We got uh, bird. Uh, all right, let's see. Uh, Man, we're seeing all these scores. Waywardness versus Bird was two one. Look at all these scores. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. Bird has won three zero over Flake. Waywardness is undefeated. Uh, that's a, that's extremely impressive because there's a lot of really really great players here today. Yeah. Uh, 
All right. So we're all right, so we're about to... Uh... Dane won all of his matches. Yes. I think if uh, we see Dane versus Waywardness later, I think maybe we come into Winners or Grands, that would be a really, really good set to watch. I'm excited to see what happens there. Badger won 2-0 over Owo Obama. All right. Very good. Uh, I played... Uh... I played uh, Owo Obama earlier. He was a very strong player. It's unfortunate to see him go out. Uh, uh, how do you uh, think yeah. about these scores? Um, you know, I mean, y'all are a pretty uh, tight knit group. I think I'm kind of the out I'm kind of the outsider part of this group. I'm not in this program at at the school, but uh, you know, I mean, it's nice to see everyone turn up and uh, you know, really uh, really put their all into this tournament because even though it is for exclusively for charity and we're just doing it to raise money, you know, it's really awesome to see people trying their best and really putting on a good show for us in the audience. Yeah, so and also having fun themselves. Yes, exactly. Yes. There's been a lot of really, really intense sets yeah. uh, so far. I'm really excited to see that. La I just saw I was in the audience for that last match, and it was really, really intense. I'm really excited to see where this next set's going to take yeah. us once they finish up their uh, their losers in the other room there. What's been uh, What's been your favorite set you've watched so far today? Uh, prob Maybe the last one. The Terry versus Zelda? That was a really good... Yeah, it was, it was super intense. It was really, really close, wasn't it? I was yeah. telling... Uh, I was, t I was telling it Koopa earlier. Oh, sorry, you want to say something? Uh, no, I'm fine. <laughs> All right, I was telling uh, I was telling Koopa earlier that um, Ultimate is so balanced and has so many characters. It's really awesome to see so many different characters and so many styles of play here at this tournament. You're really like if we were this was a different Smash game, you might not see this, but because it's Ultimate, we're we're it's... truly getting to see the scope of this game, which is really really incredible. Uh, there, uh. Like, playing Smash Bros is like cooking a uh, chicken. There's infinite ways to play Smash Bros, and there's infinite ways to cook a chicken. Very true, very true. All right, so once again, we are here. If you're just tuning in, uh, you can see our names. I'm Nedia16. I'm uh, Ruby Leviathan. We're here uh, We're here casting for Top 8 at Jablog, uh, hosted by the uh, SS... SSU Esports Committee. We are raising money for Gamers Outreach and their Go Kart program, uh, sending uh, portable video games to uh, children and individuals in hospitals who do not have access to video games. That's a wonderful cause. Please keep the donations coming. We are oh, we are almost six hundred and fifty dollars of a seven hundred and fifty goal. If you want to find out what happens at seven fifty, they better keep donating. What will happen? I actually don't even know. Sure, we're gonna go and take a small break. And we'll be coming right back into the next set. Every child deserves a chance to be themselves. But right now, in hospitals around the world, many kids are isolated, fighting some of the most difficult battles of their lives. What if we told you gamers have the power to help? We're Gamers Outreach, and we believe the world is better when kids can play. Our team is on a quest to help make play a part of care. With your support, we can restore a sense of joy and normalcy in the lives of families through video games. Learn more and get involved at GamersOutreach.org. This is a Gamers Outreach Cart, or Go-Kart for short. It's a portable video game kiosk built specifically for hospitals. Created and assembled by Gamers Outreach, each unit helps provide recreation to kids and young adults unable to leave their bedsides. The carts can be disinfected easily and have 360 degrees of movement, making them ideal for transport in hospitals. Go-karts can accommodate a variety of gaming consoles. They also come with wired controllers, a gaming monitor, and are equipped with a lift mechanism that allows the height to be adjusted. Go-karts provide a safe, flexible, and efficient way to ensure patients have access to entertainment during long-term hospitalization. To learn more about Project Go-Kart, visit GamersOutreach.org.
thanks for all the donations. Uh, sorry for the long intermission. Uh, and seriously, thank you all for all, all the so, donations. So going to such a great cause. Uh, we're back. Nadia and Ruby Leviathan back on the mic. We're about to head into loser side. Uh, losers round five. Uh, who we got on deck to play here? Echo Force and Major Meteor heading into Losers Round 5. Alright, so uh, what, are you, what are you expecting from this match? What are you expecting mm. from the red side? Somebody is gonna get destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, someone is gonna get destroyed. Yeah, someone's, someone's gonna get destroyed. We have a hard call out here. Alright. Alright. I don't know if someone's gonna get destroyed. I think this I think this is gonna be a good set. I think we're just gonna be a lot closer than we think it is. Um I haven't seen either of these two players play yet today, so I'm excited to see how their play styles, what characters they pick, and really how they how they play each other. So Yeah. Alright. We're about ready to go and get started. I think we're just about ready to uh ready to start up. We have an active audience in the room now. Yeah. Shout outs to the audience in the room. This is the this is I think like All the right. This is like the third set today we've had an audience in here. I want to see. I want if something hype happens. I want to see a pop off. Let's go. All right, we got. We're gonna have. We got. Let's go. All right. Do you mean four? We probably can't be loud. We have mics next to our mouth. We don't want the. <laughs> We don't want the we don't want the audience to go deaf on stream. That is true. <laughs> if I could scream, I would. To be yeah. honest. All right. Now we're gonna head into uh, here at Jab Lock Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Turn Tournament, sponsored by uh, the SSU Esports League. Uh, going to gamers outreach for a good cause, providing the go kart thing. The go kart program providing portable video games to. Uh, hospitals for children and individuals who do not have access to them. It's for a great po for a great cause. All the no all the donations have been uh, super super appreciated. But uh, keep them coming if you can. If you can donate, just your support, being here, watching the stream, enjoying the content. That's all we ask for. But if you can donate, any amount is helpful. So please keep the donations coming if you're able. We're about ready to get started here in losers bracket. Um, it says, oh, that's the top donation. Yeah. If that was the last donation, we would be at 7.45. I think we are at 7.45. No, we're at 6.45. 6.45, you're right. I, yeah, the, someone donated $100 earlier. That was crazy. Yeah. Three people. Huh. We're at 6.45 right now. Our goal is 7.50. Something cool is going to happen at 7.50, so. What actually is going to happen at 7.50? <laughs> oh. <laughs> we don't know what's gonna happen at 750. Uh. <laughs> what? What expedition? Expedition? I actually thought of something that could happen at 750. Oh my god! I actually oh, just thought. Okay. You want to get to 750 because I've I was just told what they're gonna try to do. It sounds crazy. All right. I actually just thought of something. It was 750. What? Uh, okay. like every single person goes against each other, like a free for all. So long. Anyway, we're going right into it. Joker Losers. versus Banjo Kazooie. Joker versus Banjo. Let's get the start of PS2. Every single matchup commentated has started on PS2. And we're gonna start right into it. We're on the Pokemon. We're on one of the Pokemon map. Yes, Pokemon Stadium is a major player. Banjo and Kazooie.
fast paced damage versus slow damage over time at 100%. However, this might help power for Benjamin. It's definitely very important. It has multiple jumps, so it's going to go something like 50. So I think it could be very interesting. Let's see. It already does seem to be interesting. Yes, 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 yes. Echo Force made a good control of the stage. All Banjo, all Banjo has to do is to get like one good smash hit. Take the stock. That was a really that was that was a really close match. Yeah, it was a really close match. Uh, you're seeing truly the dynamic between the two characters. You know, like yeah. just what each player is able. To like do slow, character. but over time, and yes. big attack yes. when like suit now, when a uh, high percentage. Like I mentioned, uh, I I would like to see uh, Major Meteor wait out Arson's uh, time. The longer you're on stage with Arson and trying to fight him, you're taking more damage. And the more damage you have against Arson, the, the faster he can take that stock from you. So it would be best if he could wait it out. We're going right into it. Joker versus K. Rule. Now, as a K. Rule main myself, I, fight, I know this match is quite close. Very good advice. Yes. Alright, so one thing I do know about this match is that uh, most most characters cannot challenge K. Rule up beating him. So Joker is actually a nice propeller. However, Joker is one of the and challenge him up being a projectile and hit stone. So if he's able to get the angle just right on it, because he's going for a big bear, uh, he can actually stop Kale's recovery. And Kale's recovery used to be a lot better than the other one, but um, Kale's recovery is very good for being a heavy character. What was Kale's recovery? It was the same propeller, it just went a lot further. Like Arson is very powerful. One solid hit should take the stock. Four 
tilt. But oh, oh, the down throw oh, the fourth hole doesn't hit Just Do you think we're gonna see a, a character switch? We already saw Maybe. one. We saw a uh, major meteor switch from Banjo to uh, K. Rule there. So do you think we're gonna see a uh, a character switch? Probably. You think so? Yeah. I think the Banjo map is a lot closer than the K. Rule map. Yeah, it was a lot closer. There is not a character switch. All right, so it's going, to, going to final destination now. I don't know how much I agree with this because here it does work the platforms a lot. Uh,
Wonderful set to both players. Very one. intense. Very intense indeed. That was a that was a great set to watch. I'm always a fan of K roll gameplay, obviously. You know. Uh, because you're a K roll man. Yes, indeed. I think I played. All right, I think you gotta play a set. So who wants to? All right. It was a pleasure commentating with you, Ruby. We are about to head. All right, who do we got jumping in? Casting Badger, my man. Hello, everybody. I am back. I'm not Ruby Leviathan. I'm Casting Badger. I was there earlier. Yes, indeed. <laughs> the one, the only Badger. How you doing, man? Good, how are you, man? Okay. I'm doing pretty good. I uh, unfortunately did lose to Desmond a little earlier, so wasn't able to play against that major, but Desmond really showing that he's a great player, yeah. taking those stocks cleanly. Oh, Joker's so good, man. I mean, he's so good at fly I, I just looked at a tier list the other day, actually, and Joker's, like, third from the top, I think. Yeah, he's, like, I know he's, like, top, like, ten, I think. Yeah. I don't know where at all, like, because, like, I hear, like, Paltana's really good. I know I know Pyro Mythra's, like, oh, they're in I contention for the best. The tier list I saw, I think Pyro Mythra was one slot under Joker, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess it really depends a lot of, like, oh, what do you think? A lot of who plays the characters. Byleth is very good, but that's because Impaleo plays him. And there's a lot of fun dynamics yeah. with that. Any character could be good if the right player plays that's why I like. That's why I like Ultimate a lot, because there's just a lot of good characters yes, exactly. in general. There's just like, oh, this character's good, this character's good, this character's good. I play Samus. Samus is really good. Yes. You play K. Rool. K. Rool is not doesn't seem like, oh, K. Rool is like fourth from the bottom, but you know, a good, but you can, a, good, a good K. Rool player can really turn it up in bracket. Oh, yeah. Especially I obviously for, didn't turn it up in bracket, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, but still, it's just like, he has like the hard-hitting moves, he yes. has those pummels, he has those grounds, so I, we can just do everything where he puts you in the ground. Yes. I forget what the name is, but they, those exist. Berries. Berries. Berries, yeah. Sorry, I just completely lost that one. It does look like the ma next match is going to be coming up, which looks to be one senior Dez versus one senior Atlas, which will be a very, very fun match to watch. I am very excited to see this uh, one. We're still in losers, right? Yeah. Yes, All we right, are. We're still in losers. We're about to head. I think we're in... Is this finals or is this semifinals? I think this is losers finals. Oh, losers this semis. Losers okay. semifinals. All right. This is going to be... I, I'm excited for this match. I uh, the last match was very well done. That I think very we claim, should, but yeah. I think this match is going to be a bit closer into yes. the into the despair. Uh, Al, I commentated the uh, Incineroar versus Pac-Man match earlier, and that was Pac-Man. That was amazing. That was a great just set. great set. Um, Dean really showing that he's just a, Dane really showing that he's a really good player. He's yes. really comfortable in his character, and Atlas. Got knocked down in bracket, but Atlas. I don't think Atlas is gonna take that lying down. I think he's gonna want to yes. come back and I, face him again in the finals. I think both of these players just want to get to, just want that next shot to get into the next game. They're, mm -hmm. gonna, play, they're both gonna play so hard to get into the next game. It's gonna be want to keep it genuinely going. just an interesting, intense yes. match between two really, very good players. I'm really excited to see this match. All right. All right. It does look like we're about to get started, though. So right. I think we got the thumbs up. So I think we're about to head right into it. Mm -hmm. Which will be very exciting yes. indeed. Loser semifinals. And, and we we're right into it. And we are off to the races. I'm a big fan of the red Joker skin. This is Joker skin. I myself. Nice bullet starting right off, getting that 1%. First blood, sending a message saying, yeah, I'm not one using this, but... Luckily, you'll notice the Atlas grabbing the Galaga, using that to just try and get a long-standing combo, hit that, hit Joker up to high percents, make sure that he can get some early going stuff going. Yes, he was using that earlier, and then he said against Dane, and it, it works. He that a lot. It's just a very solid, well, good pack right now. There's no pressure thing, but... Immediately, he uh, does showing that he's not one to be Echo for showing he's not one to be trifle with. Coming back immediately with some powerful guns. Good parry on that gun, able to break out of that chain because if he would have gotten hit by too many of those bullets, really put him in the Oh, I think he's just absolutely going out with the mm -hmm. Too many. Yeah. So, Bell, can he get the conversion? He will oh, get the conversion. That is a that solid forward good. smash. Uh, However, Arsene is still up, and Alice has, has got to keep that. But the as long right as he can keep the it. right now. Back on stage, using that incredible amount of pressure, but all that shipping on uh, that Atlas did off stage is immediately putting uh, Echo Force out of his arsen. Joker does not have it, does not have that kind of killing power anymore. Yes, that was really smart by Atlas to keep the fruit edge guard going to keep the yellow arsen on the mm -hmm. Stall for time, do some damage, all this stuff. Joker's recovery, I think, is going to be, or 
Joker is going to make Pac Man recover. Interesting. Especially since, like, if you go for a lateral, uh, the jump recovery, he, Joker can just shoot down at you and do so much damage up to you when you want to go for your up special. Smart choice right there. He's using the down. He's more for fire archer. He can get to Arson. Arson is back out. Let's see. Alice hit him. Alice is probably going to be looking for some sort of setup, keeping, but unfortunately, looks like that. Of course, he's going to be able to re establish neutral. Well, not quite yet, actually. I really like the way Atlas was playing patient. It was a good apple right there, taking that stock. So smart. Very good. Using that hydrant to just get, get space and afford it, and also just be an object to be thrown at with such power. I really like the way uh, when Pickle Force had Arsene earlier. I really like the way Atlas was playing patient, throwing out arrows, stalling for time. Of course, and right now we're going into the more of a neutral play, and nice Echo Force not letting his Arsene go to waste, using that extra pill power to kill Pac-Man from middle of the stage with his back here. Very powerful, very good. That, the Fire Hydrant is primed, about to break at any moment. When anyone hits it, will be the Joker. Joker can do a lot of damage when he gets up close. Yeah, and if and if Atlas doesn't respect that, he's just going to be taking huge amounts of percent yes. and going for easy kills. Joker has Joker has a neutral gun, but it's not as long range. The fire hydrant will eat it up. Yes. Which Atlas is abusing very well, and he is going to be using that wave to use that develop for that stun. Amazing play, hitting with the apple. But that apple gave him arson. This could really shake things up. Upbeat, Joker it, missing the backer, unfortunately. Good for till getting, getting Joker off stage. Now we're back in neutral. The it looks like Echo. The backer will take that stock. Atlas showing that he really? is amazing and he's not going to be going down easy anytime. Yes, good, very good play by Atlas there. Unfortunately, unfortunately for the Joker player, Pac-Man is only at 38%, so that damage is not going to be quite enough. He's yes. going to have to be hitting him harder gonna hit in order to get that stock off. Fire Hydrant's work, just keeping Echo Force at bay. Say, going back, you see how he throws one in the middle of the stage and then goes to the other side and says, yeah, you're going to have to come to me if you want to fight. Mm -hmm. Getting time to prep that fruit and then just choose what he needs, what options he wants at the moment. Forcing, forcing Echo Force into a very uncomfortable situation where he can't really have safe approach options. Shield pressure, that was really smart by Atlas there. He put a lot of pressure on Echo Force's shield and he forced Echo, Echo Force to make an option that he touched. Conditioning, conditioning, conditioning. It's the name of the game, my friend. At, ooh, immediately going off stage, hitting the powerful back air, just throw right into the stage. We have an even game. That was really, really good. The game is still afoot. It's not over yet. It's still winnable for either player. Good fire This is where Joker shines right here. He's up close. He's got the grabs. He start getting conversions. Force is really smart. I mentioned this in the last thing. I thought it was really smart to go to the I would have, I do, I would wish to see, see more of his down special because it feels like that Pac-Man just throwing up projectiles at him yes. and just getting away with it. Uh, you saw Dane in his set using uh, Revenge as a Cinnamon. Mm -hmm. It's for the exact same reason. He was getting all the forcing Alice in the situations where you can't just freely throw fruit at him. Because approaching Alice in the situation is too difficult. As you see, like, even then, he's gonna grab you, he's gonna hit you. Alice knows how he's doing it. You can't comfortably approach him. He knows your options and he knows how to abuse them. Yes. Alice is so smart about doing exactly what he grabs. Pac-Man's grab is really mm -hmm. really smart. Especially if Joker has Arsene. If Pac-Man misses a grab, Joker can just run up and forward smash him. And you also see a lot of the time is Alice is going to wait for the fire hydrant to shoot out its waters to push you closer to his grab. So that way he can, because his grab lasts out for a long time, letting him get that options for like, hey, if you're near me, I'm gonna get the grab on you. Yes. Very much. We have ourselves a very close game. Though. Close game with high intensity. Either of these players can really take it. It's gonna depend on who gets better options first. Joker no longer has our send. That does not mean he's out for the count though. Joker's gonna tech chase. Hitting the back. You're hitting the back here. Alice is gonna pick a fruit. Right, go back to station that special. I think he read the jump on the corner. There. Right there. there we go again. Missing that grab, but. Joker's trying to hit. Uh, Joker's trying to hit that side special. 
Fire oh, Hydro will unfortunately get that, but it, it does look like that. He did unfortunately jump into it. Yes. I was not expecting I that think, to be the kill option. I think he that, wanted to go element. underneath it, probably, and get back on the platform, and then go from there, but unfortunately... I think or maybe he was like going for a move where he uses his down special yes. to get some Arsene Charge, but what unfortunately it, did not work out for him, whatever it was. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to... Game plan did not quite work out, and that will be Atlas taking game one. Mm -hmm. Very close, though. Very intense, very close, especially... Showing that this match is going to be intense. He's not going to be an easy win for either player. It's going to be down to the wire. What are you expecting to see differently now that we're going into this next game? Well, I guess we're going to, see, I guess we're going to save that little conversation for a little bit later. <laughs> as we're going to be right into it. All right, well, once again, Atlas in neutral, starting with the fire hydrant. So smart with that. And again, in neutral starting. That fire hydrant's really just trying to get the space. Now, unfortunately... In that case, he was out uh, without stage control. Stage control did belong to Echo Force, and he's going to try and keep it. Atlas, just going to take it back casually. Not too worried, not too stressed. That side special is going to cancel out with the bell. Using, that was a very strange interaction. Using the powerful neutral spell and bus special to immediately eliminate the high fire hydrant with a bolt hit from the neutral special. Is not going to be able to make it back to stage by the looks of it. Unfortunate. I was very curious to see if that actually would make it. Atlas taking her right back with his spell. Side special, hitting him hard. He turns it right around and says, yeah, you know, that's not, it's fine. Let's just make it even. And we'll just go right back. Joker's going to be missing that up special. I'm sorry. Um, using that gun to zone out Atlas. Atlas is going to be able to get in close. Uses uses very good normals and his fruits to just zone out this Joker and keep him off stage. Both these characters have such interesting gear. Uh, their conversions off the heroes and their other specials into heroes are really interesting. It's definitely a very narrow game with these two characters. These characters spend a lot of time in the air, which I think might be why Echo Force countermands Atlas. Atlas barely missing that down air to get the kill confirm off of it. We'll have another bell. Maybe we'll be looking for something special. And we'll hit it with this back air. Back throw. The back throw into the bell. I've never seen that before. I, neither have I. The down smash into the hydra will take that stock. Unfortunately, that, that, such a good that re grab will, will cost will cost Echo Force the stock, however. That was such a good option from Atlas there. I believe, as I was saying a minute ago, I believe that's why Atlas, uh, or Echo Force, excuse me, counterpicked Atlas to the stage because he knew that the platforms on PS2 really helped pack it. So I think he probably kept it here to Still, Atlas is going to use his hydro fire hydrant to keep that zoning, keep that pressure. But as long as he's in the corner, Joker's going to be doing a lot of work. He has Arsene now. Fire hydrant barely missing. Brian, the fire hydrant hit it. It doesn't look like the neutral is going to be happening. Joker's going to be approaching. Atlas not able to keep him away, but going to be able to skip right out of his. Joker's going to hit the side special again. Forcing him into disadvantage. Joker approaching can be hard, especially when the character is so about like back to the high school. Echo Force is so smart about knowing what he has to do to get anything. Still, Alice is not making it easy for him. No, not at all. Not. Oh, the shield pressure! The shield pressure is gonna give Alice a, a solid nair option yep. to get to get stuck. To the bell! Nice uh, fade back right there to avoid the bell. Mm -hmm. Reads the jump, keeps them with the up air. Now they're back in neutral. One solid hit from either player. What? Getting the down air to immediately reset the stock. Arsene is almost back out, which could be a huge amount of damage to, to bring the stock Arsene right into the winnable position. Arsene is out. Using his down special to prevent the fire hydra from getting the kill. This is really interesting. The oh my. on the melon. This is intense. One solid hit from... One solid hit from Adam. He would close out the stock with that. Atlas is really going to be having to work hard on, but he has that, but he has Arsene right now, and he still has Arsene for a little bit longer. The key is going to be able to hit it. will close out that game. Beautiful job. Beautiful job from Atlas being able to close out that stock. Come on, Desmond. All right, we have our we have our audience back again. We do have an audience right now. Shout out to the audience. Our main man, Ruby Leviathan, is in the audience. Let's go. So is Dane, Labernus, and the person whose name I don't remember. A bowl of ham. Let's a bowl go. of ham. Woo! We got absolute legends in the audience right now. They're br they're bringing the hype. They're bringing it. This is gonna. Uh, this is so exciting. 
Alright, everyone, right back into game three. We're into game three. We need a color switch uh, from Echo Force going to the. Uh, Immediately, Joker getting some powerful damage in. Atlas almost almost trying to zone out this Joker right now as he's going to keep on getting that close up. When he closes in, they're going to do some incredible amounts of damage immediately at 49%. Yes. Do, you think the, uh, do you think the color switch is different? Oh, I definitely think so. Yeah, you Sometimes think? you just need to clear your mind. Really get that color do you switch think because, like, simple you know, the red's not working. I need, I need to change the pace. I need you know? to be a schoolboy. That's what I need to be right now. I, I need to hit the wolves. I need to study this pack. Like, Jesus. Like, 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 <laughs> that is anyway, very... Anyway, into the match. Using the Galactic, oh, there we go. Echo Force is going to punish the grab. It's very, very nice especially when you miss it. Oh. Until Echo Force has it does look like he's going to be trying to get the offstage. Not going to be able to get the ledge trump, because Atlas is not going to take that option. Keep, not going to quite hit. This player is playing in neutral right now. Arson is about to is about to leave. Oh, the re grab and the throwing. Unfortunately, oh, not going to be able to hit the side smash. Off Smash will kill Atlas right off the top. As they're gonna get the chance to choose his new to choose his new option. As Joker immediately is going to try and close in and get some damage going. Fire Hydrant is gonna be absorbed by the down special. The grab is gonna go off, not gonna quite kill here. That could have that could have instantly been the end. Down special is immediately going to punch the melon drop, which I really like, especially that down special can be do a lot of work. Yes. Get that arson early, and with that arson out, that's a lot of damage for the Joker Blur. Not gonna be able to properly time to down air, unfortunately. He was waiting until the trampoline was used out, because the trampoline has three uses from the, from the Pac-Man. That fire hydrant from the bell, really good play. Back in neutral, Atlas missing the up air, unfortunately. That dash attack is gonna keep Atlas off the stage. Joker's gonna wait, hit the back, Good back air. Closing out that stock. Nice ledge hop back there. Joker will have rage for this upcoming stock, and he's almost gonna have Arsene, which could mean a lot of damage. He is going to drop the key. That could mean a lot. Atlas better close out the stock and quickly because he's about to get Arsene. He makes the recovery. His Arsene is now out. This is gonna be a, this is gonna hurt Atlas. This is gonna take a lot of percent here. He needs to close out the stock and fast. Oh, not quite oh, able to do it. Not the, gonna do it. The DI is gonna save him. And the K will take the stock. 43% on Atlas right now. Not quite a lot of rage, but that down special will get Pac-Man off of him and almost right back to Arsene. Immediately. This could be really dangerous for Atlas if he lets Arsene come out too early with too much percent. He needs to be careful about this. Night patience on the down special, waiting for the Atlas immediately calling him out, saying, "Okay, if you want down special, fine. I'll just grab you." I'll just grab you. Like. Will unfortunately miss the downs back to the aerial offstage again. Unfortunately, Atlas is going to be using that front hydrant to help him zone, getting some free deeps, getting some free damage. We are unfortunately in a very tight space. Where the side special will Echo get Force the kill. Will take that stock. Echo Force will be up one. It's 2 1 it's right two, now. 2 1. Such a close game. This is such a good set. Oh my gosh. Quite incredibly close right now.
These games are getting intense, getting intense indeed. We're truly seeing we're truly seeing the pinnacle of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Here. Oh indeed, and we will be seeing a game four. Oh yes. Which I am very excited for. I always am down for more Smash, and I'm curious to see if we'll be seeing a game five even. Oh, I would. Or, I'd love to see a game five. I would five. love to, but maybe Atlas can be like, no. Right, so what do you? It ends here. What do you think? Do you think there may be a character switch? I or? don't think so, but I think that especially what you notice is he was using that down special a lot more, and he was able to get things. Atlas was starting to read towards the end, however, so I'm curious to see how that move comes into play right in this match. Right, back. This, I think this Boy Joker really did help. Him. He was able to close out that game. With Pop quiz, you fail right now, and it's just going back and forth. Atlas hitting hitting his aerials, hitting his grabs, showing that this isn't going to be easy for you. And I like the option from Atlas right there, using the fade back neutral air to finish off the conversion because he didn't want to close in on the Joker because he didn't want to run the platform. So we're going to punish him, but instead of fading out on the other platform, he reset the neutral with Atlas. Atlas will get the Arsene off of the bell from his down special, and that could be a lot for Atlas. And Arsene could be, could spell doom for Atlas if he's not careful. Of course, he's gonna have to want his own gun one on a timeout. If you can't hit with those things, that will reduce the time that Arsene's out. But being a disadvantage, not where you wanna be, and he will hit that thing. Whoa! Unfortunately, creating the stock, that is not what you wanna see if you're Joker. Like Wall Street, I mean, the stock <laughs> All right, so it looks like that. Nope, he's just gonna wait for it to end and immediately throw his Galaga at that Joker. Again, Atlas oh, getting the Atlas stuck! Early still immediately! Smash this game isn't that gonna is be easy. Um, I think it might have been. Might have been a zero to death. Atlas such a commanding lead right now. We don't we shouldn't count out the horse out yet. Not at left. all, because Arsenis just came out, which could spell yes. disaster if Atlas is not careful. We saw last game how he was able to turn situation so quickly, especially with Arsen. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that bell is gonna hit. He's gonna re-grab the bell with an up air and the hit the side smash. But he will not die. Atlas is still. Oh, Echo Force is still in this. Too excited. Oh no! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! He's still in this. Checking the thing with the apple. Echo Force is still on barely. Echo Force is still in this. 154 percent. The range is real right now. He's gotta be really careful. He's gotta be really careful. Oh my goodness, it happens! Hitting the side smash Good. off the bell! Amazing play from Atlas! Beautiful job. Beautiful job from that both is... players. Atlas taking it 3 1 over Echo Force. Such incredible an... match. That was incredible. Showing Such an Atlas. Intense set. You might have passed this class, but Atlas will fail you so easily. It's intense, amazing, and emotional. One thing I, one thing I really liked about. Uh, oh! We have Where a else? new donation. Spooky and Ruby Leviathan, our main man, Ruby Leviathan, with the $25. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank and you so much. Well, it says Spooky and Ruby Leviathan. So we Thank you so much. Thank I remember, it's so a for a good cause. Uh, giving for Gamers for giving. Thank you so much. Any more dollars and something special is going to happen. You should donate. It would be great, you know, for a good cause. And you get to see something special. Yes, indeed. One thing I really liked about that set was how Atlas was able to totally maintain stage control the entire time. He, like, while there are brief moments where Echo Force was able to get his approaches and get a lot of percent, and Atlas made such good stage control the entire time and just really showed that, really made Echo Force approach him instead of approaching Echo Force. Mm -hmm. he really, he held his what I also really like is, especially whenever he would get something, he would just carry. He would yes. go on and on and on, just doing these crazy things and to was, get these stocks. He was so smart about when he dropped his conversions and his combos. He always knew, it was like, okay, I'm going to hit this move, this move, and then I'm going to drop it, because if I keep going, it's good. It's going to end You're going to start risking that the Joker's going to hit you back. So smart. So that was a very intense loser semis. We're about to head into winner's finals, I think. Losers. Losers finals? Losers finals? My baby. Okay. Alright, this will be the losers finals then, I think. We're about to, we're about to head. It's the last match of losers before winner's finals. We're about to see Atlas versus Flake. Now, uh, Flake bodied me in pools with this Terry, because <laughs> Terry is insane. Terry versus Pac-Man will be very intense. This is going to be a really... Uh, I, I saw him bust out a Kazuya earlier, so I think it'd, I'd really like to see a Kazuya. I would like to see a Kazuya here, because I don't really think Terry's a lot of options for getting in yes. close with um, Pac-Man. Kazuya has his, like, his powerful kick, yes. which will just and get him Terry's a clip. recovery. 
uh, is not as good as Kazi is. And Pac-Man is extremely mobile in the air, as we said, and extremely good on stage. So Thank you very much to the, the Knopfu, I think it is pronounced. One hundred dollars. One hundred! Oh my goodness! Woo! Give it up for one... One hundred dollars! We will hit our goal! Okay. Oh my right, goodness, that all. is amazing! Thank you so, so much, much. Nuffy! Thank you all so much for the donations. Nuffy. Nafia, I think it is. Nafia, I believe that is how it okay. pronounce yeah. it. Pronounce it. Thank Nafia. you so, so much for all the donations. It means the absolute world to us. This is all for a good cause. It means so much that we're able to come out here, entertain you all with Smash Brothers and gaming and good times. Good and times, and you're helping a genuinely yes. great cause. Thank you we're so much. So many people in need. All your donations are extremely appreciated. So we, we thank you. Thank you all so much for taking your time and your money and giving it to us. It's extremely, extremely appreciated. Thank you so much. All I right. think we will be seeing some exhibition double matches yes. at some point. I... It'll be so exciting. I cannot wait. No, 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 we gotta no. finish the bracket. We gotta finish the bracket. Oh, sorry. All right. So we reached our donation incentive. We're right. gonna see some doubles. I believe, a... It looks like we're about to begin, and I, we, I believe we just got the thumbs up. Got the thumbs up. We're about to head right into it. Here we go. Pac-Man versus Terry. As we said, Blake versus Alex. Three, All right. Uh, one, Got some clapping for the go, audience. They're excited to see this match. I'm excited to see this match. Alright. What, what, what do you think about this match? Well, Terry has a few very good approaching options, especially with the side special. And he has, like, just these amazing combos, as you just saw. Able to hit for insane amounts of damage. The big question is, will Pac-Man be able to get the kill confirm once Terry hits 100%? Because if he can, that go could mean disaster. It does a lot of damage, gets a lot of powerful effects. Like I said, Pac-Man is extremely good offstage with the projectiles and with his aerial mobility. All he really needs to do is hit Terry. Whoa! Oh my goodness! Right there, as soon as he goes, as soon as he has go, he's out. He's gone. Atlas showing himself to be a very powerful and dangerous competitor oh, against yes. this Terry. Here we go again with the combos. Atlas right is going to be getting back to the table. Gotta hit the jab block. Hitting the back air, Go is going to be active, but I do. But with Atlas have such dominant stage control presence right so now, control. I don't think it matters. Good power dunk right there to get back on stage, though. Oh, Terry is going to be able to hit the kill Buster with his go. Wolf. Buster Wolf doing Buster insane Wolf. thing damage, getting the kill. Buster oh. Wolf again for immediately a clean 41%. Blake has already basically evened up this game with his. The longer, just like Arsene, the longer Blake is on stage against Atlas with his go. Blake can just continue keeping those, those Especially since he has Rage right now with that, yes. with, with that his high percent. Alice is going to have to be doing very careful trying to get that stock cleanly off. Otherwise, this could be very dangerous. Hitting a powerful back air off the bell. Up smash, though, but he's the player, not me, so I he does something I don't think. Hitting the bell in the side smash, we'll getting it cleanly. That side smash there. Going and taking that stock. Oh my goodness, Terry is going to get be able to reverse the Galga. Not able to get a huge amount off of it, but that's all right. Atlas oh, doing, oh my, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Harry and Terry all across stage with his aerials. Blake is able to get back on stage though and already go ahead. Immediately hitting this combo, Blake is gonna have to hit something though. Good down smash though, getting him off stage. But again, Terry is not really that great off stage. He's gonna have to force Atlas. What does it need to be a rough stage if you can just keep, can you just keep Atlas in disadvantage? Yes. Atlas is going to get the up air. He grabbed the bell too. This is so intense. Good grab. We're going to be seeing a back air. Let's see. Can he combo? Can he capitalize off the back throw? Good power dunk getting back on stage. I like how he's using the power dunk to mix up his recovery and forcing Atlas to make a decision. And then once he realizes what decisions he's going for, he's able to do the right thing to get back on stage and force Atlas, force Atlas to make a bad option that he can capitalize on. I think Atlas will get the back air here. Yes, he will. Getting the clean kill right off of it. Yes, very good. Immediately. Getting the two, getting the clean two stock. Atlas is going to be going very right excited. Two stocks. You have to be running. Are we going to see the character switch? Are we going to be seeing a Kazuya yeah, instead of a Terry? You gotta wonder though. In the set earlier against the uh, against Waywardness, he uh, he didn't switch, which was kind of interesting. So maybe he will switch now. Now now that knowing the advantage and disadvantage of sticking with Terry and, and at the same time, if you're more comfortable on Terry, it might just be worse. Even yes. if it's a worse matchup, if you're more comfortable, that's still probably the right play. Yes. We'll have to see. 
All right. We will be seeing a Terry again. And comfort. No comfort stage is switch. Three, two, points. Kalos Pokemon. One, okay. Comfort is very important when going into these matches. Because if you don't know, if you're not comfortable with Cassia, then Terry is just the better play. Alice, however, very, really, very comfortable at Pac-Man and showing him with a zero to seventy-three instantly out the bat. Seventy-three percent, just like that. No hesitation. He said, "Yeah, I'm gonna throw my hand at you." Yeah, you can just take the seventy-three percent. You're just gonna take it. We're gonna have Sam Terry going back to the go with about a little under 100%. Buster Wolf Another coming Buster out. Wolf. Blake is so good at getting those conversions. He knows he's so good at getting those jab down, the jab tilt, uh, tilt events into special conversions. He's so good at that. They rack up so much percent. He's such it no will power. be the, that will be the stock. Blake up a stock right now. Still has a Buster Wolf and still has Rage. Yeah. Alice gonna have to be very careful to going into this. But the bell barely will kill. Not, the DI wasn't quite strong enough. As we said against, he said against Atlas Force, the longer Atlas is on stage against these opponents with these win, win conditions, I guess, Terry's go for Marcy. These ketchup mechanics. These ketchup mechanics. The longer Atlas is having to fight those mechanics, the more he's taking the level of disadvantages at. Of course, Atlas showing himself to be just an amazing player and not at all afraid. Being able to punish even with these mechanics that these characters have, Atlas is doing incredible damage, taking stocks right back. Yes. Will Heading the back the here. Wolf right there. He will punish it. Oh, it does look like you'll be going a little bit of a combo right there. Trying a two frame, not quite quite not quite getting it. Oh, very smart right there, using the water, realizing that the water was gonna hit him and then hitting him with the near to get him on stage. And now Oh my oh. goodness, trying to read the smash DI. Not quite there, but very close and very intensive. And now Blake is at the advantage. Also good hold by Blake of winning the belt because he wouldn't have rolled the belt probably with that up and now it's gonna come on the We'll be able to hit the fire hydrant, but the apple will come right through. Yes. And so will the Melodillion stand damage. Bell is out, so we have to be careful. Oh, that oh. backer will be the one to kill, however. Back. Atlas up oh, Atlas, oh, a stock with his 80%. Oh, oh, oh Atlas carry. Oh. oh my goodness, Atlas carrying Terry right off the stage. Terry does have stage. No, he doesn't. As Atlas is going to be hitting oh, the sun smash. At right now, Terry does have the bell. We'll be able to hit this button's back nice side special. Pressure, though, able to head you out of his shield. Both out of floss for words. Nice a side powerful side beat. Only 85%, doesn't even have to go yet. Terry is in a really, this is where Terry really shines. Not if he's gonna be dead though. Atlas not gonna let the stuck go easy. No. Has a melon out, he'll hit the hydrant. Terry does have the could be expecting out. Watch out for the bell. That bell could do some crazy things. One solid conversion, though. It's always a big play to support for his jab. Unable to punish. Unquite able to punish the grab as. For his jab is down to anything to get that conversion, get rack up that percent, and take that stock. Unfortunately, he is going to be focusing on the Hydra. Do you really want to be with, with the uh, Pac Man? Sometimes you don't get a choice. While he is in the upper. Hydra, though, he's also doing a very good job of maintaining. Staying away from Terry. Back. Oh, oh my goodness! Oh, oh my goodness! No. Not quite able to recover. That is unfortunate. And it is 2-0 right now for Atlas. <laughs> the guy's question <laughs> is the time for Kazuya. Kazuya Ishima. There's the time. Or we'll be seeing another Terry fight. Because that Terry game was very close. It that was, was genuinely was really very close. close. So we might be seeing him thinking, okay, I know a few things I didn't do. Like, I don't like this. If I do these differently, yes. I can do it cleanly, easily. We have the crowd cheering for the Kazuya, though. We do have the crowd. We do have a crowd. The Kazuya we will be seeing the Kazuya. Out, seeing the Kazuya. He's got the Phoenix Raid outfit on. Let's go. And also, like, just like Terry, Kazuya also has a little front key mechanic once he gets 100% with his extra little, with his tech and range, yes. as I have been part of the function of the Kazuya can also do a lot more percent. Oh, Kaza, oh, Kaza, Kazuya also has that, that projectile right there. Which I will shoot just above the hydrant and could threaten this uh, Atlas. Yes. Even on distance. Good roll. Good. Atlas able to read the roll very cleanly, very easily. I wasn't saying good roll, I was saying good, good read, read on, on the that roll. roll. That's what I was trying to say. Nice DI though. Nice AI, able to survive. Living. Will not be able to get back to cover. Not quite able to grab ledge. It's an unfortunate stock. Zero percent still in Atlas. Mega Force has got to be careful here. Going for the jackpot, not quite able to get it. Oh my goodness. Atlas oh my goodness. Atlas is just bullying.
bullying the poor man. This is putting so much pressure. All right. Oh my hit. goodness, Kazuya showing. Kazuya, however, Kazuya has insane damage if he's not careful. We have another donation from KB for $10. Thank Good. you so Thank much. Thank you so much, KB. Thank you so much. I really hope that you enjoy this match. Kazuya has rage right now. Such an intense match. Thank you for donating for this intense match. Kazuya's damage is not to be trifled with. Even though he might be down right now, Kazuya has the damage he needs to get back into this. He's not over yet. Whoa. Unable to hit that, however, the Mela will come out. Pac-Man's gonna grab it. Rage will be dropped. So much percent so quickly. It's an electric god wing fist and his command grabs. I forget that's the actual name sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it's a really powerful one then. I have, I have a friend that plays Kazuya, and I used Anyway. Kazuya able to hit that up tilt doing insane amounts of damage. If uh Blake pulls out the stock here soon, he might I think be in that a good hydrant? position. Blake does have rage right now. If he can get the Atlas kill, going into the next time, it could oh. be disaster. But he has to find that kill. He's gotta be careful. Oh, he throws the key away. Oh, that back air will be killed. That's gonna be an up, up three stocks. Blake is gonna have to play the best Kazuya of his life if he wants to get back out of this. But it's not impossible. The game's not over until the score is oh. That being oh. said, Atlas immediately bringing out Kazuya right to the edge of this thing. 31%. That grab. grab. Not, Not quite, quite able enough. to kill. Gotta be careful though. He went for the spike. He should have given him. He honestly should have given him the game right there. He's going for it. He's gotta be really Try and hit the two frame. Not quite able to. As Atlas is going to get that damage up. Echo Force has gotta be really careful on the edge. Uh, not Echo Force. Blake, excuse me. Blake has gotta be very careful. Blake has gotta be very careful on the edge. Pac-Man has so much damage, and Kazuya is having a lot of trouble closing the gap between the two. Pac-Man is so good with his edge mobility, he's able to do so much percent really quickly. He's on ledge, Pac-Man can really punish it. Not quite Pac able to spot gonna... dodge the grip. But he is gonna hit the, he is gonna hit his little beam. Oh my oh, goodness, he's he gonna into roll the into the grab. Unfortunate, it's gonna drop his rage. Might survive this? Yeah, yes, he will! Oh my goodness, utilize it. Alice isn't over this. Tried to spot dodge, but the grab lasts too long. He's still got hit by it. You're gonna have to roll into it if you want to get away from that. Players are now playing so safe. Neither of them. Really both of them are. It looks like they're both a little scared. As Alice is gonna hit the back out. Alice takes it. 3-0 against Blake. He's gonna get that clean four stock. Amazing play from Atlas. Wonderful set by both players. Wonderful set by both of them, and Alice will be moving on. Yes, that was. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you very much from, what was the name again? KB. KB, KB, thank you so much. I see it right now. Thank you. For, is that someone for a donation from the women's basketball team, I believe. KB, yes. So thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for that. Um, Shawnee State women's basketball team, thank you so much for coming out and supporting your school and supporting charity at the same time. We are here at Jablock, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Tournament for Gamers Outreach. Uh, raising money for a good cause and gamers outreach's go kart program, providing video game consoles and entertainment to individuals in hospitals who do not act, have access to these things. I'm Nettie Sixteen, and I'm Cassie Badger. We are here casting. We are about to head into winners finals. I think. I believe so. Actually, I think we're about to head into winners finals. Very intense, very amazing gameplay we've seen from all of this, and it looks like we're going to be seeing Dane versus Waywardness, if I'm not mistaken. Which is going to be an incredible match, yes, to be said the least. this is going to be incredible. Wait, I was watching, uh, I got to see the set earlier where, uh, Waywardness, uh, that Waywardness played. I'm good. Sorry, mate. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next time. Next time. <laughs> Next time, man. No, we're vibing up here. And incredibly close matches from every, every game. It looks like this look intense. High octane, high, just even just even just skill level. These people are just really good at what they do. And That's why they're in bracket, and we aren't. <laughs> I'm really excited for um to see Dane versus Wayward and Stall. This is like a hype match, an incredibly exciting one. Um, I lost to Dane earlier. Really good player. Oh, 100%, and I'm hundred percent. And I consistently lose to Wayward. Also, a really good player. <laughs> do you think we're gonna see the Zelda versus Incineroar? I do think that's gonna be the matchup, unless one of them wants to change it up. Don't think it'll be Wayward, because I do think Zelda has is preferable into that matchup. Yes. It's very hard uh, for. What do you think of the Zelda Incineroar matchup? It's gonna be. It's in a lot of ways that 
Zelda is going to zone out the Incident War. If the Incident War gets close in, it can do a lot of damage. Yes. You're going to be seeing a lot of revenge. Definitely. You're going to be seeing a lot, and you're going to be seeing a lot of just shielding and punishing, like, laggy moves. Think of up special. Think of side smash. Laggy moves are going to be punished, and they're going to be punished hard. Yes. Another, as I said during the uh, Atlas Wayward, Waywardness match, um, or, never mind. <laughs> as I said the last time, uh, it was Atlas versus Dane, excuse me, uh, I said mentioned that Pac-Man has a lot of mobility and its inner worth recovery uh, isn't that great. It's not great, but it does have a l some mix-up options from different ways to down special. But either way, we're just going to jump right into it. Waywardness Three, versus Dane, two, starting on PS2. One, I think every single game I've probably did today has started on PS2. Just like PS2 is just a good neutral stage. Yeah, Immediately, Waywardness doing some damage Ooh, and up hitting that up B is going to be able to connect. Yeah, we'll catch up and you see uh, Waywardness already starting out zoning with the projectiles, zoning with the band. As soon as, as soon as Incident Working closes, it's a bunch of damage right immediately. Running off. Of course, it's not going to be it's not going to be easy by any stretch of the means. I wonder how you're going to see him getting out. With a roll, will be punished by Waywardness with the. Yes, Waywardness is so good at catching those objects, knowing exactly what they're doing, what going to do, and how to punish it. Is going to be able to punish the staying on ledge. Unfortunately, Dane's not going to be able to get off as Incident Working is going to be losing the stock. Waywardness is staying on the ground. I like the option for Flavor Nest there, trying to get those upbeat through Pokemon Stadium 2, or Zelda uh, up here through Pokemon Stadium 2. Not quite able to get the Dane, not quite able to get Dane, as Dane will get the grab, and we'll see the fourth throw, not quite able to kill. Not quite able to take out the stock. That neutral air, however, will get the kill immediately. We're back to a 2 2 stock. Back to the game. 52, 52% on Dane right now, however, instead of very good at racking the bottom percent very quickly. So. Probably won't be very long before uh, all the that as well. You oh, will be seeing the spike to the punish the bike. That spike will will be able to get in Snorkel, getting that stock lead right away. Good shield on that forward smash. And Waywardness immediately comes back out of the shield with the Nair. Continue the rapid damage. Every percent on Dane right now is dangerous. This is stock now. So he's got to be careful about taking percent. Good drive on the shield. Throw. Looks like Zelda's going to be trying to once again zone him out, and as soon as Zero gets that grab, it's going to be looking for some for some play. New crucial is going to be reset, not quite as Zero is going to hit the forward air. Indeed, but unfortunately, but of course Zelda knows he's going to play and try to save. Zero, however, going to get the backer and going to get the kill for that. Right the As it the does look like fire. he will be able to hit with the side special. The Good din job. The fire will close out that stock. I wasn't seeing... Waywardness is going to be able to go a little bit ahead, owing into the next match. I wasn't seeing Dane do a lot of revenge that match. I wasn't really even see, either seeing that, but I definitely think that yeah, I'm, he's a lot better player than I am. I think he recognizes that, and he's probably saying, like, hey, if this happens, I maybe, there, maybe he's scared of punishing. Yes. Maybe he's afraid of not quite making it, because once that night is set up especially, like, you'll see that's usually the time you want to. Zelda's free to do whatever she wants. Yes. She can grab you. If you're going to wrench, great. Grab, throw, then slash. Does a lot of damage and stuff like that. Zelda has a lot of really good convergence out of her grabs, but Dane, the way Dane actually won his set against Atlas was by utilizing revenge very smart. He would revenge a lot of Atlas's spells to get the revenge and then capitalize with a lot of power. We'll be seeing a game to Yoshi's. Okay, Yoshi's. Yoshi's. This is the first time I've seen this game. Actually, I think I got it. Ooh, immediately will capitalize on that. Going to hit going into side special immediately. 104 percent Someone in the audience just said go crazy. Going to hit, grab again, another grab that will look like the kill. Immediately, Dane saying this is not gonna be easy for you. Hitting a revenge. Now, those revenge is going to be doing a insane amount of damage. 40% right away. A lot of knockback. Flip Darkest Lariat. He grabbed the roll on stage and flipped it around. Really smart there by Dane. Dane says, 
said, yeah, that first game, yeah, yeah, you lost. You lost a bit tough. Game, but you know, you know, you're not gonna get a squeeze. It's not gonna be as easy for you. I really like the way Wade uses the Phantom Knights to put a lot of pressure on Nate, force him to make an option, and then capitalize on the whatever option Nate, Nate does. He's so smart about being able to read different options and knowing exactly what he's gonna do. Maybe that you need to notice, though, is that when his Knight is out, if he gets hit, the Knight just disperses it completely. So you will be looking in that kind of mental game. Do you want to hit Zelda or do you just want to respect the knight? Exactly. That's why she does not hit. Cooper just goes with the punish with the, with the uh, nervous love there. Reading the roll into stage will get a bunch of damage off. Good roll on Vincent. Grab the four that air. That's a lot of percent. Oh, all right. And just like that, we were just taking the lead again. He showed you a lot of promise there in that house. Stringing together a lot of moves. The shield pressure. Nate's back on stage. Able to survive. Does not move actually. Instead, just opting to stay. Will look like the kill, however. That is unfortunate, unfortunate. as the incinerable recovery can be like that sometimes. Yes, unfortunate for there for Dane. And that will be 2 1 waywardness. That will be. It does look like where is going to be going up into this. It is. I believe that was the second game, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, that was. Yeah, I thought so. Or two two or two, two zero two zero, two, two, zero I believe game. two zero. Now yes. going into this thing, are we going to be seeing a reverse three game? That is the question. Yes. Will Dane be able to carry, pull it out? Will we be seeing a game four, maybe even well, a game see, five? I wonder if Dane is thinking. Do I switch characters? Do I change up my strategy? Where do I take waywardness? What would I? Do? What do I change? It does yes. look he's going to bring her on cinema. What you gonna be asking? What is my new strategy? What am I gonna be doing differently? Going to I don't honest. particularly like the stage choice because what it does in this match, especially, is there's a few things actually. Number one. A lot of runaway resistance. Yes. So it has a lot of time to run away, get away from Cinnamore, if he doesn't want to brawl. It's also a bigger stage too, so Zelda will have the ability to live longer. Now the big thing, now the big thing is the sides are the side the side blast zones are very close. Yes. So if Incineroar can get Zelda to the go to the corner, he can kill very early. Yes. I also think these Ooh, that could have been really interesting. Nice awareness by Wayward is there to notice he was on the platform. And get off the stage before the level of the stage. Good Hitting the grab. Not able to get any call up, however. Center War. Not agile enough. Instead, opting to say, hey. Oh, it does look like that's barely not going to be able to kill, but he not is down his nice. jump. Don't think it'll matter. Very good. Nice, narrow slug right there. Getting. Getting Dane his back. Oh, he held on stage too long in the Phantom Knight. Unfortunately, no, I, that down. wasn't much of a holding on stage as much as it was a jumping at the wrong time. Yes. Arrow's Love's going to be somewhere off the thing, but Darkness will be able to get some clean damage off. Yes. Forward nice. Air will get the kill, however. Nice, uh, nice, uh, we'll a, re on that a revenge, getting a clean amount of damage right away. So, oh, did you see that? They did Arrow's Love does the... They did yep. Narrow's Love and Darkest Larian at the same time, and Narrow's Love and Darkest Larian are so interesting. Good read, read on prop, that. Proper read on the roll in. Oh, oh the my goodness! The down smash will kill because of that, because of that, um, early blast zones to the side. He has a lot of control right now. Let's see if he can maintain the control. The longer Nate maintains his control, the longer he stays in the lead, the better. Zelda able to get that grab, and you might be seeing a bit of a funky little play. Not quite. Starkness Larry will come out. Good awareness on Waver. Good awareness by Waver is on that grab because he sent out the Phantom Knight, knowing Dane would shield it, and then he ran up the shield grab. Darkest Laria, I think Zelda went for forward smash, but Darkest Laria is too quick, too much priority. Go that side smash offer will be able to get the kill. Waver is at 73. This is not over for either player. That rage Definitely is not. active. But of course, Incineroar is not No bad. ledge grab. Back throw. Not going to quite take the stock. Let's see. Nate is in, Nate is in control. I don't know how Guy comes out. Miss. Unfortunately, is shelled. Neutral air. Garden of Celerity is going to not gonna connect. Like as a side smash will take it. And we have a game four situation. This is. Game four, Dane. Let's see if Dane can keep. Four. It's 2 1 Dane. 
It is 2-1 Atlas. Not Atlas, Waywardness. 2-1 Waywardness. <laughs> There's too many players at this tournament. There's too many players. <laughs> we can't keep everyone straight. Yeah. It does look like it's going to be another intense match, however. Yes. As what do you think Waywardness is thinking right now going into game four? You are about to be wondering what was different that time. Yes. What options happened differently? Why did that match go the what way did, it did? What about why should what stage should I go to? Because the stage really mattered. Because he had a very dominating game on the Yoshi story, but on Town and City, it was not good. It looks like we'll be going to the most neutral stages around. Yes, two. Going back to PS2. Right away, Waywardness, starting with this conversion, grab into back air. Getting a nice 50% on Dane. Dane going with the color switch. Hard, hard punish on that lucky mind. 69%. Nice. Nice. 69%. Nice. He's staying at 69%. That. Not entirely sure what happened, but I believe that was a grab. As Incineroar will hit a side smash special. Side special is very interesting. Another side special. This time it will hit. Dane now. Double revenge! Oh, the revenge, he has the revenge! Oh, 60%! 60% off of one side special, that revenge is just so cool. That knight goes through the stage, Wait, amazing! Wait, when this says, you've got your tricks, I've also got tricks. Powerful get off me tool. Will hit the two frame, but will take a bit of damage. Has that spot dodge? Punish, but Waywardness able to spot dodge the punish. Both of these players are just not traded. quite able to get that thing. As a powerful side special will kill. Side special will take that stock only 61% on Dane. Now Dane is in a very good position. However, we've seen Waywardness put on a lot of percent. Waywardness will put a knight down. Knight will connect. Down air. percent. Back Forward air. Dane, Immediately into the down air, missing the up air, however. Good awareness by Dane, though. Getting out of that situation. He said, this is bad. I need to leave. And he did. Now we're back in the jump. Good recovery. It Big does. The Knight will kill as the, as the game is decked onto one stock. Both players. Bonnie's going to need to type down this very Knight. Okay. Forward air. In the forward air. Up air. He's we'll be just now. More. He's getting lots of period conversions. Back to 74%. We'll get revenge! This could be a lot. One solid kick could probably take Game five! We've got a game We've five! We've got game five! That careful use of the revenge mattered so that much. Revenge was so smart. Game five! Game five! We got we got the we got everybody chanting in the background and you for can see game five. It. You can see it in Waywardness's face. He's sitting there thinking, like, what do I need to change? How can I close out this set? Mm -hmm. I don't think either of these players want to go to losers bracket right now because if they go into losers bracket, they have to. Then fight. they have to fight Atlas. They have to fight Atlas, which I think either of these players would make a great set. It'll make it a great match regardless. I think they both realize how good Atlas is and how strong of a player he is. But those don't count them quite out either, as they are both amazing players 100%, as well. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. And we're going into game five, Three, right back to two, PS2. One. Starting right off. Mayor's Love immediately coming back into play. Missing the side special as Zelda will immediately punish it, reading the roll as with a grab. Nice awareness by Waywardness saying, You're gonna roll, and I'm just gonna stand right here because I know my grab. Gets the back air, and now Dane, Dane's in stage control. Waywardness is getting the grab. Because and it, not quite Ooh, killing, not but doing a lot of damage. Trying to true frame, not quite able to. Good narrow love, getting again, again, getting using it as a proper back. get off me tool. Ooh. Ooh, trying to go up. for the up kill off the top. Waywardness needs to be careful by staying too close to the side. PS2 doesn't have the widest side blast zone in the world. So be really careful. He hits another side B until the end. Darkness Lair will connect. Phantom is in the wrong direction, but that might actually... Not quite. 
the down oh, there. Will take the kill, however. Down here. However, he's at 159 with one solid hit. Darkness Larry not quite able to kill. But it would be up air well. We're back to a dead even zero, zero two stock. Two stocks of peace. Revenge coming out and immediately being put into play. Why revenge is so strong. And we saw Dane wasn't using it very much in game one, and we asked why, and now he's using it so much and it's really worked out. Not using so much, but he is using it very tactically, very correctly. Oh good. Waiting patience. for the trap button and immediately hitting that. Good patience by Dane. Getting the grab into the down air, nice, but looks of it. Very slow dash dance to get that grab. It's kind of a dash Hitting the side thing. Will sells out oh, not quite killing. Good DI. Forward air. Jump out and does shield. not oh, get the kill, however. Wait, wait, we're getting still alive. He's still playing. Darkness Lair also doesn't kill. But at 150%, so much of so much of Incineroar's we're kit does. We were just saying, you're going to have to try a little bit harder. You're going to have to think of something else. Because I'm not going down the fourth match. is going to take Dane's second stock. Wayward is at 157. Of course! We are dead even. Last stock, game five. We saw Wayward is do a little bit of a taunt. This is it! Game five, last stack! But crowd changing one more stock. It's not hitting the grab, but you need to immediately hit the forward air. 73% on Dane. 73%! Getting the grab, oh, down air! This could be big. Missing it! Hitting the side Four smash. Two. Good use of Nairus love right there. Some of these players know how big this is. So the players are being careful. This is such a this is such a human moment that you've got to be feeling that pressure right now. Able to dodge that, good, good, grabbing grabbing with the good conversion though. Dane's putting a lot of pressure. Narrow's love to get off. Now Wayward has got to be careful, even though he's in the lead, he can't get a full of a head right now. Went for the side beam. Oh, the Amazing match to every for a second. It all caught unplugged. The winner of that match is Waywardness with the up special. Such a good set. That was so intense. The game five, you could tell how much their play styles changed when they went to game five. It was so intense. That was such a good set. As we will be seeing, the next match will be. Dane versus Atlas. We're about to go into winners finals and then we're about to head into grand finals. Which will be so amazing and so intense. I am curious to see Dane versus Atlas. Atlas, I believe, is waiting for this. He lost earlier, now he's going to is he going to get his revenge or is Dane gonna show him why he is the coach? Yes. That is the real question. Alright. Oh. Right, so if you're just tuning in, we are heading into winners no, we're heading into losers finals of Jab Locket. Uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Tournament, Raising Money, sponsored by the SSU Esports team, Raising Money for Gamers Outreach, which is a very great charity that uh, uses a program called the Go-Kart Program that brings video game consoles and electronics and entertainment to individuals in hospitals who do not have access to that, um, to that in their normal day-to-day -day lives. It just blatants their lives, brings them entertainment, gives them a little bit of joy in their life. And you will now learn more about it. Every child deserves a chance to be themselves. But right now, in hospitals around the world, many kids are isolated, fighting some of the most difficult battles of their lives. What if we told you gamers have the power to help? We're Gamers Outreach, and we believe the world is better when kids can play. Our team is on a quest to help make play a part of care. With your support, we can restore a sense of joy and normalcy in the lives of families through video games. Learn more and get involved at GamersOutreach.org. This is a Gamers Outreach Cart, or Go-Cart for short. It's a portable video game kiosk built specifically for hospitals. Created and assembled by Gamers Outreach, each unit helps provide recreation to kids and young adults unable to leave their bedsides. The carts can be disinfected easily and have 360 degrees of movement, making them ideal for transport in hospitals. Go-karts can accommodate a variety of gaming consoles, 
They also come with wired controllers, a gaming monitor, and are equipped with a lift mechanism that allows the height to be adjusted. Go-karts provide a safe, flexible, and efficient way to ensure patients have access to entertainment during long-term hospitalization. To learn more about Project Go-Kart, visit GamersOutreach.org. Welcome back to another incredible match. Welcome to Losers Finals between the amazing Atlas and the amazing Dane. We are about to head into Losers Finals. I'm really excited for this set. The last set, Dane um, versus Waywardness, was so intense. Dane it was played, so intense. Dane down to the wire. So the well. Very last stock of game five. Waywardness able to clutch it out, however, with his out special. And yes. I'm very excited coming into yes. this next match because these two have actually already faced again. And yes. I'm curious to see what this rematch is going to be look yes. like. I. I'm really, I'm really excited to see, um, to see the set. I commentated the set earlier. It was very well done. So I'm gonna see. It's gonna be interesting to see what adaptations both these players have made from the previous set. And just the question of is are, these players have show themselves to be very good, very consistent, and very capable players yes. as a whole. And going into this last match, it's going to be incredible to see how these two can just push themselves to the limits and push themselves to get that victory. 100%. Face off against Wayrenness in the finals. Yes. All right. We just got the thumbs up. I believe we're going to go ahead and I jump believe. right into it. Indeed. So do you think we're going to see the Pac-Man and Cinerori? Do you think there's going to be a change-up? I think change we'll be seeing Pac-Man and Pac-Man and Cinerori. And we're going to see Pac-Man and Cinerori. Are we starting on PS2? No. Town and Smashville. Okay. Oh, nope. No Town and City. All right, the crowd's already cheering. This is hype. Immediately, we have a bigger crowd through. now. Let's go get hype, crowd. Let's go! Our main man, Ruby Leviathan, getting hype over here. He is the cheerleader. All right, right into this match once again. Atlas using the using the getting the revenge immediately. This could be this could spell disaster. This is how uh, Dane was able to take the W against. Atlas last time was by using the revenge against Atlas's fruits. He was so smart with it, he was able to just... He knew exactly when to do it, and he knew exactly what fruits he was using on. Hitting another one with a double That was a very attack. strange he interaction, but it was... Bell. Oh! oh! The side smash with the bell! Great, great play from Amazing. Dane! Amazing work by Dane right there. He knew... He knew that the bell hitbox would still be live, and he knew that Atlas would roll into Calling it. Calling him able to out cover. hard on the, on the on no the normal get up or the roll get up. All right, good back air. That's gonna be the stock. No, not Atlas quite. Nice recovery by Dane. Using that spring, ironically, to mess a bit with Incineroar's recovery. Very clever play. Dane is back air, not quite. Dane is off stage kill. again. Atlas. Atlas oh, nice using that. the water from the fire hydrant. Oh! And unfortunately, the hitbox was still active as Incineroar will jump You can right see into Dane it. on the player cam. He was like, why did I get hit by that? How did I let myself do that? And we are down even stocks. 2-2. Two, two, Atlas at 65%. Dane with, in the stage advantage. He's about the 0% almost everything on Pac-Man combos. You gotta be careful. As we said, Pac-Man is so good at chaining so many things together. 
Hardest Laird is going to be able to connect as he did miss I, the grab. And I like that option from Dane. Instead of going for a smash attack or a side B, Darkest Lariat had a lot of knockback. It pushed Atlas to the other of side course, of the stage. Again. Atlas recognizing what the potential options are. Going to be able to grab and get the up throw. Trying to get some hybrid gameplay, but not quite able. Atlas's shield pressure is so good. Revenge good revenge come out. up air. Not quite able to take it. But the forward air will, though. The crowd is absolutely losing it right now. Atlas able to say, okay, I can gladly keep you on the corner the entire time. Yes, you're not careful. Yes, Atlas just asserting his dominance on this on the edge right now, making incredible ledge trapping from Atlas, making Dane make decisions. Ooh. It does look like something weird happened to the game. Not quite sure what that was, but that's all right. As the Hydra will be primed, so almost anything will be able to open it up. Dane hits it first. It goes to Atlas's way, but Atlas does not get hit by. Atlas remains with the in neutral. Of Dane rain remains from in Cinderor, That the high damage attacks plus that extra knockback could smell disaster if you're not careful. Dane remains in control though. Atlas has got to be careful. He's getting up too. He's getting too high a percent. Pac-Man is fairly he light. Will connect, doing a lot of damage, but not quite killing, which at this stage is very important. With that rage in play right now, one solid it hit. Does Good back, back air. And we have good back here, and we are down to the last stock situation here on game one at Luxus Finals. Ooh, oh, we're hitting a powerful the, side the, special. Sends, the, sends him the other way, though. Atlas is now back. Atlas, Atlas misses the grab. Dane punishes him with the forwarder, taking game one. Amazing play from both players that time. Yes. Bring it down to the last stock in game one, and I'm curious to see if Atlas can bring it back into another game in yes. game number two. <laughs> I'm interested to see what the stage choice is going to be because I think the long uh, I think the flat the long flat stage is really benefit Pac-Man. But however, Dane has to be careful. Dane has shown himself consistently able to do crazy work on that on Tonsi. Dane over. has to be careful though because they go to a stage with too many platforms. If he counterpicks a stage with too many platforms. And we're going to Smashville now. I do kind of like Smashville. There's not a lot of room for Pac-Man to run around. Yeah, and giving... only the one platform could be really interesting for Pac-Man. Hitting the dark, hitting the revenge immediately means this next attack, if it connects, will be painful. Yes. Atlas once again doing it. Good Darkest Ooh, Lariat. The fire hydra connects the fire hell. Hydra. Atlas, That's cool. Atlas again showing us that he's so good, maintaining stage control. Putting well, I don't think I think that was definitely just Dane showing him this incredible person. Ooh. Ooh. That down air was still has still has his revenge active, but now he will lose it to the strawberry. Yes. Dane Bell is gonna be able to think what? Atlas calling out his jump very Board cleanly. Bell is gonna come out. Quite able to finish anything, both these players back into neutral. Darkest Lariat will Good shield the on the Darkest Lariat, showing no fear. He says, I'm not gonna drop shield because I know it's not gonna break. Ooh, the and his up air took priority over the Hydra, tacking right through it. Ooh, almost got the key there. Or throw. Not the good, with some good DI from Atlas, not, will not be I able to like connect. I like the up B option That there. side smash will, however, side yeah. special will, however, take the kill. Yes, side special. That rage. Well, rage side special does so much damage. We got another jo another donation from Zephyr Fan for $20. Thank you, Thank Zephyr you Fan. Thank you so much, Zephyr Fan. Really very much appreciated. We're at 800 right now. 800 out of 1,000. Thank you so Thank much you for all. everyone who's so here. Much. Oh my Thank God. you so much. The donation is immediately coming back saying, no, you're not going to get this easy. Poor oh. Atlas is not, it's not, it's no pushover. That donation pushed Dane to go for that spike and he got it. Good Darkest Larry. Darkest Larry yet. coming out, doing a bunch of damage. The that down is going to open oh two stocks. God. A two stock from Dane. Showing himself to be incredibly powerful with that extra little bit of damage. Yes. And just really just hitting Holmes. This is a small stage. I'm going to be in your face the entire time. I'm going to hit yes. you for a lot of damage. Dane put on so much pressure on Atlas that game. Indeed. And I'm curious to see what Atlas will have to think. What yeah. can I do differently? Like, will I change anything in order to go into this next game? We are up 2-0 right now for Dane. Let's see if Atlas can come, can run it back and bring it to a game four situation. <laughs> We're going in, the crowd's getting hype, let's go! We're going right back to PS2. 
Oh my oh, god, the combos? Oh my the combos? Okay, he's good. Kyle is showing he... himself to say, no, I can do crazy things too. And he a man for 72 from he... nothing. And Dane fires. And Dane fires back and says, yeah, you need to stop right there. Of course there. that and spot not able company. to do enough because that, that hitbox just lasts for so oh, long. The crowd is involved. This is... This is so hype. Dane now has stage control. Oh! oh Oh, kill. The, oh, the, the fire hydrant collided with the, the fruit rotation and held the hitbox. It was so crazy. That was so fun. Revenge is going to come out. Revenge is out now. This could, this could really this shake could things be up. A lot of Whatever he hits him with could really shake things up. Good As parry. It's going to be a parry. parry. Reading, the side smash. Reading the air dodge. Oh, oh my god. Pulling out the revenge and using that hitbox, using that end lag to just get the kill. Atlas up three stocks. For, Atlas up three stocks to one right now. Good pressure with the darkest lariat, forcing Atlas out of his shield and is able to get a conversion. Let's see if Dane can close out this stock here. There we have it again. Apple the will come box. out, hitting some some clean damage. Oh, good up. Of smash. course. Good up. up smash though. Good up smash indeed. Right back into neutral. Atlas is about to show off his pressure once again, but Dane's saying, "No, I don't need your pressure. I'll just run in and back air you." And look what I'm doing now. Trying to get the side special. He's not gonna be able to as Atlas is gonna punish them. Using his Galaga to get a little bit of combo start. It's giving a good nair to get at and it con and he converts it out of the tech. Atlas is in the air. This is a this is a dangerous situation for Atlas. He's gotta be careful when coming back down because Incineroar has so many good grounded options, he's gotta be careful when landing. Fire Hydrant coming back out. Darkest Dark Lariat just splits the screen in half. Pac-Man goes one way, the fire hydrant goes other. And you notice, Atlas, Atlas, S sorry. Darkness, uh, Incineroar will be able to get the grab off of that with the Fire Hydra push. This does look like, we'll be able to, no, oh, the grab, the will, grab connect. will connect. And you notice, uh, Atlas, so persistent with the Fire Hydra, as soon as one goes away, he drops another one. He wants to have the Fire Hydra on stage to assert the pressure, to keep the pressure up, and to have the potential to launch it and get the conversion for the, lot of dam for the damage. Hitting that perfect parry on that Good special, parry. able to prevent any potential damage from coming out. Melon is in rotation right now. Good Nair, not gonna close it out. You'll be Atlas seeing it Trish still the Bell. Bell. As the grab is gonna come Good back, you're gonna be a backer right here. Tech chase into the back throw. Atlas is in control right once again. It. The Bell is back in play. Oh, oh he wins the smash attack! That. The wrong that direction! Cost him. No, will, in the back air, there we go! Get the kill, we're going to game four! We are going to game four, Atlas will take game two. Or game three. This is some of the this is some of the best Smash Ultimate I've ever seen. I think this is incredibly intense, right here live from right here live from Shawnee Stay. This is amazing. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm incredibly excited to see now what happened differently. Well, for one, you saw a lot of that, especially that's fruit carrying in Cinemor and just saying if you're going to go for all these attacks, these powerful hits, yes. I'm just gonna bait them out and then punish hard. Yes, going to Yoshi's. I like this counter pick from Dane here because Incineroar is really high damage. Yoshi has very small blast zones. Oh my, oh my god. god! Oh my god! Ten seconds this is, in! This is like Smash 4. We're doing this with two stocks. Ten seconds in, two stocks apiece. These two are said, no, these games are taking too long. We gotta hurry this up. Incineroar really likes apples. He's holding it, waiting to throw it. Hydrant once again out, applying the pressure. Crowd's got their favorites. We've got cheers from for both players. There we go. Crowd's getting Third hyped player again. Come back out. Both players very even play right now. But uh, but Dane does have stage control. Yes, he does. Good to get the grab for back. Pac-Man is good choice. From immediately right stage control is immediately reversed. And now we're back in neutral. Whoever gets this next hit is gonna oh is gonna determine a lot. Both At players. Dane is in control right now. But Atlas fires back with that fire hydrant. Back throw? Guy's gonna, back throw is yes. gonna come out. Ooh. That was a really good option. Using the fruit to bounce off of the wall to hit Dane. That was really smart there. Side B will. Get him back on stage. As the up, up smash. smash. We'll take the kill. A lot of percent, a lot of percent on Dane though. And again, it's Center Wars recovery. Although, this is a smaller stage though. Oh. Good SDI out of that bell though. So smart. 
the screen was panned down to see Incineroar on the stage, and Atlas knew where the bell was. He didn't even need to see it. He was just able to grab it anyways. Dane's in, Dane's in control right now. Dane right now using his dominant stage, but isn't going to grab the bell. We're going to see. Oh, is this spell going to connect? It will not. Atlas is in a very scary situation. The forward smash is not quite going to take it. Dane opting for the air dodge recovery. He not is trying right to... out right now. We'll be... Ooh, revenge the revenge does come out. mean a lot. The back air not going to quite take it every time. Every percent. Ooh, that fire hydrant will almost not connect. take it as the invulnerable friends will take it. Fist! That's that's the 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 incredible match. Dane will take it 3-1 over Atlas. Incredible, incredible job. We will be seeing a rematch between Dane and Wayrenus in yes. the finals. In grand finals. Incredible job to both players. That was such an intense set. Amazing job indeed. This is intense. This is great. And I for one am hoping that we're gonna see a bracket reset. I I would hope for a bracket reset too. We've seen so we've seen such good Smash playing all day today, and it's just been such all the all the sets have been so intense. Just so lively. The crowd's in it. We're in it. Everyone's in it. We all want to see some more Smash Ultimate. Indeed, indeed. These are some high stakes, my friends. These are yes. some high, amazing gameplay. Who is going to come first? Who is going to come second? This is going to be amazing. We're, we're about to see the run back between Waywardness and Dane. Now, one last time. Would, this th Would you like to do the honors? Nope. Go for it, my man. Welcome, all right, everyone. Remember, this is. Remember, this this stream is here to help donate money for, for gamers outreach, which is a little thing which have they have, where they're raising money in order to provide. I think they were called. The go karts. Go karts. Go karts. Where they will be. Where the, where the, where these go karts are capable of holding multiple consoles and things, which will be driving around hospitals for kids who are who are in care for. For, or care for a long period of time. They'll be trained there. So that way they can play these games, they can have some fun, and be a kid for a bit once yes. again. That's for such a great cause. Every donation. We still got some more Smash Ultimate left to play, so keep the donations coming until the very end of the night. We're here. Netty is 16, casting Badger. We're going to cast Grand Finals. Let's get this started. Let's get this game started. Okay, so what do you think... What do you think Dane's going to adapt to to hope for the back... For, to hope for the bracket reset against well, Wayward? Well, a lot of times it's even towards the end, these different... The crowd's already getting hype over the rock, paper, scissors. The rock, paper, scissors match is looking incredibly intense for no reason. This is amazing. The rock, paper, scissors is getting the crowd hyped up. Let's go. But what I'm thinking we're going to be seeing a lot of is you saw those revenge plays. Those were doing great things last yes. time, especially towards the end. What you're going to be wanting, though, is you have to be careful about those big moves from where it is. If you, do, if you get caught by these moves, they will kill you so fast. You need to you need to bait them out. Get the lag. Watch the lag. Those up special, huge lag. If he's charging that, his... Side special with his knight. If you catch him out, yes. breaks, breaks the knight and is very vulnerable during that time. Yes. Or calling out the revenge is also very important. And we're just going to go right into it. Grand finals. Dane versus Waywardness. Waywardness and winners. Dane's hoping to run it back through losers. Let's get this started. Immediately after a great start. Immediately. Clean 25% coming up from Dane. Waywardness fighting right back with the neutral airs. Keeping Dane at bay. Putting on the percent. Dan is going to get right back in, trying to reconnect stage control, but not going to make it easy for anybody. Good down air into up air conversion, a very good incinerator bread and butter right there. Catches him with the side special, into the up air, not going to quite take it. Wait, this is back to trying to restart things. Oh, no. Both the roots are going to miss as Dane is going to get back to stage control, and Wayward is going to be forced to teleport to the ledge. Didn't quite space that forward smash properly, but now a quick back throw, and the rolls are reversed. Waywardness is in stage control. Back throw? Back throw will take it. Not quite. Wayward is back to four, being forced into these fights as Darkness Lair will come out and push him right back to the side. Ooh. Maybe up special this time. A trade. That was a good trade for Dane, though, because he got the percent lead. He is in the percent lead now. But Wayward will punish the Darkest Lariat. We'll be seeing that damage to the Knight will not come out this time as that up special does do a little bit of damage to start it off. Yes. Ooh, the Knight will clip him. Dane is offstage. He's got to make a decision. He gets the recovery. As the side special will, will connect, getting the clean kill for Wayward. Yes. Oh, but Dane saying no. Get out of here. Give me that stock. And we are right dead even 2 2. 37% on Dane right now. Dane looking to tie it up. Lazelda is going to be hitting the side special and the and the knight, being able to do all this damage very cleanly and very easily. Yes. Wayward is 
now has stage control. Very prominently stage control. Zelda oh! Not gonna good quite recovery sure. by Dane, though. Indeed. Interesting thing about Zelda's down air is that every single frame of Zelda's down air is a spike. So, so that's it doesn't, got to say something about how well that Dane did now. Yes, it doesn't matter what part of Zelda's down air hits the opponent, it will still have the As spike As that wolf will be caught by the Phantom Knight, gonna get the kill for Waywardness. Yes. Only 47% of waywardness, but again, Dane, so good attacking on so much percent really quickly and really good at getting those early KOs. Let's see if he's able to close out this second stock and bring it to a one stock for his game. Good Dane darkness is going to hit the darkness lariat, able to get a bit of damage as he will with the side smash, smash but that's all right as the front forward air will still connect. Ooh, shield grab, good teleport there. He knew that Dane was going to come out and try to get him, so Wayburn has teleported early instead of just falling to ledge to mix up where he was going to go. He had to he forced Dane back to make a decision. Up from Incineroar, being able to do a lot of damage, not going to catch the two frame, but will attempt to read him, barely missing oh, the He goes for the up B. That was an interesting option. He sets a neutral. Zelda now using her, her spacing tools, like her Phantom Knight and Din's Fire. Phantom Knight will come out and will be hit by the Incineroar, breaking the Knight instantly. Not going to be able to hit the two frame again, but that's all right. As the, the dash, dash attack, 30%. The crowd is cheering. Everyone wants to see. Oh, the spot. Whoa! Smash will come back. The up air. As will the up air. He still has. Dane still has revenge, though. He drops it. Oh, my God. Parry and he protective. gets revenge, revenge right back. Coming right back. This is so intense. Both these players are putting on so much pressure to each other. Rage right now for the Incineroar as he's going to be doing a triple back roll to get out of the danger. Jordan is going to grab. Good spot dodge by Waywardness. He saw that he grabbed out of out of that situation last time, and he predicted it this time. It was able to capitalize off of the punish. Eru's love's going to come out trying to use that get off me tool protect him right now. Good shield by Dane, avoiding that forward smash that definitely would have taken the stock there. Dane is now back in control. That side yes, he's going to miss. Waywardness will punish with the up smash. Waywardness takes game one. That was an intense game one. Not all of that, just high energy, high octane. The whole thing, amazing gameplay in general. I'm absolutely, excited to see what else is going to be coming out. But these players just look so intense. They both just... Dane obviously wants that bracket reset, and Waywardness just wants the wants that win so badly. Both these players have played so well today, have worked so hard to get to this point, and their hard work is definitely definitely paying off that they've made it this far, and they're putting on a good show. Every inch is a fight, every mile is a battle, as these two are clashing. These titans are clashing with incredible amounts of plays and incredibly good at Smash 100%. Moves. Go! And we're going right into it. Game two with the Persona 5 song. Actually, Persona 4. Never mind. With the Persona 4 song on Battlefield. Zelda's going to be using the, her using her specials to kit Dane off the thing. We'll hit the side special. Dane, again, so smart with that recovery. Knows exactly how much room he needs in order to get that recovery. And he gets it right every single time. Good side B from Dane. Launching Waywardness off the stage. Dane is in stage control. Able gets the two frame with the fork. They'll convert it into the fourth smash. Dane takes first stock. Zelda will come back with the forward air, immediately trying to get the special as it does look like it'll cancel. Hits him Two with both specials. specials. Three specials as revenge will Four! How many Bendos? How many will he land? We're two. And we're in the same situation. Two stocks, zero percent. Both these players are right now just playing so, so defensively, trying to use the most... Neither of these players want to make uh, any commitment to approach. Right there, Dane with the side B will attack on a lot of percent. Dane able to get some damage, will punish the up special with not able to throw, however, as Zelda will pummel out of it. Mash out of it. Waywardness once again using his spacing tools, keeping Dane off of him, saying, yeah, you do a lot of percent, I don't want to be near you, I'm just going to use things again. The trade is going to send them both, and we're back into neutral. Back throw, down throw. As he's going to get the throw, immediately getting it up, up air, to look for doesn't go for the other one, probably anticipating that Zelda was going to... Good parry on the knight. Once again, the side special will come out, side don't special look at will the kill. take it. And Senator gets another kill, up two stocks right now to the Waywardness one. Seven... The crowd's got a chant going Warner for Dane. Coming out. It does look oh! like the special will come out, get it and kill. Reset down to one stock. One stock this is it. Dane is, has the percent lead, but... Darkness Slayers will come out, not able to do much damage as it will be parried and shielded. 
Revenge. Still. Revenge on the upbeat. That was such an interesting interaction, but so smart by Dane. Side Bad, back no, no, kill. No, 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 no. He's still, he's still living. living. He's still living. Another, Another one. one comes out. And that will be the start. Dane takes game two. We've got one one in grand finals. Amazing gameplay from both of these players. They're both showing themselves to be capable, very competent, very strong. Every inch of the battle, every mile is a, every is a mile war. is a war. We're about to see. We, but, but these players are just adapting so quickly in real time to each other. And you can see, even from game one to game two, there are things that each of them were doing that they did in game one that they did differently in game two. Just, just to show what these players are very good at their job. They're very capable. They're yes. very smart. They adapt. They change. They can rewrite and they can condition. 100%. There is no Dave Stupid rule. <laughs> this is incredibly amazing. I am loving these stages. We'll be back. And we're right back into it. We did not see the beginning, so we're just going to jump right into it. Zelda, once again, using your spacing tools with the Phantom Knights, with the Nairs, keeping, B keeping Dane at bay. Dane, of course, will be trying to get back to the ledge. Phantom Knight in the opposite direction, trying to read some sort of wall, but... The up and the darkness. We now have a tech situation as Zelda gets back on stage. Good neutral air punish as she rolls away from the dash attack. Quite not quite spacing herself correctly to read the roll. The Nair provides so much shield pressure. You gotta be really careful when you're going up against the Zelda. That Nair. was an interaction as they both very smartly use different dodges. Whoa! Waywardness Zelda. gets the spike. As a, that is an early KO for Waywardness. Puts him in a good position to keep his momentum going. As you can see right now, Nair into Jab Flurry. Revenge nice. coming out, trying to think, immediately get the backer on the Zelda. Zelda will just return to ledge just to keep herself safe. The Slayer will come out, but Zelda will properly punish it with a dash attack. Phantom Knight. Ooh, miss pace the forward smash. Actually, spot dodges forward smash. Oh, okay. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, sorry. Good backer. Right here, coming out. Good backer. Only 45% on Dane. Obviously, Incineroar, no stranger to making those. Good, you, good job holding Powerful his shield right there. Not the trying Zelda. to get, not trying to get shield poked. Amazing up special from the beat. Ooh, sour spot back here. That could have been really interesting. Other than a sweet spot that might have taken the stock there. Dane being so smart, knowing exactly when to approach. He's so smart about his approaches. Good Nehru's love. Now Waywardness has the stage control again. Heading that will be doing a decent amount of percentage with Waywardness at 66. Dane has rage right now, so it's going to be very important to see. Oh, the Phantom Knight will close out that stock, though. 2-1 for Waywardness. Waywardness at 60%. But Dane putting on a lot of pressure already, saying, using his invincibility from the respawn platform to put on as much pressure as possible before Zelda is able to pressure him back. Zelda will be using her aerials to just keep Dane off, off of him, keep him in disadvantage the entire time. Yes. Side special. That's going to close out the stock. We've got a last stock. Game three. Will be hitting the neutral air and immediately Dane will fall back with an up air. Missing, whipping another one, but able to hit the forward air again. Oh, he read the roll, but he missed space to grab. Up so throw, gonna... down throw into good revenge on that. Not oh, quite, able to not kill. quite enough. It was a minor mistiming on that. That is all right. The roll be coming out for Dane. Let's see what's gonna. Not quite killing there. This is so intense, both of these players. One solid hit from either of these players could very easily take the stock. Zelda is very floaty and quite light, all things considered. So she gets to lose the stocks pretty early. However, is that gonna- not No, quite not able. quite enough! That's Dane so unable to miss the ledge. Waywardness is up 2-0. 2-1. 2 My- I, I apologize. As um, we will, as that will be interesting going into the game four. Will we see a game five? That is yes. the question. Will we see a game five? If Waywardness takes this game, that will be the end of the tournament. That will be it, and Waywardness, Waywardness will be the one. But I don't think Dan's going to make it easy. No, he's not. He's going to put up a lot of fight. He's going to put up a lot of pressure. We saw him using things like the Darkest Lariat, knowing when the knowing when to use revenge. The aerials. Incineroar's aerials are actually very good. 
uh, they put on a lot of pressure. So you saw him using those last game in order to provide a lot of pressure. You also know Willis, where we're some spot dodging a lot more of that match. Able yes. to dodge a lot of things. Oh, the raw up in neutral, starting off the game, Waywardness making a statement saying, yeah, I can do these. Oh, oh almost shield a shield break. break. Good roll by Waywardness. He's not trying to get shield broken right now. Getting the grab immediately with into the forward air, putting himself in a very advantageous position. Ooh, good back air. Good tech, good tech chase by Waywardness. Back air. Waywardness has stage control. Coming out as no and Naria's love will be protecting himself. The up air. <gasps> the up, oh, up KO. KO. Off the top, the up special. No DI probably. That either that. Oh, oh the Phantom Knight hip hop. That's all right, we're back in thing. And we are back into a dead even game. Two, zero, zero, two stocks apiece. That seems to be a very, very recurring pattern just to show how good these players are. Well, these players are just match there. so even. Good air dodge by Wayman just getting out of that string of up airs. That last up air could have really shaken things up. Good recovery by Dane. Ford smash. Calling out Bring that neutral get up yes. and getting the stock for her for his, for his troubles. That's a really, and Dane is on his turn. stock. Let's see if he's able to turn it around. But Wayman is putting so much pressure. Ben Knight will come out. And so will the side special. Ben Knight will fire. continue on doing the, the damage. The ledge pressure. Dane's back on ledge. And he gets back into neutral. Waywardness has so the stage control right now. Waywardness is doing such a good job providing pressure. Out, it revenge. Good it's revenge, out. the up B. Up B will connect. Oh, the shield's broken. Oh, it's ball. The back throw will we'll take it. One sock apiece. Dane is on his tournament. Oh, oh my man. Take it. Waywardness kill. takes it all. Waywardness will go. go so kill himself as the victor. Amazing play from everybody. And Waywardness takes the win at job lock at SSU. Incredible set from both players. So intense, amazing, so high pace. High pace, intense, and incredibly hype with both players doing amazingly yes. this last this game. This is such a good tournament. So many good hype sets. Game. That's what we like to call good Smash Bros. That is good Smash Bros. That is some good Smash Bros. Yes. Awesome. We would like to thank everybody who came here and everybody who donated to the yes. amazing cause. Every viewer, every donator, every attendee, every participator. And th our, ma our main man Travis over here running the stream. And thank you for thank you for everyone who set this up and thank you for everyone who came here to participate in this. Thank you everybody. I can interview him. Oh, that looks all stream. Amazing. That was all right, we're going to go and take a quick break, and when we come back, I think we're going to have some exhibitions, and I think we're going to do an interview as well, so we will catch you on the flip side. <laughs> Every child deserves a chance to be themselves, but right now, in hospitals around the world, many kids are isolated, fighting some of the most difficult battles of their lives. What if we told you gamers have the power to help? We're Gamers Outreach, and we believe the world is better when kids can play. Our team is on a quest to help make play a part of care. With your support, we can restore a sense of joy and normalcy in the lives of families through video games. Learn more and get involved at gamersoutreach.org. This is a Gamers Outreach Cart, or Go Kart for short. It's a portable video game kiosk built specifically for hospitals. Created and assembled by Gamers Outreach, each unit helps provide recreation to kids and young adults unable to leave their bedsides. The carts can be disinfected easily and have 360 degrees of movement, making them ideal for transport in hospitals. Go-karts can accommodate a variety of gaming consoles, they also come with wired controllers, a gaming monitor, and are equipped with a lift mechanism that allows the height to be adjusted. Go-karts provide a safe, flexible, and efficient way to ensure patients have access to entertainment during long-term hospitalization. To learn more about Project Go-Kart, visit GamersOutreach.org. All right, and we are back with the main man himself, the victor of Jablock here at SSU, Waywardness. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> All right. Uh, I just want to say, first off, such a great grand final set, man. I watched a lot of the last sets, you know, the winner's semis, winner's finals, and you played so amazing, man. Thank you. Like, I just want to 
So uh, what was what was going through your mind going into going into this tournament today? So me and just about all the varsity players have played each other a lot. So we do a lot of like crazy stuff you want to do in normal games. You know what I mean? Because we've played each other so much, we just know how each other work. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I I had I had to just squeeze my way through all his aerials because he loves the aerial game and the side beat game. And I was I was trying to bait that stuff. And for the most part, I didn't do good at that. But <laughs> um, I still like brought in my my skill, and I just I just took it. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, Zelda? Really attracts you to that character. You know, what specifically about Zelda makes the knight the knight for sure. Yeah, I, I, I could... love trapping. I love the uh, edge yes. guard setups and uh, edge traps. That's that's my game. I love that. Uh, who do you, what do you think was the uh, most difficult set you played here today? Who do you think most gave you the most, um, most trouble here today? De definitely Dane. Dane definitely sure. Dane. Yeah, it was very winners. Cool winner side um, finals. That was definitely. Oh, very. Cool I was. Set. That's very the cool most sweatful, sweating yes. one for sure. <laughs> um, I, I with this with that um matchup knowledge in mind, I I knew that I could do better and I could um counterplay better and yeah, it, it got me to win. Yeah. Yep. What a so you took the first game in grand finals and then Dane took the second game. That's right. What was going through your head going into game three of what you needed to adapt it to, what you needed to switch up to where you made sure that he didn't take game three? So that's funny. I after literally as soon as game hit, I was like I pondered, I was like, hmm. And I said that for like twenty seconds. I was like, I don't know why I lost. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like just random stuff happens in this game sometimes. And yeah. Like clearly Dane outplayed me. Like there's no there's yeah. no doubt about it. And I mean, his side are just immaculate, and he he knows when to down B, especially um, to get that uh, the revenge. He's so he's so nice with it. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? He's just so good. But um, I knew that like I just had to stick to my guns with like stage picks, and like I just relied on my stage bands because he always wanted to go battlefield. I was I was ready for it at that time. Yeah, mm -hmm. that makes that makes sense. Yep, feels good. Just yeah, <laughs> yeah. I dig it. Yeah. It's how many? Uh, how do you know how many sets in total you played today? No. Um. <laughs> so four, if you count uh, the round robins. I think I played around eight or nine sets today. Eight or nine sets total. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I didn't lose any, so that feels good. Yeah. <laughs> that hasn't happened in a long time. Yeah, you went undefeated, which is very impressive, I must mm -hmm. say. Lost a lot impressive. of games, but we win the sets. So. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. You, you lost the battle, you win the war. Exactly. Yeah. That's some yeah. Smash Lobby type stuff right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I still, I still got like blood rushing my head. <laughs> oh yeah, like, all, all my concentration, all my being was up here. Oh yeah, analytically like playing yeah, as best I could. We, we could see, uh, we could see me and Badger on commentary could see all the mind games that were going into you and Dane's set. Why don't you, uh, t why don't you talk a little bit more about the mind games that go into playing so, characters like Incineroar? My mind games are. I know Dane loves side B. Mm -hmm. we, there's a running gag that he all needs is one side B and he wins. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, especially at like mid to later percentages. So I'm mostly just big, like seriously afraid of that move. Yeah. Like in any capacity, even neutral B will sometimes fail to my neutral B to, will fail to um beat it out and I'll still get yeah. grabbed and die. Um, I basically my gameplay was was hoping he wouldn't do it and like I was trying to bait it out as best I could with fake aerials and anti hops and stuff, and I mean, for the most part, that worked, I think. But I, yeah. I still got grabbed at very crucial points. And credit to him, he he called me out on it. It was just really good, and that it still was. For the scoreboard may say that I got a three-one, but they were still really close games for sure. So, yeah. We made a thousand. Oh, with the other streams. Yeah. Nice. We, raised, we raised over a thousand dollars. Hey. Woo! Not this stream, but this other stream. the other streams around on here. other streams around campus. But if but, you could keep donating, that'd be yes. even even more. If we sick. could make our stream reach a thousand dollars, then that go. that'd be even better. <laughs> so what was your what was your mindset going into this tournament today? Like, how much like did you practice beforehand? You know, when you walked in the door today, what were you thinking to yourself going so in? So um, yesterday, me, Mark, um, Ethan, and one other person who couldn't make it, unfortunately. Um, we just slapped it out. We were just in rotations, and basically, and just messing up um, concepts like, yep. you know, like teching and stuff like that. And we, we, it, sh it, it works. It helps. We, Mark got third. I got first. Um, yeah, it just feels good. It, it, I'm, I'm glad Varsity <laughs> could get, could take top three. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, I'm kind of the outsider at this tournament because I'm a musical theater major. I'm right, not really right, part right. of this whole group. But uh, mm -hmm. it was really cool that y'all. 
you know, were so welcoming to me and everything. And oh, absolutely. Let me, let me come in. You're let some random. <laughs> yeah, let me let some random guy that's not even part of this program come in and do commentary absolutely. for like the yeah. second half of the tournament. <laughs> Anyone you know, could do it. I had a slip up earlier. I mean, I, and maybe not everyone could do it, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's 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 really great to have you. Thank you so much yeah. for doing this. Yeah. Um... Mark didn't want to do it with me. He's a big loser. Didn't want to come to with me. <laughs> It's like, I don't want to get on camera. You're on camera the whole time. Like, come yeah, on. there's a player cam. Yeah, come on. But, oh, well. We we appreciate you uh, taking the time. Oh, it's, no problem. I didn't, you know, musical theater majors, we do everything on every day of the week except for Saturday. So gotcha. I saw this, like, last week, and I'm like, I don't have anything to do on Saturday. Yeah. Sure, I'll sign up. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, I'm actually so happy how this turned out. Oh, we, yeah. We have not had more than... I want to say 20 people in a long yeah, time. Yeah. So this is this is actually incredible that it's so many people came out. Yeah, and all the donations from everything. Oh, yeah. absolutely it's incredible as, to turn I, out. Again, extreme. God bless my family for donating 200 yes. bucks. I, I love you guys. That's so nice of you. Yes, very much. And uh, mu- much appreciation to all the donators today. Mm-hmm. Much, much appreciated. This is all a right. weird question. How do you set up your controller whenever you play Smash Brothers? <laughs> it's very not intuitive at all. Um. <laughs> Had I ever liked GameCube controllers, we never had this problem, but I just, I take my sweet old time just unplugging the Joy-Cons from the Switch, put in mine, take those out, put in the original Switch uh, Joy-Cons back in, get mine, set up my controls, it's just a long time. Yeah, because I saw you, <laughs> it I takes saw, a long time. I saw that you used the Joy-Cons <laughs> on the controller port, which is, I was not expecting that. I, cause I Almost Joy-Cons. everybody else here was using GameCube controllers or Pro controllers, and then you were up there... Winning the whole tournament. I'm a Joy-Con boy. Yeah. Win, undefeated win, undefeated winner side Joy Cons. Yep. It's 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 impressive to Thank say you. the least. Um, I would use Pro Controller, but like it feels weird because like it's not exactly yeah. like an Xbox controller. I'm like right. kind of used to like it's smaller in my hands with the the grip. Yeah. Joy Cons, so it just feels better to me. So, yeah. Yeah. So it feels feels good. Yeah. Uh. So that's what we got. Amateur bracket. Amateur bracket. Oh yeah. That that'd be good to watch. Amateur bracket. All right. Well. All right. I guess that's my time. <laughs> are, we are we good on his? Interview? Yeah. Are we? Uh, are we? Who are, are we good on his? <laughs> I don't have we'll anything else. Any more questions? <laughs> I, uh, does anybody have? Anybody Amateur in the bracket. audience have questions for him? Is there? Is this an AMA now? <laughs> all right. I think that's all of our time. Sick. So thank you for the interview. You thank, did an amazing thank job. Thank you for commentating. Oh no problem. You, I had a you lot make of fun. this work also. <laughs> you had. A, you did. You played amazing. Every child deserves a chance to be themselves. But right now, in hospitals around the world, many kids are isolated, fighting some of the most difficult battles of their lives. What if we told you gamers have the power to help? We're Gamers Outreach, and we believe the world is better when kids can play. Our team is on a quest to help make play a part of care. With your support, we can restore a sense of joy and normalcy in the lives of families through video games. Learn more and get involved at GamersOutreach.org. This is a Gamers Outreach Cart, or Go-Kart for short. It's a portable video game kiosk built specifically for hospitals. Created and assembled by Gamers Outreach, each unit helps provide recreation to kids and young adults unable to leave their bedsides. The carts can be disinfected easily and have 360 degrees of movement, making them ideal for transport in hospitals. Go-Karts can accommodate a variety of gaming consoles, They also come with wired controllers, a gaming monitor, and are equipped with a lift mechanism that allows the height to be adjusted. Go-Karts provide a safe, flexible, and efficient way to ensure patients have access to entertainment during long-term hospitalization. To learn more about Project Go-Kart, visit GamersOutreach.org. Welcome back to the post credit Zinger. I'm your runner-up, Coach Dane, and I am joined here with Ruby Leviathan. Ruby Leviathan. And we're here to commentate for you uh, Amateur Bracket Grand Finals. And uh, the whole stream is about the gold carts and how uh, they can make uh, little children's 
staying in the hospital feel like a child again. Exactly, exactly. Feel, be happy. Give him the gift of video games. As oh, long as, uh, as, long as Ben doesn't show up to the Thank you, Smash fan Brothers, of Weirdness, or uh, however you pronounce it, for uh, the $50 donation. Yeah, I was a little bitter about losing to Ben, but I guess if his mom's going to give $50 for his win, for, for a good cause, I guess I'll sleep a little more soundly tonight. Thank you, thank you, Wayward Mom. But let's get into these these grand finals. We have Blaze versus Heavy G. So, yes. so who is playing who? Let's see. In hmm, who is playing? I played Heavy G in pools, and he played Doc. But he told me he didn't like Doc. Oh, Terry like versus we Wee Fit. Fit. Terry versus oh. Wee Fit. Oh. Looking at you. <laughs> On FD is how we're starting this one off. Uh, do you know who is coming? In? Losers. Who's coming? In? Uh, does anybody know? Heavy G is coming. Blaze is, Blaze is sitting pretty in winners, uh, which means Heavy G has to beat him not once but twice uh, in order to, to claim this title. It still says Grand Finals. It is Grand Finals. Oh. But for Amateur. Grand Amateur Finals. For Amateur Finals. For Amateur Finals. Yeah. That's funny. Maybe. Back throw up the edge there. Looking to get the edge card. Oh. Ooh. Dashes down right in there, waiting for now, I'm sorry, I, w I was busy playing my bracket. I didn't get a chance to pay attention to this, so I don't know if they played it all in uh, winners against each other, and if they did, what the result of that was. So, as far as I know, looking at this game from a uh, fresh standpoint. And uh, if you're actually Kirby and you're fighting off Wii Fit Trainer, it's best to know that you can eat uh, Wii Fit Trainer's projectiles. Really? Like uh, the soccer ball and the beam thing. You can eat both of them? Yeah. That's, that just like nullifies it. The heavy, so if Heavy G goes down, he's going to be He just got to keep going over. Yes, yeah, real quick. You better learn a lot of things real quick. But but also, here's the thing. Yeah. You can also hear, heal yourself if you uh, become, if you eat, you fit right Did keep... you see that denial? No. Terry, Terry just, we fit through the volleyball and Terry just went chop and knocked it right back down. Chop! He just might. Boom, radical, got it. That's heavy cheese up. Yep, quick 27% combo. Bread and butter right there for Terry. Looking for it again, letting him know. Terry just got launched. Terry just got the go meter, got the which go. increases his attacks. Yes. Yes, indeed, which means actually, uh. Yeah. They're both off. Uh, we fit needs to get this kill. We fit, being Blaze, of course, needs to get this kill as soon as possible. She's doing a great job of keeping yeah, you Terry don't... at bay, not letting Terry get in close. Yeah, enough. you don't want to get hit by uh, the go meter. Definitely not. Yeah, because if you do, you are basically dead. Yes, go meter's gone now. Uh, finally came to that stop without getting in the fight. Good on him. And did you also know that uh, the beam ability, if you're a Wii Fit Trainer or Kirby using that ability, you actually regenerate. Oh! 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 My goodness. That was a quick zero to death. Blaze says it was. this is why I'm in winners. That was close. Very, very fast. That was intense. Yeah, it was I don't very know where intense. That way back, way back. So what do you think? Itchy. What do you think? What do you, th what do you, what do you think about that last game? It was very intense. It was very intense. Do you think that Heavy G, the Terry player, needs to change anything up dramatically in order to to defeat well, Blaze on Wii Fit? They could, if they're really good at it, become mm -hmm. Kirby and eat all the projectiles. They could do that. That I think we'll keep that. He's gonna keep that like one way back in the in, on the back burner. Oh, he's Doctor Mario. Doctor Mario, change it up. Going back to energy. Now, while Doctor Mario and Terry are uh, classically on polar opposites. Can I say a joke little, real quick? Yeah. The doctors in. Nice. It's time for a fits checkup. Yes. Have they eight and their fifty brownies? Brownies. They're too. They're too fit. They're too fit. They're not eating any rounds. They're too fit. Too fit. Here we go. Combo time. Yes. Tall at 65. Oh, tried to scout the landing. Wait a minute. Both the landing's got a... Two forward smash is being charged there. Is Dr. Mario just Mario with the skin? He's, he's Mario uh, with a little less... Yeah, with a 
THC with a little, which made him worse somehow. He was too busy studying. He wasn't hitting the gym. Uh, he uh, is a little slower. Um, he has that for his downbeat instead of the water, uh, which he is a great option. That that tornado right there you saw. Uh, is that better? Yes. Than the water, I would say so. Uh, it can get kills. The water can get him sometimes. If you're yeah, it just makes it go away. Just right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but Doc also has a uh, cape that goes from uh, bottom to top instead of side to side, uh, which is not as good because it doesn't give him any momentum when he uses it, which makes his recovery way worse than regular. So, so Doc is very gifted as you see. Doc is definitely the best. Yeah. Yep, so that's, that's the problem with Dr. Mark right there. No. So, so but here's the thing. Dr. Mario's cape could, like, launch people high into the air. No, it just spins them around. It's oh. not that good, unfortunately. If it could do that, that would be okay. Yeah, it would be. If it was a kill move, that'd be great, but it's not. And not the, it's are the pills worse than the fireballs? Uh, I feel like the pills are worse than the fireballs. I don't know how different they actually are. Oh, there we go. That's a, what? Yes, yes, that's what the cape does. It throws things right back at you. Yeah, the looking good right that now. Feels, that's overpowered. That is, it's strong, especially against, especially against Wii Fit, who loves her projectile, right? Yeah. Catch! Oh, 85%, 85%. Oh, okay. really want this kill. Wants to ride the momentum. On Dr. Mario. You got this. Ooh. Oh! Got it. Oh! Even game. One stock. One stock game. Now, this is what happened last time in the place turned the jets on. I got to death real quick. Let's see if you can repeat. Oh, God. Downbeat. He's landing with that a lot. It's, it's a little risky. I played him. What character oh, did uh, Heavy G use last time again? Terry. Okay, uh, here we go. I oh. think I know why, uh, uh, why, uh, Terry got, uh, not how Terry lost so fast. What's that? Uh, because. Uh, he probably had, like, not, he was probably knocked back a lot, and then, uh, he was, like, a heavy character, yeah, and then he fought the really the combo. There we go. Giving it all up. High game. One the doctor wins! The no doctor. more viruses. No more viruses. COVID is cured. Thank COVID you, is cured. <laughs> <laughs> good job. Good joke. <laughs> good you, you joke. Set me up. You set me up. I just, I just finished it off. We're a good duo. We're a good duo. Me and you, yes. Levi. Good duo. We're crushing jokes. it. So that was two games on FD. Yeah. Um, obviously. So do we have three more to go? Or? Depends. Depends on on who wins what here. Um, so we could a couple things could happen here. One, um, Blaze sitting in winners could win the next two games, and then the tournament would be over. Blaze would win. Or Heavy G can win the next two games, and then the bracket resets. He knocks Blaze down to the losers bracket. Wait, the whole enough. thing resets. Well, no, just just this um just this battle because he knocks Blaze down the losers bracket. Oh. But there's no one else to play in losers bracket, so they would play one more time. Oh, looks like it's Terry oh. versus that character who I don't know. Oh, Hyra! Hi, this is Hyra Mithra from the uh, Less Than Hit Games, like Chronicles 2. Um, I originally guessed they were like from Genshin Impact. Yeah, you would think. It, a very similar game. Yeah. Uh, very. very it, it looks so similar. Yeah, very. Um, My sister plays it. That's how I know what it is. Got it. Yeah, yeah. She would probably be in the like Chronicles 2 as well. Yeah. But yeah, so this this character, there you go. Uh, I was gonna say they just switch. Yes. As they can switch like that. As an interesting mechanic. So um, this, what you're seeing right is now, is it like a fire. like a side character? Um, or like a echo fighter? No, um, they are actually two different characters uh, that are similar in that they wield a sword. But um, the one you're seeing right now is Pyra, uh, and Pyra is slow. Oh, like fire? Yes. Type? Yeah, yeah, like Pyra. I I, I heard. I right. understood it. So Pyra is like much slower than her her other counterpart, um, but she kills way faster. She, she's slower, but much harder hitting. So you typically switch to Pyro when you're ready to, to clean up a stock. She also has that projectile. Very yeah, good. it's very good. Um, now Isn't there one that, like, uh, like does, like, Kirby's move, but, like, free without a smash ball? Um, I don't know what 
Kirby's Smash. Uh, it's like the sword. Like, psh, psh, psh. oh yes, yes, um, yes. Uh, it's like a free Kirby. Yeah. Um, oh, Cherry's got the go meter. Yes, go meter. What? Is that a hundred percent against the Pyra? Oh! oh! God, it's landing. Look at the patience down here, everyone. I don't think she's okay, Terry. She's at 100%. Oh, and now she's dead! Very dead. Okay, so now this is this is Mithra. Um, and Mithra is very quick uh, and combo heavy. So you're gonna see. Oh. Like the. Like, yeah, that! Yeah, there you go. Like the speed run. Yep. Uh, the problem with Mithra is she's also way lighter and can die with the same. So, so oh, it's better. Know. I don't care. Oh! Terry just died, lost his go meter. So it's better to switch to Blaze when you're about to get like heavy hit. Yeah. Um. Yes. And it's better to do it when you're trying to clean up the stuff. Wait, okay, I said Blaze, not Pyro. Pyro. I, I know what you meant. <laughs> uh, see, here. See, here. It, it gets confusing when Blaze is right there. Yeah, Blaze playing Pyro. I personally. And it's like the same thing because like Fire yeah. Blaze. Oh. FG, that was solid. That was solid. Oh, that was very no, intense. Oh, now it's your face. <laughs> yes, um, that yes. is my so, face. <laughs> this um, is my face. That didn't work out so well, that switch from Blaze yeah. into, to um, Pyramithra. Yeah. I think if I was him, he, he stayed Pyra a very long time, um, which I wouldn't have. I would have I switched to Mithra and gone for the combos and, to rack up the percentage. Yeah, like, the Omega combo. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, go Omega combo, and then right when... Terry gets go, then you switch to Pyra, and then you try to get the kill. That's yeah. how. That's how. I would Th that's super. That. Wait, they just heard you. <laughs> All right, I'm a little, little bit, a uh, little bit of mid set coaching here from Coach Dane. Hey, they don't call me Coach Dane for nothing, right? Wait, they call you? Oh, they do call you Coach Dane. Oh. Back, back to the Wii Fit. I, I don't think there's any problem with Wii Fit. I feel like they switched to Wii Fit because uh, most of the rounds that they won. They used to be fit. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and it probably does a comfort thing, like, if you're more comfortable with the character, play that character. Like, yeah. There, there's not a lot of. Like, if you're comfortable with a character, you should definitely play that character. Maybe even work on a different character, see if you like it more. Yeah, if you really want. Yeah, that, and, that, and that's the only reason I would. Um, there's a, there's a or, stigma. or if you uh, want to. You can uh, try and make Don't like Omega, oh. like you can try and make Omega combos with that character that you always use. Exactly, you just more comfortable. You know, um. Like uh, when I uh, was uh, up there on stage uh, playing against uh, like the Sonic person, uh, I like swapped my pickaxe and then I think I uh, threw up the magma block when uh, they were falling. Yeah. Which is a really good strategy. Yeah, no, it really is. Uh, you know, Steve. Because Steve, uh, Steve's like uh, up smash or whatever it is. God. Steve's yeah, no, uh, it's really it's the big old magma block. It catches everything. Yeah, the magma block is really overpowered oh, yeah. if you know how to use it. For sure, for sure. It also, uh, when your enemies at like 100 percent and they're above you, you should definitely use the magma block. Oh, definitely. Yeah, no, that's exactly. Yeah, well, the magma block's super overpowered. Oh, definitely. Now, so you'll see, um, you'll see Blaze. It would be it. cool if they added, like, Netherite soon. I don't, I don't know how much more Minecraft I can take in this game. If I'm being honest. You need more Minecraft. Oh, the footstool! Oh! 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 Like a... He's dead. <laughs> so, um, you, you see when Blaze, that ring comes around, we fit. Wait, wait, wait! Does Terry play soccer by any chance? Uh, no, he plays too much. If, he, if Terry played soccer, I would be surprised that he didn't start crying when he got hit with the ball. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's yeah. yeah, he's... Yeah, I think Terry, Terry's when fine. you actually get hurt, you should actually say that you got hurt. Uh, yeah, he's used to getting hurt. That's his whole thing. He's, 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 he's the king of fighters. He's a tank. <laughs> All the time. He's got Jacko. Uh, oh, and I left. Oh, no, 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 no. She lets him back a little bit, trying to catch him the, the sun. That was scary. But we're okay. We're okay. Oh, hey, look at the, the our, our prodigal son's return. 
our, our heroes from the other land are, are back. Uh, highly destined. Terry has the gold meter again. Oh, thank you, Haley. Uh, you for the ten dollar oh, donation. Oh, hey, Haley Urban in the house with the ten dollar donation for the kids. All right, we're we're on last stock right now. Hold on, this is actually a big match. If Heavy Chief takes oh. this, he resets the bracket. He's got go. He's he's two, looking for it. one two. Heavy oh, catch it. Oh, yeah, okay. I think Heavy Chief and he resets the whole entire thing. Yeah, well, me too. Me too. I love games. I love games. Oh, 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 reset. Him. Let's go, Terry. That's a bracket reset. reset. Bracket reset. So the scores go back to zero zero, and yeah. we play to three again. What's up? Yeah, you you were from losers, right? Heavy G, you were in losers, right? Okay, yeah, it resets zero zero. That was so exciting. That was very exciting. Very. I th I don't. Okay, so what I was talking about with people switching characters all the time. I think it's a problem with Smash players when they lose with their main character. They're like, oh, pff, this is just a losing matchup. I gotta switch characters. I gotta go to a, a, another character who beats this character. But there's really not that many like unwinnable matchups in this game, right? Take it from me. Incineroar versus Zelda is so rough. That is one of the hardest matchups I've had to play. But you gotta make you make it work, right? You make it work. Um, if I switched, I would just do worse because I'm much more comfortable with Incineroar and his kit and, and how he does. Everybody wants to switch. They switch to a worse character, and they end up doing worse. Watch it. If anybody switches characters, then it's okay. and you saw it here. I guess actually when he switched to Doc, one, but Doc is his. Doc was his competition. And it looks like Terry's going to decide as the product. And I do agree with that decision. It's also good to switch characters now and then to see if you like them. Oh, yeah, definitely. No, you try out the different characters. Apparently, if you start liking one, you get comfortable with them, you start playing with them. It takes time. I don't recommend doing it right in the middle of, a, of an important match, right? Yeah. Pick a character that you come with. Figure it out. Figure it out. Figure, it out. figure out what you're like, doing. Like, if you're good with speed, play. but you also want to see what, uh, like, uh, Incineroar is like, oh, don't pick Incineroar if you're really good with speed, and it's a very important Yeah. Match. Yeah, don't pick Incineroar in, in, you know, game three of Grand Finals, right? Yeah. Because you could just throw the whole match. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So we are we are in game game one of the new the new reset blaze. Uh, yeah. This is this is the tournament life for both of us. Imagine blaze. Imagine having two. I would be I, I like it. We had we played in our pool together. We talked a bit. But I also like I also like blaze. I also like this. Cool. Huh? Uh, no. Yes. Okay. So about that ring. Um, that's called deep breathing. I want to say uh, when she. Inhales um, and she times the circle coming in with the red circle that appears around her. Um, she heals a little bit and she becomes much stronger. Her moves do a lot more damage. It's like Go, uh, but not as dramatic. Where Go makes these big explosions, uh, she just becomes a little bit stronger. Uh, so it's kind of like. Uh, Speaking of Go. go yeah, yes, it's very simple. It, but she can do it at any time. Oh, shields that. Takes the forward smash. Bring in, bring in Heavy G out of his last stock this game. We are back on FD. So definitely can come pick up the players. Oh, very slow. The more she does it in a life, the slower it becomes. Oh lord. That was very close. Oh, reach the reach the air dog and forward smash. Tries to go for the spike to end it right there. It's gonna take a little bit more time than that though. What's the longest time that you Eight minutes. There's an eight minute time. Eight? No, I'm talking about uh Oh, um, I think I actually don't know the time on it. It's a little bit. Um, what if you just keep you can, uh, but like I said, every time you use it, a life it takes longer. So uh, what if you keep you're on left, using it, but you're left more vulnerable. Oh, no, no, no. In a like a training match, how long? How uh, long? I don't know. I've, I've never. Missed it. I'm gonna say around at least. It could. At least. It could. We are down. Oh, there's go meter. Go meter. Oh, final stocks. Oh, that is good. That is good. But doesn't. Oh, sixty percent. Heavy G comes alive when he's got good. Uh oh. Uh oh. He hard commits. Hard commits to the forward smash. Oh, he's in a bad spot. He's gonna make it back. Oh, oh, just oh, he back in. If he gets back in one more time, this could be it. He just did a combo. He just wanted it raw, and he's dead. It, just kidding. Oh, just kidding. Just dodged it. Oh goodness. They if both want to this game so bad. Thank you, Urban Family. Oh, the whole Urban Family for $20. Yeah. Thank you all so much. 
That's that's Haley's family. Thank you. Oh, for, for, finally catches it. Finally catches it with the forward smash. Both these players get antsy when they're when they're when they're when it's coming down to the wire. They start it's like forward smash. Did you like? Oh, uh, it's like rage mode. Yeah, but IRL, right? So they start yeah. they start throwing out forward smashes. They want the go hits. They like, just want it. They want the they want the game to end. They become so like Justin in Fortnite. Yeah. Well, I don't I don't get that reference, but essentially, they. It's a meme. I, I've never played Fortnite. Justin I'm sorry. is cracked at Fortnite, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. Um, the back to the game. The um, yeah. both the players, both the players. Once like that last stop comes around, once the percent start getting high, they're like, smash attack, smash attack, smash attack, smash attack. Please let this game in, right? They need to and they remember like do their, their game plan. Attacks that do like tons of damage, like a rapid attack. We are twenty dollars away from nine hundred dollars. I cannot believe we've almost raged nine hundred dollars. I know, right? To me. Our original goal was like uh five hundred. Yeah, five hundred. I didn't even think we were gonna make. I didn't like, think we were gonna even. I didn't even close. know we were gonna make six twenty five. I was really like, if we hit two hundred, I'll be happy. I'll be so happy if we hit two hundred. We hit almost nine hundred dollars. That's yeah. Thank you all so much for watching. The game. We were watching. The game. Oh, oh, back to Doc on FD. Time for another checkup. This is exactly how the last set went. This is uh, beat for beat how the last set went. Oh, oh. stop trying to get force smash. Oh, got him. Stage control, bro. Never mind. What do I know? Stage He's gonna catch him with a smash. Stage control is very important on this stage. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'll because definitely there's no platform, oh. and that's the only space. Maneuverability is very hard. Center stage. Is, is high quality, high quality uh, real estate right now. Oh, there's the little two. Wait, why don't they just say like a good neighbor? State farm time. That's all right. Well, you, you'll learn about it when you get older. No, no, no. I just said <laughs> uh, like a good neighbor, state farm is there, and then state farm disappears, oh, and then oh, the Jake, yeah, yeah, state, yeah. state farm combo time, combo time for. <laughs> Take some stick. Oh. There's the middle. If you just hold shield, you can, you can shield grab punch. Both players going low. Got him on the ledge now. As he finishes it off, he goes again for the down beat. He's just patient. It's a very committal. Yep, twice now he's been punished for it. He keeps coming down with aerial. And oh. Blaze is just waiting. Blaze is at 108 percent. Yeah, look at that. Blaze just waits. Oh. Waits and punishes accordingly. Oh, heavy he G. This is looking good for him. Uh huh. Uh huh. He's got center stage. What can he do with it? He needs to get with a hard air. Oh. You gotta be careful with those. We fit a hard hitter, which is good for uh, the person that's playing We Fit. Sorry? Because it also heals them if you use the. If yeah. You use Although it is like a negligible amount. There it is. He finally gets it. Zero, zero. Oh. Oh. Mario's winning so far. Okay, okay. Posture. Like I said, look, look, we're getting up into higher percentages here on the last stop. The smash attacks are coming out in force. Boom. Oh They're going rage mode. Rage mode, here they go. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Let's go, rage meter. Mode. Let's go, meter. Go meter, rage mode, they're pop go, No, it's go meter. Back here. Back here. At oh. even 100. Damn! Oh. Do it. Let's go. Well, that's that was game two. That was game two. Tying it up. So beat for beat so far, the set has played out the exact same way it did the first time around. Starts Terry, we fit on FD. We fit wins. Blaze wins on we fit. Then Heavy G switches to Doc. Sorry, I'm shaking the uh, the computer screen. Then then Heavy G switches to Doc. Then he takes the game on FD. Let's see if we go to Battlefield and he switches back or, and he switches to who was it? Terry and Pyramithra again. Let's see. Let's see if we. Or if we they could uh, change to Kirby and eat all the projectiles. Eat the projectiles. We've been saying it over here. We are the strategists. You should be Coach Ruby Leviathan. Oh, Falcon. Okay. Falcon. I'll tell you these people. They gotta stop changing. They keep it, keep it. Back to Terry on FD and now Falcon. 
Thank you for another donation. Thank you for donation. Thank HR you, Prime. Thank you. Thank you. We did. Shawnee State's resident Ganondorf. Ten more dogs so we reach 900. Scouting. There. Nice job. Oh, went down with the spike. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. He's getting a little, getting a little bit there. But you might as well. We got the invulnerability, right? No. He just ate 25 percent. He's got the landing for another 25, making it even 50. That brings us to 890. We just need two more dollars to 900. Look how nice the background looks. It's 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 a little distracting. I'm not gonna lie. It's yeah. A lot. It's I wish there was like a still mode. Okay, catch the roll. Yeah. Oh, another one! Oh! Chad has the no. no. Yeah, it's so far on the heavy. Uh uh. And now he's got co meter. Okay, dodge that. Oh. Oh, heavy. Are you okay? You're definitely gonna win. Okay. Oh god, now he's just he's trying to get his stuff. Blaze, oh. Blaze has him off the stage. Can he finish it off? No, he can't. He parts the Falcon. Captain Falcon, Falcon got the go. Oh! Side B just not close enough. Falcon's down B answers and takes it. Oh, we're right in the middle of that one. It's not true. Oh! oh we finally got it. And now it's. Oh. So Terry's not dead yet. Terry is dead. Oh. Terry's dead. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Even just like that? Just like that? Oh. He was gonna win, but. Yeah, it was a little the game eight seconds. Yes, sir. He's not out yet. Blaze went like hippity hoppy. Oh, Those... oh, okay, okay, okay. Blaze went like hippity hoppy. Your two stocks are not my property. Okay. Oh. Okay. Blaze! Oh! oh! It's the land. <laughs> Very hype game three. That brings us to 2 1 in favor of Heavy G. It's best of five. It's best of five. S yeah, it's best Kit of five. Kit Kat! Look, it says S Kit Kat. Yeah, Sam doing a candy bar tier list over there. Let us know in the comments what you think is an S tier candy bar uh, and why wait, is it wait, wait, absolutely wait, wait, wait. not under okay. any circumstances. S tier is Kit Kat. C is Twizzlers and uh. Uh huh. Yeah. Dark uh, chocolate milk three. thing. I don't uh, agree with Sam a a minus. Even though the Falcon was very hype, and I'm all for that. Um, he did get kind of. You know, he got he got that that last second. Uh, he's standing oh. up. He's standing up. He believes in the hype. He switched skins though. He went he went from the the, the, the black jacket to the blue jacket. Jumpsuit is a jumpsuit. Hershey's is okay, A tier. Down, stuff happens. Good DI gets a good combo. I agree with you. Hershey's is A. My co-commentator, very distracted by the candy tier list, has, has some strong opinions. <laughs> I do have strong opinions on candy. <laughs> Our resident expert, I would even say. Okay. Okay. I want to go to the D right I want to go to Willie Walker's chocolate. I want... I want... You don't want the chocolate. Yeah, some, someone, someone's going to Willie Walker's chocolate back, metaphorically, if they win this game. Heavy G, though, poised. He just took that stock. Oh, the, he's getting out of these combos. Blaze make the adaptation. 110 more dollars. Wait, insane. Turn around, nice parry. A thousand dollars? We're probably yeah, we're something insane. It's in only 110 dollars away. That is true. Okay. Oh, but Terry's got to go. We got to finish that stock. This stock, we got to finish it now. Caught. Okay. Goes for the back throw. Got him. On the ledge, yeah, he goes for there. Oh! Reach the ball. Throws it out. Why is the background so good? Okay. Oh! Okay, the Gearless has not up. Blaze, Blaze is on his tournament life. See, so got second place hanging in the balance right now. The candy Fourth Gearless throw. has Reach not up. Reach double cup out of it. Get it. Lands with the dare, gets caught again. Heavy G's just scouting the landings. Oh, a little too early. Stare down. Weird exchange. God, these players. Boom. Okay. Catches the unsafe area on shield. Gets it. Gets it back there. Nothing. Plays. 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 The, pe the people want their Falcon Punch. Their champion. But he's off. He's off stage. He's in a bad spot. Mon G. Back there again. Cody's just got the lane. Goes for the spot. Oh, he's going for it. It was right there. He just missed it. Okay. Oh. Okay. Can't answer for it. Half way. Halfway. 
halfway, and Falcon is definitely in kill percentage. Doesn't catch it. Oh, I thought the. Oh, he really wanted it. Oh, the desperation. He wanted it so bad. Dang! Oh. <laughs> brings it all the way back, resetting the bracket and taking the dub. Here's Your amateur bracket grand champion, Heavy G. Here's the thing about uh, the Falcon Punch. Here's the thing about the Falcon Punch. Can I bookmark that thought? Yeah. As I say, thank you to everybody for watching, for supporting, uh, for donating. The fact that we made it eight hundred ninety dollars for the for the damage we're giving absolutely blows my mind. You take that in combination with all the other all the other uh, people. Oh, we got it. We got a nice hand raise over there. Very, very a lot of sportsmanship being displayed. But thank you all so much. Uh, you've made this event incredible and well worth everybody's time. Uh, we worked really hard on this event. Uh, advertising, streaming, organizing, getting everything together. Um, shout outs to the SSU Esports Club, uh, Strock, Clown Tims, uh, D'Angelo, who's tag after girl. Even. They've done an amazing job. Everybody who gave has done an amazing job, and we've done a great thing here, and I want to thank everybody so much. I think we're going to go ahead and do a little interview for everybody. Uh, so we're going to take a little break while we set that up. We're going to get our okay, grand can, champion can I, uh, in here. Can I continue Heavy my team. thought real quick? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Every child deserves a chance to be themselves. But right now, in hospitals around the world, many kids are isolated, fighting some of the most difficult battles of their lives. What if we told you gamers have the power to help? We're Gamers Outreach, and we believe the world is better when kids can play. Our team is on a quest to help make play a part of care. With your support, we can restore a sense of joy and normalcy in the lives of families through video games, Learn more and get involved at GamersOutreach.org. This is a Gamers Outreach Cart, or Go-Kart for short. It's a portable video game kiosk built specifically for hospitals. Created and assembled by Gamers Outreach, each unit helps provide recreation to kids and young adults unable to leave their bedsides. The carts can be disinfected easily and have 360 degrees of movement, making them ideal for transport in hospitals. Go-karts can accommodate a variety of gaming consoles. They also come with wired controllers, a gaming monitor, and are equipped with a lift mechanism that allows the height to be adjusted. Go-karts provide a safe, flexible, and efficient way to ensure patients have access to entertainment during long-term hospitalization. To learn more about Project Go-Kart, visit GamersOutreach.org. Welcome back, everybody. I'm here with our amateur bracket grand champion, who I just witnessed go through a real-life anime tournament training arc, a Heavy G. <laughs> Heavy G, we met in pools, and yep. you were playing Doc, and you were playing Luigi, and you're doing some unsafe stuff. I, I got the, I got the better of you in pools, mm -hmm. and now I see you here in grand finals of amateur bracket. I'm yep. like, what happened? You're playing Terry. You're kicking you're kicking butt for the kids. You're doing you're doing great. <laughs> Tell me about the transition. Honestly, I don't know what happened. Like I was good at like Terry at the time. Like once he like came out, I uh, I want to get better at him. Like I did with, like Manager Kazooie when he came out at that time. Mm. So uh. When I tried him out, I thought I was getting like way better and better, like as I like fought like one like my friends online from high school. Mm -hmm. So what made it, like so interesting was that like I began to like understand like like fighting like characters that are like from fighting games now, like Ryu and Ken. And so like Terry, uh, people say that he's like the like the Ryu of Smash Four, yeah, like the I, Smash Four yeah. version. So yeah, like he's like. She's just there to like bring in, like the like the real like tyranny to yeah, other pain, players. The yeah. Pain. Yeah. <laughs> Once you get that go meter, like the lights come on and you just like bang bang dead at like sixty, just can catch anybody off of a jab, just like yeah. Smash Four. Reason. Yeah. It's just like pun it's like punch out. Like you get that. Like you have to like build up the meter. Yeah. On, like, right. To, yeah. And once you like, get it, it's a totally yeah. You're yeah. They're dead. They're just dead. <laughs> now was this your first tournament? Uh, no, actually, this is this wasn't my first tournament. Might have been uh, back in Jackson, where uh, we had like a local tournament at my local YMCA, mm. where um, uh, I wanted to try out like for Smash Brothers, and um, I thought I was going to do like okay, but not like super, yeah, like super. But uh, once I went in there, uh, people saw how I played, 
and they're just like, oh my gosh, he's doing stuff. He's doing so much. <laughs> he's, he's going nuts. Dust, huh? He's going nuts. <laughs> stuff like that, yeah. yeah that's cool. And like, uh, as I kept on playing, uh, also I got like a like a ten, like a thirty dollar gift card for that. That's so, what it's for. So holler, <laughs> yeah. That's why I uh, got good at Smash Brothers was for Nintendo gift cards for prize money. Yeah, and then like that influenced me to go into more like uh. It also influenced me to do like esports mm -hmm. and go like the we. I actually went to the state for esports in oh. Tiffin University. Wow. Yeah, and uh, the shocking thing is like for Smash I specifically. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Cool. and like the shocking thing is like uh, I did like Banjo and Kazooie because I want to get good as them. Mm -hmm. The thing was that like against like people that you never know what they're gonna do. You just like spam like Wonder Wing yeah, every now and right, every now right. and then. Just throw it out there. Yeah. Keep so, them honest. Yeah. So like as like I went to Dr. Mario. I I just beat I beat my opponent and because I felt more comfortable with Dr. Mario, I understand him more. Yeah. And like uh yeah, like it just got him, I just got him like better with it. Mm -hmm. And like as I kept it going on, I noticed that like there were some problems with Dr. Mario. Like he is a good like he's a good character. Like offensively, like I told you earlier. Yeah, right. we were talking he's about a, he's offensively, but he's more offensive character. Yeah. And when it, when he's on the defensive, poor Doc. Yeah. Poor Doc. And then like uh, <laughs> then there's Terry. Oh, you ain't gonna believe this. <laughs> <laughs> he can do yeah. anything. He can do everything Doc can do better. He's even an even better offensive character. Way better defensive character. Yeah. I saw the Banjo Kazooie Golden Ring come out in Spirit when you would throw out the 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 the, mm -hmm. the crazy punch once you had Go Meter. Yeah. Whatever it's called. I, um, <laughs> I don't know some crazy King of Fighters name, but um, yeah. Well, man, congratulations. Your first Shawnee State Tournament. Taking yeah. amateur championships. Let's yeah. go. Next time, regular championships, right? Possibly. Rate, I saw you improve. Yeah. I, I, believe next, I believe it. Next time, it might possibly be Terry. Possibly all be Terry. Terry. All time. Not messing around. Yeah. Or it could be Kazuya. I'm trying to get good with Kazuya Kazu as well. Kazuya is very good. <laughs> yep. Well, thank you again uh, for everybody supporting at home, and congratulations again to you, Heavy G. We're going to get the people who uh, made this tournament happen on stream here real soon, right after this break. Please stick around uh, to show them your support. They they were they worked very hard on this. They've been working on this for a while, uh, and they, they did a great thing. So stick around. Thank you. Every child deserves a chance to be themselves. But right now, in hospitals around the world, many kids are isolated, fighting some of the most difficult battles of their lives. What if we told you gamers have the power to help? We're Gamers Outreach, and we believe the world is better when kids can play. Our team is on a quest to help make play a part of care. With your support, we can restore a sense of joy and normalcy in the lives of families through video games. Learn more and get involved at GamersOutreach.org. This is a Gamers Outreach Cart, or Go-Cart for short. It's a portable video game kiosk built specifically for hospitals. Created and assembled by Gamers Outreach, each unit helps provide recreation to kids and young adults unable to leave their bedsides. The carts can be disinfected easily and have 360 degrees of movement, making them ideal for transport in hospitals. Go-Karts can accommodate a variety of gaming consoles, they also come with wired controllers, a gaming monitor, and are equipped with a lift mechanism that allows the height to be adjusted. Go-Karts provide a safe, flexible, and efficient way to ensure patients have access to entertainment during long-term hospitalization. To learn more about Project Go-Kart, visit GamersOutreach.org. And we're back. Hey, so what's up? We're here. I'm Strzok, joined by Ubu Bama, and we're here to wrap up. A very, very long day. Of yeah, life. it's actually been a really long day. I woke up at 11, and I immediately got ready. I, I already talked about this a little bit earlier with Badger. And uh, it, I woke up. I immediately came here, started working on yep. the event. We started getting people signed in. The game started happening, and it's been going on ever since until right now. And it's about yeah, like almost I mean, 10 o'clock. Yeah, pretty much registration and check-in started at 12, and we've been here pretty much working yeah, ever at, since then. <laughs> just the entire day. I got to play some games, but you've actually been doing a lot. Oh, and we got even more donuts, it seems. Oh, oh yeah. Top donuts. I want to thank especially Missy, Alex, and Eddie. M Missy and Alex, Eddie. I mean, the top top donut of $100. I mean, mm -hmm. We had a four people yeah. out of all the day donated a hundred dollars. There was I a mean, there was a rivalry between uh, 
Cabbage Brine okay. and President Barack Obama. Oh. Yeah, that happened uh, earlier. Good while to know I was know that on, we have well, yeah, <laughs> the president was back. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, that was happening whenever I was uh, commentating with Patrick. Okay. In that, between yeah. like the 15 minute break, whenever yeah, you were. We currently are $110 away from our $1,000 goal, which we have been updating pretty much throughout the day which admittedly whenever i heard that we were doing like uh, a charity sh uh, stream and mm. like doing a charity tournament i was not expecting to eight, yeah i was not expecting this much money at no, all I, no i mean which is really because of that all i can really do is say thank you to everyone who donated money I thank mean, you so it much it means so much to everyone here and it's just I can't even put really put into words how much we appreciate it. Yeah, especially since we put so much time. We would actually meet up like almost, uh, what was it? Like it was weekly. about we was once like, a week. Yeah, once a week we would meet up. We would and talk about who we would have yeah. here and there. And then like uh, how we were going to have the tournament set up. Yep. And it was make about sure once a week. And then this was, last like, scheduled right. It wasn't this week, but last week it was just pure mania trying to figure everything oh my. out. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was like, am I going to be able to play? If I, if I can't play, it's yeah. fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I swear. But... Talking about organizing, I want to make sure we shout out everyone else who helped. We have me, Obama, who helped out, but we also have other participants who are in this event. We had Clown Tims who helped out. Dude, Dane was a huge help. Dane. This was the day of Dane. Yeah, the day of Dane. <laughs> huge shout out to Travis. And then we also had our runner-up of AM Bracket, Christian, also yeah, known as Blaze, Blaze yeah. who was also a huge help setting up this event and cannot thank them enough for all the help. And... Just speaking about the event, I I don't know about you, but I had an absolute blast setting everything up and running it especially. Yeah, and running it has just been a experience of its own. And also, a uh, huge shout out to Travis because yeah, very he, big. He, because he he would meet up with us and he would mm. make sure that we had everything under wraps because we did not realize how much would actually go into yeah. this tournament. N none and of this would he, have happened. He definitely he definitely helped out a lot. Yeah, none of this would have happened. And I don't know. Yeah, that's. Yeah, it's been. It's great. been a very long day. Yeah, it's been a long day. <laughs> yeah. I would say yeah, you're, so you, really, you've been working the most out of all, all can, of this. Yeah, all I can say is that it's going to be nice to wrap this up and hopefully do it again and just going to have to say bye to everyone. All right. All right. Thank you all for showing up and watching. Thank you, everybody. See ya. Every child deserves a chance to be themselves. But right now, in hospitals around the world, many kids are isolated, fighting some of the most difficult battles of their lives. What if we told you gamers have the power to help? We're Gamers Outreach, and we believe the world is better when kids can play. Our team is on a quest to help make play a part of care. With your support, we can restore a sense of joy and normalcy in the lives of families through video games. Learn more and get involved at gamersoutreach.org. This is a Gamer's Outreach Cart, or Go-Kart for short. It's a portable video game kiosk built specifically for hospitals. Created and assembled by Gamer's Outreach, each unit helps provide recreation to kids and young adults unable to leave their bedsides. The carts can be disinfected easily and have 360 degrees of movement, making them ideal for transport in hospitals. Go-Karts can accommodate a variety of gaming consoles, they also come with wired controllers, a gaming monitor, and are equipped with a lift mechanism that allows the height to be adjusted. Go-Karts provide a safe, flexible, and efficient way to ensure patients have access to entertainment during long-term hospitalization. To learn more about Project Go-Kart, visit GamersOutreach.org. <laughs>